We are up. You should be able to hear it here in just a second. All right, cool. Um, yeah, I still can't uh, get it. Why am I? Whatever. For pitching and catching. Um, I still can't get it. Uh, streaming at like, I'm trying to talk to my roommates and see if they're using up a lot of the upload um, bandwidth because uh, I need. I think I need just a bit more. I think we should have enough. Um, either that or I should be able to decrease the stream settings just a little bit. Uh, because I... Um... Sorry. Totally distracted. Yeah, I keep mine uh, very low by modern standards. Like, I stream in 720 unless the game has, like, small text that wouldn't show up. Actually, wait, no. Yeah, now that I have my own internet, I've, I've bumped it to 1080. But considering most people's screens are 1080, I don't need to stream any bigger than that. Okay, minimize that, minimize that, back to the game. There we go. All right. Well, another stream, another bit of technical difficulties. We continue to work this out. And we are... We're doing job quests, but what are we on? Well, let's check this. I think I finished all the combat tents. Oh, I have not finished the tents. I'm in Thanalin right now. Right. And I haven't done Gridania either. Okay, yeah, definitely. And I'm sorry, wait. Why does it say... Did I not do the level 5 Lancer and Archer quests? Did I seriously miss that? Oh, man. Yeah, I never did any of the level 5 Gridania quests, apparently. Oh, no. No, I'm sorry, this is Marauder. I'm dumb. I'm doing the level fives now. Okay, yes, cool. I'm not <laughs> I'm not being as uh blind as it seemed like I was. Yesterday, uh carpet people came to put the carpet in my bedroom back together. And uh he drove all the way over here, knocked on the door, I opened the door, he came in, looked at my bedroom, and said, I'll come back tomorrow. I had to stop him, like, no, no, wait, because he saw there was stuff in my bedroom, because the ceiling painting people had come earlier that day, and I had to move everything out of the way. There was nowhere else to put it. I was like, stop, I put it on wheels, I could have this all out of here in two minutes, just hang on. Like, he drove all the way here and then just wanted to give up and come another day. Yeah, I get you. But he and was, he was willing to be patient? Well, I, yeah, yeah, I convinced him. Good. Uh, and then today, around noon, I heard a knock on the door. Um, now, who could that be? Today, around 10.30, a different repair person came for some reason to clean my bathroom ceiling, which was nice, but I didn't order that. I better not be charged for it. You shouldn't be charged for any of this. Ceiling, and he told me they'd fix the light later because they wanted to make sure that the ceiling in the kitchen was dry. Oh, yeah, so in the kitchen, the light filled up with water. The housing of the ceiling light in the kitchen filled up with water until it couldn't support its own weight and fell and shattered on the floor. One second. I'll let, I'll let you know in talking moments. <laughs> but that's how we'll do this for now. Good evening to you, Mana. I felt that it was about time you returned. Have you grown more accustomed to the bow? Before we go any further, I wish to ensure you that you have grasped the fundamental essence of archery. Tell me, Mana, do you truly understand what it means to see clearly? Well, aside from needing glasses... To see clearly is not merely to look, it is to observe with intent. Fail to do this, and no, no amount of talent with a bow will avail you. Is this where I have to find the targets? An archer must remain vigilant for any trace of his target, overlooking not the slightest detail lest it prove crucial to the realization of his purpose. He must, in short, see clearly. The coming task will test your powers of observation. A number of targets have been hidden throughout the city. I would have you seek out and destroy them. Each will fall easily to your heavy shot technique. When you have completed the task, return to me and we will continue. Yep. Yeah. This one's very silly and super easy. Barely an inconvenience. Alright, you should be good for now. 
fell, the housing fell and shattered on the floor, and one end of the structure holding the fluorescent tubes in place broke off of the ceiling. So I had this like rickety thing dangling off the ceiling with fluorescent tubes in it for like two days until repair people came and removed it from the ceiling and leaned it against the wall. And so yeah, there. Uh, but like, because the bathroom guy was already here, my door was unlocked. And I heard a knock on the, and, and he like went outside to go get more cleaning supplies or something. And then I heard a knock on the door. And so I went to the door and I opened the door and, no, and, and uh, nobody came in on the floor and did the dinosaur. Huh. There was nobody there at all. Yeah, very sad. Uh, and then I, 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 around four, I called the office. I'm like, you said the, the carpet people said they would come to clean the carpet in my bedroom today. You know, now that it's put back together, it's still all nasty. I would like a clean carpet. And she's like, yeah, he said he, he, said he went there, but he couldn't get in because he didn't have a key because we didn't give him a key. And I'm like, the, the door was unlocked and he didn't wait very long. He knocked one time and then gave up and went home. Like, they're so desperate to not do their job. How long between him knocking and you answering the door? Because that does sound ridiculous. I didn't really, I wasn't urgent because at first I thought it was the bathroom guy. And I'm like, you've already been in here. I, you, you'll come in. I was very sleepy. I didn't want to move. Okay, but so was it like... I figured if I didn't show up in 10 seconds, he'd just come in or knock again. But he didn't. So it was about 30 seconds total. 30 so seconds like, between him knocking and you opening the door? I think so. Yeah, that's, that's way too little for him to have just left. That's ridiculous. And like, he didn't knock a second time. Yeah. The funny thing is, the first time the carpet people had come, I don't know if it was the same guy because I didn't see him, but the first couple times it was the same guy. The first time he came, I was woken by banging on the door and shouting, maintenance, maintenance. Um, and I found that he had unlocked the door and opened the door and it had snagged on the, the backup hook. So, I don't know what was going on this time. Made him with no effort to gain entry. All right, one sec. Ah, you have returned. I trust you have begun to comprehend the crucial importance of seeing clearly. The next trial will test your powers of observation in battle. Travel to the North Shroud and there put down eight micro chews and eight opo opos. In contrast to the inanimate and wholly unthreatening targets of the previous trial, these creatures may be relied upon to move around and fight back. Nor are those the only differences. Being comparatively numerous, micro chews and opo opos are anything but difficult to find. And yet, you may be assured this task will test your powers of observation, albeit in a different manner. This time, you will need to evaluate the abilities of your opponent. In so doing, you will learn, amongst other things, that micro chews produce, micro chews produce a poison that can quickly sap one's strength, while opo opos, like archers, possess the advantage of range. Knowing their strengths, how will you go about mitigating them? If you commence your attack before identifying an effective strategy, you will soon be made to regret your falling. But if you take the time to observe your targets from afar, you will surely glean the knowledge necessary to defeat them. I look forward to hearing of your success, Mana. All right, and you're good. Well, that was the end of that chapter. Oh, okay. Fair enough. So, yeah, I guess in conclusion, it's now been a literal week of me not being able to use my bedroom. Yep. Like, I've slept in it because the bed is in there because the bed can't fit through the door. So, whenever people have needed the floor, I've just, like, had them do one side and then move to the bed and had them do the rest. So the bed's been going back and forth from one side of my room to the other. Like, uh, like it is the bedroom. I guess it sounds silly saying I can't use it for, you know, when it's a, I can use it for its primary intended purpose. But no, but you do want to be able to do other I stuff. I kind of live in there. Yeah. You know? That's where I had my computer. And, you know, I'm glad it was in there because that was the one room where it wasn't raining a week ago. Every other room, well, every room got so I got the soaked on the floor, but like every other room got soaked through floor to ceiling. Wow. Yeah, but so my bedroom was the one that was spared, and I was very grateful for that because that was where my computer was. I'm surprised they're not just like yeah, I'm actually quite uh, shutting down the building. Yeah, I, 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 I think 
in an in a, in a mostly ideal world where somehow flooding is still a thing, but otherwise it's, it's ideal, right? In, in, a, in a better version of this world, I would have imagined that I noticed the flood, I call the office emergency line, and within like five minutes, somebody's there, has shut off all the water and electricity to the building, and then within an hour, they've got people with like, like ideally within 20 minutes, right? They've got people with hoses sucking the water out of the building. Right. But but no, it took 45 minutes for a anybody to come at all, and five hours for anybody to show up with a vacuum, with a shop vac to get the water out. And uh, had I known, I and, and had I known that I had friends in the area with a shop vac, I would have called them, because five hours was enough time for the water to mostly subside on its own by soaking through the floor into the foundation of the building. Which, you know, they have such a cavalier attitude about the structural soundness of these buildings. Like, they're gonna collapse one day and kill a bunch of people. You know how they repaired my ceiling? How? Well, in the kitchen, like, there was a giant rotten hole, so they had to actually put it back together. They, like, patched it with some wood and putty, but, um... In the rest, you know, where it was all stained and had cracks, they just painted it white. They only did okay. paint? If you're sure that the, the ceiling material can still hold up. Yeah, that's pretty ridiculous. While it's all stained and nasty and they, you just covered it up. <sighs> yeah, I'm, I'm glad I don't, like, own this place and probably won't stay here much longer. I'm really hoping that I got the Kerbal Space Program job. Because if so, in a month from now, I'm going to be out of here and on the other end of the country. You're going to move? Maybe, maybe even in Canada. That would be sad. But, you know, it's not... No, I, I, I understand. I'm not trying to get away from you and my other friends here, but, like, yeah, I don't, I don't like this area. Oh, re really? Wait, you don't like being around Atlanta at all? I'm comfortable with it because I'm familiar with it, but um, I don't want to live in the South. Why not? If I'm going to be in the South, Atlanta's the place to be, but like, yeah. I want to go to a different part of the world. What What is your primary issue with the South? The political environment. I mean, okay, but... That's changing constantly, and Georgia is blue now, so... Yeah, I, I'm not sure it's gonna stay blue. Okay. And, uh, it's, it's only barely so by a technicality. And it's going to get more so, but... Okay. Yeah, I, over time. I don't know. I'd like to... I'd like to go somewhere with, with a more accepting community in general, you know? That, that, that's be better for people like me. And I hear the Seattle and Vancouver area is good for that. But most of the reason I moved is because they would want me to move to the job. Right, that is... The side benefit is uh, I'd be making $100,000 a year and thus be able to easily afford a way better place. I do wonder, like, sometimes some of the contractors are like, hey, so what do you do? And I'm like, I'm a software engineer. And they're like, oh, that's cool. And I, I wonder if they're like, how is a software engineer doing in this tiny TV apartment? Like, I'm cheap. Also, the part they didn't tell you is that I'm an unemployed software engineer. Also, nothing pays very much. Well, I, I get dollar sign eyes when I when I see big numbers like a hundred thousand. Especially over this past year, like I've spent most of this year living off of money that I made between October and May last year. Or, you know what I mean? Like the money I made between October and May has paid for my livelihood from May to now January, and there's still about a quarter of it left. Nice. 
Yeah, so I'm like, and that, I was making like 52,000 at that job. I was, I really got lowballed, which was fine. It was my first job and I didn't expect to stay there long, particularly if they didn't start paying me more as time went by, which they didn't actually. So, you know, I knew I'd be getting out of there eventually. So I'm thinking like, they're gonna pay me twice that. Like, yeah. If they don't fire me and actually work there a couple of years, I'm, I'm gonna have a humongous nest egg. Still way too small to buy a house, but... I don't know that I can do this one on my own, okay. but let's see. Literally years of rent covered pretty comfortably. In theory, I can start saving for that retirement thing that older people keep telling me is gonna happen. I went to visit my dad, you know, because he wanted to, I, I, I wanted to get out of the apartment, and he's like, okay, I guess you can have dinner with us, and so I did, and, um, yeah, he started bugging me about retirement savings. It's an ad in chat. But on the, on the off chance that whoever posted that ad is still here, hey, thanks for stopping by. You don't have to delete it. It's not like a spam message. No, but I Just an ad. Oh, fair enough. I see. I have to open up. Oh, great. Now I gotta do the tutorial for the <laughs> special mod UI. Which auto plays the stream. That, that's nice. Which auto plays the stream in, in such, and, and then hides the controls so I can't pause the stream. All right. Oh, I see. I'm not allowed to click anything until I've clicked this tiny little thing that's like one of nine. Docked widgets provide stats and access to other tasks. You can do widgets. You know, you know what's the newest thing that's starting to bug me about like software and game UIs? The tutorial that you get one chance to take and that chance at the very beginning before you've done anything. And then it tells you everything you'll need to know for your entire experience using the software. Even though you're gonna forget nearly all of it while you're trying to figure out the basics of how to use the software. Good ones let you retake the tutorial, but like... She's all like, you gotta plan your strategy around the enemy, except my strategy uh, the best strategy I can do at the moment is s uh, occasionally lock them in place very slightly, but for the most part, just try and kill them quickly and start really far away from them. And every single one of the enemies can make it to me anyway. So, like, realistically speaking, there is, like, no actual strategy I can apply. Level 13? Nope, not quite. If I hit another thing, I am switching to... Lancer. There it is. 
The exit button is just a picture of a shield on the top left. Very intense standards. Ow. Is it hidden in the reply menu? No. Just, that just makes me reply. Oh, that wasn't enough. I guess I have to kill four. There we go. Oh, do I? I do not have a side quest going. Well, let's see what these people need. Let's go ahead and switch over to Lancer. Everything other than the thing that I entered the mod dashboard specifically to do. If you want for work, I have need of an adventurer willing to dirty her hands. Hmm? No, no. I speak not of dark deeds. I mean only to have you deliver something. I myself would not dare venture. I myself would not dare venture deep into the Twelves Wood. But you seem more than capable of defending yourself. My colleague Gil Gillian, Gillian, I'll say Gillian, will furnish you with the item in question and provide all the necessary directions. She should be somewhere behind the stable, supervising the field hands. This is a level 5 quest, though, so I can't imagine her definition of deep into the Twelves Wood is very far. I think it's probably where I just was. Gissel Greens! I'm gonna get her chilling back here. Very cute. Well, I'll be! Viona actually found someone willing to lend a hand. Grab one of them burlap sacks over yonder, atop the crate. Aye. Tain't the most convenient location, to be sure, but where else can we store that stinking shite? Know where a visitor, visiting customer might catch a whiff, that's for sure. Deliver it to Nolan L down at Blessed Bud. That's Westy here, in case you were wondering. Seems our conjurer friend takes his garden in pretty bloom and seriously. Ah, it's Opo Opo Dung. Or, actually, probably Chocobo Dung. Given that that's what they're raising here. I found it. Nice. Apparently, there's a set of mod icons that show up in chat that are turned off by default. Icons? Guy starts vibrating. Icons, everyone. So it's a good learning exercise because, you know, in some hypothetical future where the channel gets fake, we're going to need to know how to delete messages ten times faster than that. Were these one of the things you, you came up with a name for? Or was that the other one? What? What are you looking at? Look at the stream. Crack over there. God, these guys are so cute. I, um, no. It was the big ones, but I don't remember what you called them. The the yeah, the bot ba ba banamites banamites bit bit banemides banemides banemides. There we go. That odor. Is that what I think it is? Yes. More like Benemides nuts. Praise be to the elementals. I cannot thank you enough for your kindness. This bounty of chocobo manure shall nourish the plants and ensure their continued growth. Please relay my sincerest thanks to Vione upon your return to Tree Speak Stables. And a word of advice, wash your hands quickly, lest the cloying stench of feces linger. That's, what they, that's an item they should probably drop. So these would be, mi these would be middlings. If those are Benemides, these would be middlings. Maybe. Yeah. Can't think of anything better. Welcome back, friend. Hmm, I gather from that smell the task is complete. Oh my, did I neglect to inform you of the sack's contents? Oh, I cannot apologize enough. 
That would certainly explain why you agreed to help when countless others turned their noses up at the idea, so to speak. Well, what's done is done. Please accept this for your troubles, along with my thanks. Uh-huh. You definitely forgot to let me know. It's fine, I would have done it anyway, but still. What do you mean? Like there's a chocobo over there and you've got your animal companion over here. Oh, got it. Uh, no, I have zero interest in playing Power World. If you got a mind to make yourself useful, why don't you call some mightlings for us? We got a lot of chocobos, CRC, and the youngins go wild when they get a sniff of a mightling. Middling. Some even throw their bloomin' riders. Let me tell you, it ain't easy training a chocobo when she drops you on your head every time she sees the shadow. We've been getting nowhere with the birds lately. If you could give us, a, if you could rid us of a few middlings, we'd be in your debt. Gotta get my talking. Yep. Yeah, I learned more about Foul World yesterday and its development process, and it's very cringe. It really makes there you feel like, like a plantation like, owner. Well, that, but also there's rumors going around that the executives of the studio made some kind of claim that they didn't use any rigs when they animated the characters. Right. Because the executives did not know what an animation rig was and had contracted out all of the modeling and animation to people who did know what that stuff was. And who may have in turn used rigs. Or used pre made rigs. It's pretty much inconceivable that they did not use rigs of some kind. Whether they made them themselves or not, I don't know, but like. The other very funny claim. The other very funny claim that may theoretically be true is that initially it was not meant to be based on Pokemon at all. Hmm. It was meant to feel yeah. like like two games that it does actually feel like, Rust and yeah. uh, one other. I can't remember what the other one was. They've apparently been denying that it's a, that it's a parody and that the parody looking elements are intentional, which I think exactly. is a bad move for them. Because even if it's true, you know, and they they didn't mean to parody Pokemon at all, it's so similar, and would, and it's so understandable as a parody that they really should roll with that so they don't get sued. They probably don't want they probably don't want it to seem like they're trying to sell it to the kids who would play Pokemon because it's not a game for kids. Which is more reasons to say it's a parody and not... A and also more reasons to not make imitation. it super cute, but whatever. Thank you for the help! An imitation is meant for the same audience. A parody is often not. We can finally get back to training the young birds. Chocobos are skittish by nature, see? And training them makes it, takes a deal of patience. It don't make the task any easier that soldiers and adventurers tend to ride them towards danger rather than away from it. Any anyway, road, we're grateful for the help. Here's a small token of our gratitude. Oh, I need something else. I wonder about horses. There actually are horses in the game, but not in this country. We haven't forgotten how you help... <laughs> See, this this is what I'm talking about. He has another quest for me right away after I finish the previous one. And he says, we haven't forgotten how you helped us out with those with them middlelands. It's like, yeah, yeah I just did that. Speaking of which, if you got a bit of time to spare, could I trouble you to gather some aphids? You can find them living in the tangled undergrowth near Blessed Bud. But don't be surprised if your presence if your presence attracts a starving ladybug or two. They're rather fond of the wee vile kin, you see. When you gather the aphids, deliver them to Captain Guthrit over at the Etat Spire. And tell him Tree Speak Stable sends its regards. Yeah, this is a um a level six quest, so it's one level higher than the other one. So it's very likely you would be able to do it immediately afterwards. Th those are the ones that I find extremely silly. When MSQ does it, it's like, okay, yeah, I guess you could have gone and done other things between, but it's one side quest feeding right into the next one. Yeah. Like, at the very least, it should shift over to somebody else giving you the quest. Gee, I'm actually reading through this ad. Oh, I'll like, do this first. My YouTube channel is <gasps> I do cute try on and yoga bits, like, so, 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 so you're Look at the giant cute mightling! Nope, not what I meant to attack. Look at him! He's so tubby. Did he slow me? Oh boy. 
If I can avoid that in the future, I really need to. That's not great. Okay, finally. Nope. There is uh, no way of defending against that other than hopefully dodging it. Which I've done twice now, so it's not bad. Yeah, because if I come over here... Oh hey, still got attacked. Oh hey, still got attacked. I get that. It's just like there is there. I'm so concerned about being slowed while you're not even trying to move. There really isn't, man. Oh, my my attacks are slowed as well. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That that's why I noticed in the first place. All that matters is that he pops before you do. Yep. Yeah. Hey, Fids. Ladybug drink, attacking me. I do drink a ladybug. A dude rinker ladybug. Oh, I did not successfully get aphids because the ladybug attacked. Everything changed when the ladybug attacked. <laughs> just when the ladybugs attack. This dude is just single clock and squirrels. Bonk. And bonk. I can't, like... I'm gonna need professional cleaners to clean the floor. But, like, they can't unless they can access the floor. And to access the entire floor of the apartment, that means they need me to remove all of the items in the apartment. Yeah. Which... That's how fixing the fridge goes. I'm supposed to put them! I live here! Yeah. I mean, did they say they can't they can't do it in chunks? Maybe. I haven't talked to them. All my business has been through the housing office. So. One sec. What's that? You have something for me. Aphids. Ah, the aphids from Bod One. This is indeed a blessing. What use have we for aphids, you ask? Why, they're oil, of course. There's not better for maintaining our weapons. Were it not for your timely delivery, I would have been forced to send a sentry to replenish our dwindling supplies. I'll have to thank Bodwin personally, and thanks to you as well, friend. Up, oh, level 7. Ah, mana, just the person. <laughs> it's just here, but okay. Your efforts on behalf of Tree Speak Stables mark you out as a genuine talent. If you have confidence in your battlecraft, may happy you agree to help us in our fight against the Ixel. According to reports, Ixali scouts have been sighted by the river due west of here. Though that area is uninhabited, it borders Tree Speak Stables and Blessed Bud. We mean to drive them off before they can threaten our people. If several of their, if several of their scouting parties would be to summarily dis dispatched, it might give their leaders cause to doubt the wisdom of their plan. Slay two Ixily Dull Talons, two Ixily Lost Wings, and two Ixily Slow Beaks. What? It's pretty silly that he needs, to kill, he needs me to kill two exact of each. Show them the price they must pay for setting foot in our territory. I might could maybe do that. Oh. Bow, oh, oh, oh. Like, the more I look around, the more it's starting to see one achieve. Because I, I know I need separate teams to do the carpet versus the rest of the floor, which is classic. So, one would think I would just clear out my room, have them do the carpet, and then put everything in my bedroom while they do the rest of the floor. But A, not everything is going to fit in my bedroom. B, that'll take a really long time. And C, like, all the bottoms of the furniture are all nasty because of the flood. So, in order to get, like, if I put them in my room, they'll get the carpet dirty. So I'll need to clean them all on the way from out of my room to in my room. So even if they would fit, it'll take me forever because I'm going to have to be cleaning every piece of furniture and, as I get through the door. And also dealing with, like, shoes and stuff because I'm wearing my outside shoes all week out here. 
where the floor is all disgusting. We're just going to be very, very clear that you did not say Jews just now. Oh, no, I <laughs> Footwear. Slippers. I've been wearing... Yeah, I've, I've been wearing slippers or whatever all week, you know, because the floor is dirty. But if part of the floor is going to be clean, I don't want to just track all the nasty crud from one end one to the other. You're going to have to putting them on and taking them off every time I go through the door, which that's not a big deal on its own, but if I, I'm going to have to do that like a hundred times moving all the furniture. I have this terrible feeling that like the carpet people and the rest of the floor people are going to show up like on the same day or two consecutive days right on each other's heels. my washing machine again it weighs like a thousand pounds nope I don't want the doll talent to attack me I don't need to kill another doll talent oh is that all of them oh cool It was bloody work, but it had to be done. Your service to Gridania will not be forgotten. Thanks to you, we now have time to plot our next move. We can muster our forces to take the battle to the Birdmen, or consolidate our defenses before they return. I must needs consult with the commander. Alright, that's it for now, for here. Hello! Hey, I can bring people back from the dead now. situation with Common Ra in uh, Night Museum 3. What? I think it was the third. Yeah, he, uh, they, they, they transfer all the exhibits to the, to the Smithsonian in Washington, D.C. And, uh, the mummy of ancient Egyptian King Common Ra comes back to life. And he shows up, and, and he's all intimidating about this, because he, he thinks it's a really big deal. He's like, it's me, Common Ra, and I have come back to life! Yep, I remember and, the line. Um, uh, yeah, and, and, and um, the, uh, the other, what was this? The main character guy, he's all like, yeah, th no, it's, he, he's not surprised about this at all. Hold on, I am, I am also forgetting who that was. It wasn't Brendan Fraser or Nicolas Cage. Who was it? Maybe it was Brendan Fraser. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ben Stiller. Yes. Yeah, Ben Ben Stiller is all like, no, it's all the we all like all these people they all, they come back to life every night. Every and time. and just so you know, you're gonna have to go back to being dead during the day. I don't think they ever get that far. He's like, no, I want the I want the square. And Ben Stiller's all like, oh, okay, we you can have that. Yeah, we thought you were after the cube. What what cube? You know the cube. Of Rubik. Dialogue time. Oh yeah, I have to talk to the asshole again. Or have the asshole talk to me. Welcome back, young man. Tell me, were you able to put your techniques to good use? When faced with an enemy who can attack from a distance, simply raining arrows upon it is wasteful and dangerous both. The battle would be not more than a contest of strength. By employing the appropriate technique, however, one may bring down one's foe with greater ease and fewer arrows. For instance, you may choose to prime your weapon well and strike hard, or employ toxins to sap their strength over time, or do both with every enemy, like I do. 
On the assumption that this fact dawned upon you prior to the fall of your 16th target, I congratulate you on passing the trial. Lay, Silver, what is your honest evaluation? Lee, sorry. Lee Leopo. Not bad, if you ask me. The adventurer pulls a good bow and is enthusiastic besides. A pleasure to meet you. My name is Lee Leopo, and this is my second year at the guild. It's quite plain you have talent with a bow, but you must take care to mind your surroundings when you're pursuing a target. I had my eye on, on you for the duration of your trial, but not once did you notice my presence. Mind your surroundings. That is rich coming from you. Your every movement is wasteful, adventurer. Your back is crooked and your elbows misaligned. It takes you an age to prime your bow, twice as long to loose an arrow. Yeah, see, these are the things you should have been actually teaching me instead of being like, go kill stuff. In summary, you fail on all counts. You have no talent as an archer, none whatsoever. I shall say it plain, Lucien. This woman is not fit to wield a bow. For our sake and hers, we should revoke her membership. As I've always said, outsiders can scarce be expected to understand, never mind master, our noble art. We waste our breath trying to teach her like. Yep, he's on the more racist side of Gridania. Well, allow me to introduce you to Silver, our comrade at the butts. The fellow was once of the god's quiver, you see, and he can be a little opinionated when it comes to archery. Oh, but you mustn't pay him any heed, he's like that to everyone. The fel You'd be lucky to get much sense out of a fossil-brained wildwood a wildwood L is in like him at the best of times. With them, it's always twelves with this, and elementals that, and... Uh, oh! <clears throat> no offense intended, Lucien. None taken, Lee. I know full well that some of my kind can be prideful to excess and intolerant of other races. Although people may behold the same object, ever will they see different things. There is no right or wrong to it, for it is a question of perspective. What matters is the perspective we choose to adopt. You are present. Things I can't. You can go ahead. All right. I, you were done. I, I will continue to let you know when I'm done, but just remember what you were going to say. You're possessed of bright eyes, mana, eyes that bespeak great understanding. They shan't lead you astray, so trust to them and to what they see. Go now and resume your training. I look forward to making your progress, marking your progress when we next we meet. Yeah. Whenever I pause talking, you are free to interject with something funny if you have it. Absolutely. Um, and then I'll just let you know when I'm done with dialogue. Like right now. Conjure next. Let me double check. I did all of the, the Thanlin ones. Yes. Gladiator, Pugilist, and... Thought Church. Yep. Uh, well, 10, 12, 12 and a half. 120 plus 30 inches, right? Yeah, yeah. it's exactly 12 and a half. 12 and a half, yes. bedroom is bigger than I thought. So I kind of guessed it would be a 10 by 10. Wait, okay, this time I'm just going to measure in multiples of feet. So there we have 36. Eleven minus two inches. Given I'll probably lose a bit because of like, the door. I'll call it twelve by ten. You don't want to lose a few inches. So that's a hundred and twenty square feet. Uh. 
It's good to see you again, Mana. By the air of serenity that surrounds you, it is plain you have learned to draw upon the energy of creation. I am glad. It is the wellspring of all our power. Yet the energy of creation is not one thing, but many, and to call upon all without first knowing each is conjury at its most basic. As a part of your continuing education, it is my desire that you now learn about the element of earth. Make your way to Blessed Bud in the Norse Shroud, and there partake of Healer Nolnell's wisdom. The depth of his affinity for the elementals of rock and soil is all but unique amongst conjurers, and he's a gifted instructor besides. You may be certain of receiving a most enlightening lesson on the subject of earth. said North Shroud, right? Because I think I remember who I'm talking to. Yeah, cool. I'm going to be talking to the same person who uh, I was just talking to a little while ago. This song. Or at least the beginning of it. Like this little bit this little bit of piano here is so nice. Well, looks like a fate and it's probably the same fate. Probably the big bug again. Oh I need to kill some of these little bugs in. Dang, that range is good. Hmm. According to this map... Big bug. No, not big bug. Just a whole bunch of opo opos. Alright. I want to keep towards the edge. Oh, I have completely forgotten to eat food. Did it actually interrupt me? Ah, oh, you rude. On some bread. Had most of this in a ten by ten storage unit, though. Yes, if I can temporarily stack stuff up to the ceiling, hope that nothing is crushed. Might off it. Might mostly fit. For me, and I guess I'll just put the rest on the porch or something. Hey, achievement! Is that killing for a th killing a thousand enemies? Yep, I've defeated a thousand enemies. Oh, I am running out of time. Oh, this sucks. I just gotta go fast. I don't have any AoEs.
I mean, what I probably should do is switch to another class, but... Um, You seek here a no, then seek no more if you have found him. What can I do for you, friend? So Brother Isubi Don bid you come to me to learn of the element of earth? And that is well. The power of earth is the solid foundation upon which a conjurer stands. I could happily lecture you for days on its intricate variations and, pro and properties, but I rather suspect the busy life of an adventurer will not afford me the time required for such extended discourse. Accordingly, I shall offer you an opportunity to experience the qualities of earth firsthand in combat. Now mark me well, Mana, and do exactly as I command. East of here, in the grounds of tree speak stables, there exists a patch of soil that bears the mark of corruption. Seek it out. When you have found the place, reach out to the focus reach out to the focus of the earth's trauma and attempt to commune with it, as all conjurers can. Resentful of your intrusion, the tainted being that feasts upon the that feasts unseen upon the energy seeping from the wounded earth shall then appear. Using the powers of conjury, strike it down and permit the the land a chance to heal. Much of the nature of Earth will be revealed to you during the struggle, Mana. I trust you will return to be a wiser woman than she who now departs. Than she who now departs. <clears throat> yep. Oh, is this just right behind? I thought he meant like behind tree speak tables. Tree speak stables. He just means near the gardens. Allowing there to be corrupted soil at the garden is probably not the best idea. But I guess they didn't have time to fix it before I got here. Rock versus rock. There we go. Uh, hang on. Back we go. The, uh, this quest is named Trial by Earth. I get the feeling we'll be going through all the elements. Well, actually, no, not all of them. Just the, um, the astrally aspected uh, elements. So, wind, earth, and I guess fire isn't one of them. Wind, earth, and water? Not ice. Fire, ice, and lightning. Yeah, so water. Wind, earth, and water. Cool. Welcome back, Meta. The elementals whisper of your accomplishments. How, sorry, this isn't quite the voice I did for How does it feel to confront the embodiment of Earth, to endure its onslaught? Has the crushing power of this element shaken the very marrow of your bones? Corruption occurs when the land's wounds are prevented from healing. In vanquishing the tainted sprite, you permitted the Earth's energies to flow unimpeded and to nourish the land once more. Can you not sense the strength of the Earth returning? Already the land begins to heal. Thanks to your actions, the field will once again bear bountiful crops. When next you have reason to call upon your art, look back upon this task and that which you have accomplished. Experience once more the grinding weight of the Earth's fury and revel in the memory of life flowing anew through the land you helped restore. 
With such thoughts shall your understanding of nature continue to grow. I hope you were paying attention, Sylphie. Love this character. See this adventurer here? Man, it came all the way from Stillglade fame just to hear my lesson. All of those, you know, two-minute walk. <laughs> you would do well to learn from her example. If you wish to become a conjurer worthy of the name, you must make an effort to study nature. Do you attend me, young lady? Why should I bother studying nature? I can conjure already. See? You have a rare gift for healing, Sylphie. A wonderful gift. Yet there is more to being a conjurer than... But I don't want to do more. I want to heal. I'm good at healing. You can't make me do those other things. Ah, sometimes I wonder why I even try. Sylphie joined the guild shortly before you came to us. As you yourself just experienced, she possesses a prodigious talent for healing. Indeed, despite her tender years, I know a few conjurers who are equal in that field. Alas, nature, the very wellspring of her power, holds no interest for the child. And when she should by rights be learning about the land, she prefers instead to wander it, healing people on a whim. You, in contrast, have, a most, have been a most attentive student. I have taught you all I know of the element of Earth. All I know, you may report back to Brother Isumi and tell him as much. There are some sweeping statements like that that I'm just like, all right, come on. This would seem a little less ridiculous if you didn't say something like that. Hey, it's the big bug again. All right. Lancer, Pugilist, Arcanist, Thaumaturge. Attacks are going to be so slow. Yeah, I could probably list them, but I might be a little you know, rusty. Do you know what the point of those was? Was it about robots not he was fighting not back against humans? Proposing what the three laws should be, he came up with three hypothetical laws as an example of a flawed system that some robot company, you know, might make up. Oh, neat and how they would be fought, which is why in every single one of his stories where there is a robot, the three laws get, like, lawyer, rules lawyered and exploited to hurt people. That makes sense. Or hurt robots. And yet everybody references like, them as like, this is all you need. The three laws, humans should be enslaved. Or in Foundation, where according to the three laws, uh, I guess it really boils down to humans should be enslaved again. Yeah, well, um, I bring it up because a paper has been published. My brother sent this to me and neglected to tell me who published this paper, but uh, it's got an excerpt in here saying that the way they're going to program their AIs is to start with foundational rules based on Asimov's three laws of robotics. But here's the best part. They didn't just copy them. They attempted to improve them and actually made them worse. Made them worse? First, the first law is a robot may not harm a human being or 
through inaction, allow a human being to come to harm. That's the true version. So, yeah, like, if you see someone drowning and you're a robot, you don't, you're not allowed to just sit there and not do anything when you could help. Right. So the company's like, yeah, we decided to remove that because we don't want to bias our robots toward inaction. And I'm like, that, how would that the opposite? Yeah, how would that bias, bias them? them against inaction? All right, dialogue, one sec. So ah, Mana, you have returned. But tell me, how did you fare under Nolanel's expert tutelage? Have you delved deep into the earth and felt its suffocating weight, its life-sustaining vigor? Such experiences will serve you well. And have you aught else to report? Hmm? A fledgling conjurer named Sylphie cast healing magic upon you. How kind of her. Uh, I must confess to sharing Lolnell's frustration with the girl. As you yourself have witnessed, Sylphie possesses a natural talent for the conjury of mending and restoration. Alas, her gifts appear to have blinded her to the need for study, and she outright refuses to learn about the natural world. She knows nothing of the elements of earth and wind, and is quite incapable of conjuring even the tiniest pebble or the faintest breeze. I've tried upon numerous occasions to explain to her that conjurers who are ignorant of the source of their power pose a risk to themselves and others, but all to no avail. Should she continue to deny the debt she owes to nature and indulge in ever more reckless displays of power, it's e there is every possibility that she will create a dangerous imbalance. Needless to say, I'm presently at a loss how to know how at a loss to know how such an eventuality might be prevented. Ah, a, a thought occurs to me, Mana. It may be that your encounter with Sylphie was ordained by the elementals. Should you chance to meet with her again, I ask that you strive to impress upon her the importance of opening oneself to nature's voice. Mayhap she will listen to you. But we've discussed our wayward young friend's education enough. Let us speak instead once more of my willing pupils, namely you. The progress you have made does, great, does you great credit, Mana. That you are yet new to the art of conjury, you're no stranger to nature's embrace. Considering all that you have learned, I hope you understand the true significance of these words. I will still refuse to this. To grab this. I'm stubborn. Yay! I can also raise people from the dead with this job. Uh, wait, I need my limit break. The second part of this is even more damning. They've decided we're going to reverse the order of the second and third laws uh, because, quote, our robots are currently more in need of protection from humans asking for tasks which could endanger the robots rather than the other way around. Uh, I mean, I no, guess. Decided, yes, the product we are manufacturing is more valuable than the users of the product. Right. Like, what, what do you think is going to happen when a robot meets some kind of unsolvable conflict where it has to break one of the rules it, it's 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 going to through inaction allow a human being to come to harm like what if you're drowning and the robot can save you but if it saves you it'll take water damage which will cause it to short and die if rule three comes before rule two the robot will conclude that it's not hurting you because you know they removed that the right in action clause yep and it'll go well i need to live so even though the human is ordering me to save it by begging for help my safety is a higher priority than following orders so asimov invents a bunch of laws that are intentionally flawed so that he can write stories about how intent how they're flawed and how you got to be more careful and not just trust robots, you know, with humankind's fate because you wrote three laws that sounded good. And then this company's gone, we're smarter, and made them worse, and more permissive. And also used them as a basis in the first place. Again, they're an example of what not to do. Ah yes, we have finally recreated the Torment Nexus from the famous 80s cyberpunk novel, Don't Create the Torment Nexus. Yes, I love that. My brother just sent that to me, and I was wondering, like, is this just a reaction, or have you? Have, is this the first time you've seen this exact me? I, I think he knows about it, but it was the first thing I saw in the chat, and I'm like, please don't tell me this is your first exposure to the Torment Nexus. Yeah, it's like... 
you got to imagine there's people out there right now talking to chat GPT 3.5 or 4 about uh, Roko's Basilisk. <laughs> yep. Remember that interview from a few years ago where uh, they put a really shitty AI inside of a an uncanny valley attempt to mimic a, an organic looking human face? I mean, this has been so several times, but this thing is probably. A piece on the news and. Like, the last question is, like, do you want to destroy humans? And she's like, yes, I want to destroy humans. <laughs> and, like, she didn't know what was going on. And they just laugh awkwardly. She's a dumb robot. She had no idea what any of these subjects actually meant. But she knew how to talk. That's, that's, the, uh, that's the Chinese room problem right there is, uh... You've created a thing which convinces you that it understands Chinese, but it actually doesn't. Or is this more of a philosophical zombie? A thing which convinces you that it's alive and matters, and that its philosophical choices have weight, but actually it's just an automaton that randomly happens to do all those things. I am not sure. I mean, I still think... Well, yeah, no. I do think the Chinese box doesn't quite work. I do think the Chinese box, or whatever it's called, doesn't quite work because it's not... You're not just using it as a uh, transference of information. I guess in, in this case, it was... Yeah, they, they built a robot that could speak but didn't understand what it was saying. Dialogue. Ah, you've returned. I take from your presence that you've gained a measure of familiarity with your weapon. Good. You're ready to begin the next phase of your training. You will recall me telling you that it takes no small amount of courage to be a lancer. Now, in general terms, courage is the strength to do something which one finds unnerving. However, a lancer's notion of courage is not so simple. Having first drawn a distinction between courage and recklessness, he then divides the former into two aspects. I would have you learn each with spear in hand. The first is composure. When outnumbered in battle, a lancer may lose his composure and succumb to panic. Should this happen, all of his training will swiftly flee his mind, and he will struggle to overcome opponents whom he would ordinarily have bested with ease. He will, in short, contribute to his own defeat. If you wish to become a lancer in sooth, you must learn to maintain your composure at all times. Do this, and you will be able to call upon every ounce of your strength and skill when it matters most. And so, to your first task. The riverbanks of the Central Shroud are home to Viokin known as Yarzins. Fiercely, ter fiercely territorial, the creatures will attack anyone who strays too close, making them the bane of fisherfolk. They typically fall upon their prey en masse, barring all avenues of escape before closing in for the kill. What well, must go through the mind of their victim in that instant? Panic? Despair? Be sure to tell me that upon your return. <laughs> Needless to say, I would have you brave such an encounter. Take this sack of de decidedly noisome bait and use it to lure the ever-ravenous creatures out of their nest. It may be that only one curious Yarzon appears, but what if two or three follow the scent? Let us see how you fare then. Go now, my young Lancer, and learn what it means to fight with composure. Panic? Despair? Well, let me know! <laughs> Central Shroud... I let my comforter touch the floor, so now it's tainted. It will forever be damp. Well, the floor is dry, it's just all horrible. It's got all kinds of crud and goo ground into it. Gross. Oh, great. So I've had no choice but to wash a whole bunch of shoes because, like, they got wet and nasty and slimy. And, you know, I'm afraid because the last time I washed shoes and they all died. Yep. Did you look up details so on how we washed wash these shoes? Like, just one pair at a time, you know, and put them in with a bunch of other clothes so you don't get banged around as much. Did you look up advice? Mm, ah, why? Sort of. Why? Learning from your mistakes doesn't mean you should just assume what, what went wrong. Well, my guess of what went wrong was wrong. Because I just washed a pair of shoes and they died. No. That sucks. Well, I'm going to bill the insurance company this time. The other issue may be partly just how old the shoes are. 
Maybe. In this case, they seem fine. It's just the soul, completely intact, has has just detached. It's just not on the shoe anymore. The shoe is missing its soul, eh? Glued on. Like maybe I should just glue it back on. It's just like kind of dead inside now. A shoe without a soul is no. I get it. It's a. It's like a zombie shoe. They're not a very useful shoe. Yeah. Like it looks like it should just go right back on, but um, pretty sure I can't adhere this entire thing in a way that's going to hold together under the loads of trying to walk with it. Certainly not for long. Hey, Slam Lander. And the dryer's full of laundry. I'm gonna wash the comforter, but I guess I can't. Oh, that's, um, that's a duvet. Oh, well, whatever it is. I think. I'm buttoning the buttons, and I'm going to take the fluffy thing out from inside. Put the, uh... Just put the shell in the wash. I have to call the shell. Do you remember these guys, whose heads are entirely a mouth? Oh, the Yarzon? Yep, a mouth with a with a slit Their in the bottom. Body is just a mouth. They're like Pac-Man with legs. And the bottom of the mouth has a slit in it as well. Wait, that is, I didn't really. I don't remember looking at them terribly closely. Yeah, it's like one top jaw and then a split bottom jaw. Ah. Yeah, that's uh. I, I'm, I find that's a common thing they do in fantasy insectoids, because humans apparently just cannot comprehend how a mouth can function without having a top half and a bottom half to yeah. collapse. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. You get things like in Halo, where the aliens have, like, the top half and the bottom half, but also they can move in and out to the side a bit. Like the Lord of the Rings, where they're fighting the giant spider Shelob, and she's got like some kind of like snapping turtle mouth, because they just can't make a spider mouth that they think looks scary enough to audiences. It really bugs me. Like cosmic horror has shown us that the scariest things are often the things that are very, very different from what we've experienced and what's in our ancestral memory. Yeah. And yet Hollywood's always like, oh, let's make a scary monster, and they just make, like, a crocodile with a bear's body. Yeah, but they want to make it slightly different. Because if they just do a yeah, giant spider... It's different by, like, giving it goat horns. If they just do a giant spider, it won't be as freaky. You know, given that arachnophobia is the second most common phobia in the world, I don't think modifying a spider is necessary to make it freaky. I mean, sure. Also, you can make it freaky by not... Th that's the thing that bugs me, is they tried to make it freaky by making it more familiar. Like maybe they're trying some kind of uncanny valley, but it didn't strike me as that. It struck me as uncreative. They're, they're trying to do... Hey, it's a spider, but extra weird, which therefore means it's more dangerous. Yeah, I didn't get that impression. To me, it looked like their best effort <laughs> to render a really big spider. But I guess it was wet and digital. Like, they do know what they're doing. I don't know. 
I do find that um, often it's a lesson I had to learn through experience in grad school is that the larger your team, the more it will gravitate toward mainstream and familiar ideas rather than original and creative feeling ideas. Dialogue time. Welcome back, Mana. Well done. I trust you now understand that in times of direst need, no amount of strength or skill with a spear will avail the Lancer who lacks composure. When faced with a terrible foe, a Lancer may succumb to fear and self-doubt. Should this happen, he'll become defensive, and in seeking to cover his weakness, surrender his greatest strength, namely, his capacity to attack. A Lancer who fears to attack is not but a man holding a pole. His spear may as well be a broomstick for all the good it would do him. It is not, and never will be, a shield. That you may learn the truth of my words firsthand, I bid you go to the sh central shroud, to an area joining the abandoned dungeon known as Spirit Hold. Since the Calamity, that neck of the Twelve's Wood has become a veritable menagerie of fearsome fauna. There you will find three collapsed pillars, which have become a haunt for fell creatures. You are to put them down. Hmm? What manner of fiends can you expect to encounter? Huh. To reveal that would be to defeat the purpose of the lesson, my young Lancer. I will say only this. If you face these foes with the Lancer's resolve, you will surely emerge the victor. Once you've completed the trial, pray report to Jillian in the entrance hall. She's grasped enough. She's grasped the two aspects of courage, albeit with some trouble. Though I doubt you will encounter similar difficulties, her struggle is furnished her with certain insights to which I think you would benefit from hearing. A Lancer learns best when he is doing, aye, but the wisdom of his seniors is not entirely without worth. Go now, mana, and do as I bid you. Sentences like that. Down, he says. What's that? But put them down, he said. Yes. And you're just going to walk up there and be like, you're short, your belly button sticks out too far, and you're a terrible burden on your poor mother. I was just thinking I go there and I pick one of them up and then I set it back down and go, all right. <laughs> um, what I... Uh, what I was going to say is I don't I don't get sentences like that at the end where he's like, go now, mana, and do as I bid you. It's like, yeah. He'd be like, all right, get to it. You now to do the thing I just told you to do. Yeah, exactly. Okay, you, but should I do the thing you're telling me to do now? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> if, if, the idea, if, if, if you think it's possible that you telling me to do it doesn't make it clear to me that I'm supposed to do it, then you're going to have to tell me to do it an infinite series of times. <laughs> it's like... Just be like, alright, get to it. Or, or, I'm done talking, you can go now. <laughs> or, like, I don't know, something like that. Bye. See you when you get back. Good luck. Like, good luck would be a good one. That despair feels. Yeah, exactly. What about that pair? You, you should come back and be like, yeah, so it turns out they don't feel panic and despair. It's, it's actually an intense euphoric state of sexual ecstasy. <laughs> and he's just like, oh, okay. Just let that room after, after one or two more lessons, he's like, I don't want to teach this person anymore. <laughs> no, 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 the idea They're that getting... to make you a weirdo, it's convince the population that they can get their rocks off by being eaten by Yarzans. No, because he's, he's well aware of the fact that plenty of people do either be brave or get freaked out and so that i i just keep coming back and being like oh god it was so much fun oh and he's just like uh, uh this is both shoes are completely intact except that the soul has just detached and on on one of them it's gone missing more jokes about the shoes having a soul uh where am i supposed to be going yep, spirit on. hold so I am going to I like those shoes left them, but they're a little scratchy. across the bridge, right. So they, okay. They were a little scratchy. I will probably remember that. If not, I will pull my map out again. The good news is uh, my slippers survived, and my sneakers survived, but my sneakers are smaller now. So they're very difficult to put on. They shrink in the wash. They like they went down a size or something. And, uh, hey. Yeah. So I put them on the list. And you I should look insurance on that one too. You should look it up. You should look up advice. Well, I guess to help prevent things like that happening from happening. Yeah. Somebody down here needs help. What do they need help with? I'm going to get pulled away for these side quests as well. Oh, did I do this one? Yeah, this is one where he wants me to beat up his... 
Uh, group training exercise. My party is a few members short. Uh, oh, wait. I want to be... Thaumaturge. That's my last 11, right? Yeah. Alright, well, now that I'm very carefully unloading the dryer, I notice usually when I try to, oh, to unload the dryer, I'll pull out one, one garment but it will somehow be entangled with every other garment into this long rope of garments. And in my attempt to get them all out, inevitably, like, one sock will escape and leap to freedom and teleport to the floor. And when the floor is all nasty like this, that means I have to wash it again. So it's very frustrating. Apparently this, uh... Fate had, like, no time left on it, even though it's a started at some point fate, so... Yeah, that's unfortunate. Ah, perfect timing. I was just looking for a likely last to track down some twin adder initiates. Three of our newest recruits have failed to report for training. <laughs> it's the ones that he was just talking about, his party that hadn't shown up. Exhausted from a month of solid drills, I expect. Considering their current physical state, I rather doubt they've wandered far. Uh, we they were exhausted by, you know, getting drilled. Oh, God. Getting drilled, yep. Oh, gods, please don't mention wild beasts or blood. They're fine, I'm certain of it. Seek out my wayward troops and tell them to report back to me on the double. Oh yeah, trust me, the wild beasts in blood are perfectly fine. Dude fell asleep. The Arzons are doing pretty well, too. Sergeant Kamazom? Oh, F-droppings. I must be late for training. He went, ah, oh, lizard poop. Or sal salamander poop. It's kind of small, so... I never seem to be able to get all the laundry into it. Maybe fit the basket. Such a soothing sound. One day I should build a home by the river. Hmm? Who are- You say the sergeant's looking for me? How long have I been here? What bell is it now? Stand aside, I must make haste. Dialogue you know in a quiet place? They live near a waterfall? Yeah. Why don't they just live right next to the waterfall, and then the monsters won't be able to find them, because it's too noisy? That's why they live near the waterfall. No, they live too far away for the waterfall to be affected. Waterfall is just kind of vaguely nearby and lets them get fresh water. But I'm like, no, you should put your house right there. I don't. I, I explicitly remember thinking, oh, living near the waterfall is a good idea because it makes it harder to hear them. Yeah. Like, like I explicitly remember that being one of the reasons they were living there. But I might be wrong. Oh, oh. Can you not Wait, see? Sorry. I'm attempting to become with nature. Leave me be, good madam. What? Sergeant, Ka Sergeant Kamazon sent you? Matron's teats. I better, I, I better get back before she makes her boot one with my backside. Makes her boot one with my backside. Doors were closed and then wearing headphones, but it just started raining. Thank you, Mana. All the initiates are now present and accounted for. It's always the same, you know. A handful of recruits invariably lose focus a short while after being assigned to their new unit. That first rush of tension and excitement wears off, and the strain from constant drills begins to show. Reprimanding them isn't always the best solution, though. If I have their morale to think about, after all. Still, I might give them a quick blast for good measure. What can I say? This is one battle I'm not afraid to fight. But guess what? What? Well, dialogue for one sec. Hello there, adventurer. If it's work you seek, then look no further. Instructor Mar Marustal. Needs a volunteer to bring him some bog yards and shells for the recruits to practice on. You'll find Yarzons in the river south of here. Once you've pried the carapaces from four of the creatures, take them to the instructor. Alright, dialogue done for now. All the laundry I just washed, including the shoes, I just pulled it out of the dryer, right? And then I went to put new stuff in the dryer. So I went to grab the cup from the detergent, and I found it was already full of detergent. And the only way for that to be the case is if I filled it with detergent and then I didn't pour it into the machine, meaning I just ran all the wash 
without any. So all I did was get everything wet again. And then, of course, I went and mixed it all in with my other clean laundry. You know, everything's all... I'm just gonna pull it out and deal with it. Try not to think about it. And I can only hope that this is the only time this week that that's happened. I, mean, I haven't washed a whole bunch of loads of laundry without the soap and red water on them. That would be unfortunate. Well, since the soils are detached, I'm going to leave these out. Yeah. They're just going to be dirty all the time anyway. Point trying to wash those. It means the nice blanket that I thought was all clean, good to go, is not actually. So I won't be able to sleep until this comforter is done washing, which is going to be in seven hours. Not only is the washing machine small, it's very, very slow. It only takes an hour to wash, but like, then it has to dry, which apparently takes six hours. I'm definitely gonna get attacked. Well, no, I managed to dodge that one. Ah, there we go. Well, I'm gonna see if I can just ignore him. Because there's a fate in here. Bedroom stuff back together. Oh, this is not good. Probably gonna wash all the sheets anyway. I think I'm gonna switch to a different job for this. What should I pick? Let's go with Gladiator. Oh, that should be up there, I guess. Oh, I didn't eat food again. Dang it. It's starting to seem unreal that this place was so peaceful for so long. So between like last April and a week ago, I don't recall anything going wrong. You know, nothing was leaking or breaking or flooding. Dang it. There's a roof over my porch, but water blew in anyway. And now everything that was outside of it water on it, including see, a surge protector, a box of COVID tests. Awesome. Any other 
suitcase. Nice. I don't know what I'm going to do with these suitcases because they were in contact with the floor when the flood happened. And I, I don't know a way to wash a suitcase. So, is it just going to be nasty forever? I have to get a new one. These boxes are closed, they're okay. They have the lids on. Yep, my piece of plywood is wet. At least that's not some kind of antique expensive thing. It's just inconvenient. And I had a laptop out here, but it was under so many layers of clothes it seems to have been spared. It hasn't been raining that long. They intercepted all of it. Oh boy, it's a cloud of bugs. I only left the laptop out there that long because uh, it doesn't have a battery. Oh boy, it's a big frog. thermal damage, but then I remembered that there are people who use liquid nitrogen to cool their PCs to negative 200 degrees. So, I guess com computers can be cold. Hopefully. Did you look it up? Mm. I'm going to turn it on first. With words or actions. I have way too many things to look up this week. So having to go through like all my stuff and find out how much it's worth, right? Yeah. My list of damaged items now has literally two hundred books on it. So I've gotta Well, I hope they respect look up it. All of that shit. I think I got all the all, that's all the damaged books, but like that's so many. I thought 50 was a lot. Hey, look. It's anolis. These look like anolis, right? Uh, no. No, they don't. Yeah, it's a little... I find it a little dumb when the fantasy games will name stuff after a real animal that exists, and then it's, it's not the real animal. It's clearly some other thing. Well, this dude just died. Like, okay, a carbuncle. Do you know what a carbuncle is? Uh, I did at one point. I don't remember. But it's also a terrible name. A carbuncle name. is like a little little rainbow-colored rabbit creature from some popular fantasy game or gotcha game, whatever, right? But that's not what the word originally meant. There's also a carbuncle in this one. A carbuncle is when, when you get a pimple, when it's really, really bad yeah. and gets infected, it turns into this big swollen red thing called a boil. Yeah. And when you get a whole bunch of boils all right next to each other, you know, they, they form this blob, like like when two fruits grow too close, close together and turn into this nasty looking blob fruit. And that is a carbuncle. It is a big, amorphous, pus filled, horrible um, blob. And it's painful and red and swollen and infected. I mean, it might, the name might be from yeah, some other culture. Little rabbit creature, that. Like, like, remind me, you know, next time I make a fantasy game, I'll have, like, I don't know, like, a little, uh, little cat creature or, or something. You know, a little, um, maybe a squirrel, hedgehog, you know, some, some adorable little animal. And then I, I'll I'll name it um, I'll name it Teratoma. Yeah, that's what it is. It's got to be a little turtle. Nobody will realize. Yes, Teratoma. Oh. Nobody will realize the name doesn't make any sense. Cause like the, the the word sounds almost like it would be a science word related to turtles, but it's not. Not at all. Do you know what that is? You got you got to do that with every like gross medical word that means something completely different that 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 yeah. doesn't sound like it's gross. Like you got you got to name a um 
you gotta have a game with like a, a rather plain looking or maybe like kind of like slightly rare and dangerous fish named gonorrhea yeah that's too obvious why because everybody knows what gonorrhea is I, okay sexual, that's and i don't want to name too many things sexual things okay that's fair but also no most many people may have heard the term gonorrhea but they definitely don't know what it is it's nstd they may not know the specifics but I, I think most adults know it comes from sex that's possible it's a bad thing that happens to people uh, and more often to people who are promiscuous it's a bad thing that happens to people when they do bad things, like sex. Yeah, you know, we live in a culture where sex is evil. Not on my clean Christian stream. Sadly, like, there is some evolutionary biological utility in that, because it stops people from being too gregarious. Yo, it's Plus, the Scott Pilgrim! The pandemics, but, hmm? It's the Scott Pilgrim. And you know, it's funny, is I knew it was going to rain, but and then I got distracted. I did not bring my stuff in before the rain started. Alright, dialogue time. I have been expecting you, Mana. By your return, I trust you now understand the importance of resolve. Like one's flesh, courage can be made strong. It's a matter of training each of its aspects. Now, the endeavor may, produce, may prove difficult in the beginning. Gods know how much I struggled. You may suffer untold humiliation and more frustration than you can bear. But you must persevere. Whenever you engage an opponent, whether it's training or in earnest, make a conscious effort to fight with composure and resolve. Over time, doing so will become second nature, and you will acquire such courage as you never thought could be yours. Mind you, not all battles entail a physical clash of might. It could simply be a disagreement born of a, from, born of a conflict in ideology. The point is, it matters not what battlefield you stand upon. So long as you take care to be composed and resolute, your courage will grow. Did that make any sense, even a little? I fear I cannot hold a candle to Guildmaster your Wayne, but if there's aught I can do to assist in your training... Wait, what was that? Something's afoot in the training area. Probably the feet. Hey, I hope it's not the bear's foot. There is some sound of it's weapons doing bear, things. Really. Yes. And where there are bare feet, there are often bare arms. And you call yourselves Lancers. Pathetic. Actually, I call myself Steve. Your next Guildmaster, arm yourself and face me. Refuse, and we will all know that you are no true Lancer. Say what you will. I can't arm myself. The bear has my arms. I'm above provocation. Hmm. Craven to the last man. Well, if you're Craven men, then, you know, that makes you gay. Ah, but what have we here? <laughs> Wait. She's but a novice. That makes no odds to me. You yourself admitted her to your ranks, did you not? Uh, actually... Very well. I shall withdraw for now. Yet know that only the fearless are fit to wear the mantle of Lancer. I look forward to measuring your worth in the days to come. There's not more to see. Return to your drills. One thing I really liked about having Hang on. that place is that... Thought thought I'll tell time. you when it's done. Mana, you made no attempt to evade his thrust. 
Did your opponent so unnerve you as to deprive you of your senses? Well, it's of little consequence now. That <laughs> made you lose your senses? No, I was stuck in a cutscene. <laughs> you need to pay no further heed. Thrust, you know? Why, why would I not want to- why would I want to avoid his thrust? Because it could have gone a few inches further and stabbed my face? You need pay no further heed to our uninvited guest. Lest you wonder, it is not uncommon for challengers to come pounding on our door, seeking to test their mettle. For now, dedicate yourself to tempering the two aspects of courage, the composure to bring the sum of your strength, and the skill to bear against your foes, and the resolve to attack when fear would stay your hand, as befits a lancer. When next we meet, I shall have another trial for you, one that will put your courage to the test. Until then, continue to apply yourself to your training. Farewell, Mana. Aw, yeah. I, uh, I'm gonna make something better than that, so I won't. Stick you in my ingredients cage. Put you I, in my uh, armory really chest. About having my own place is that when I moved in, I could get everything all clean, and then like I didn't have to worry about where I staffed or what I touched because it was all clean. Now it's not. There's nasty stuff everywhere. Constantly worrying about cross contamination. And I can't just clean it because like there's way too much, and I'm I don't have the equipment to clean all of this. This, this floor is going to need more than just some sweeping. Oh. Sell, sell, and I'm just, yeah, I'm just gonna sell everything. Alright. You know what time it is? Adventure time! Botany time! Oh. Wrong way. So, I've been, uh, I had to having to order a lot of uh, delivery food lately and I found to my dismay that increasingly delivery places are saying they have delivery and then not delivering their own delivery yeah they have like they have called them and they're like oh you got to do all your thing through the website which just you know as a rule every website wants your email address so that they can make an account and spam you just do it through uber eats or uh, That's what DoorDash. they say when I call them. They're like, yeah. oh, we only deliver through DoorDash. Yeah. Which also wants my email. Those places probably did not do delivery beforehand. Oh no, several of them did. Little Caesars definitely did. Little, Little Caesars, Caesars has never delivered. Not not until not until uh, ride share not not ride share but whatever. Uh. Yeah, whatever. Stuff like Uber well, Eats started. At least we still have Pizza Hut. I mean, okay, I shouldn't say that with that much confidence. I'm fairly certain that if Lil Caesars ever delivered, it was only briefly before the the rush of delivery app, apps type stuff. But in any case, there's lots of pizza places that do that now. I agree. Um, and it's just because those things kind of make it cheaper and definitely make it cheaper for the companies and... There's not really much point complaining about it. So much like farming me for email addresses is it's all motivated by economics. Yeah, I I don't know. I Look, there's some extent to which there's not really a reason to complain and you just kinda gotta keep up with the times and not not I turn into your parents. Mean I have to be okay with it. You really this this is just the equivalent of what like this is your generational equivalent of complaining about technology changes. Yeah. D but do you want to be your parents? <laughs> I can clearly point to how spe the specific changes in technology about which I complain are hurting people. Yeah, and so could they. They were right. No, a lot of the time they were wrong, but... Even if they, even if you are right, there were those who were right, yes. But do you 
think that we should just stop having technological progress because there are often some downsides. I think we need to have. I, I think that we we should have ethical guidelines when we're doing stuff. You know, we we should be responsible in our development of new technologies and how they're used. Then. So you know, we we shouldn't create facial recognition software and then use it to spy on people. Sure. Do you want to go make it yourself so it stops doing that? <laughs> well, therein is the problem. It's, it's a bit of a natural selection kind of issue because people who want to make it and don't care about the consequences will put money and effort into making it. And people who do care about the consequences will either not not put effort into making it because they don't want to or they will make it more slowly and with more difficulty so they, they won't win the race actually I'll pick up this quest first but I forgot to turn in my other side quest it's why you know SpaceX is making leaps and bounds in their space technology like 10 times faster than NASA does NASA right. is careful and methodical about everything they do. SpaceX just keep blowing up launch pads. Dialogue time. I will get back to this though. Oh, excuse me, sorry. Back is bothering me. Hello again, Mana. I'm told you've been putting your hatchet to good use. Well done. Yet, as I mentioned before, hacking away at trees does not make you a botanist. You must, stri you must also strive to deepen your understanding of nature. I say this in the knowledge that you have done just that. Whether you realize it or not, you have the air of a woman who is at ease with the world around her. I do believe you are ready for your next task. I would like you to go to Tree Speak and there harvest ten pots worth of maple sap. Once you have enough, pray deliver the sap to Sicily. She will be pleased to receive it. Off you go now, Mana. Uh, uh, tree Speak. North Shroud? Yes, Tree Speak Stables. Tree speak in general, yes. Okay. And this, I have to go to uh, the Bannock. That's out in the Central Shroud, isn't it? Ugh. Alright, heading out there first. I have made a mistake. This person's name is Sack Breath. Why? Oh. Someone just yelled out. Come get some antelope steak, you don't want to miss them. Is that person dressed as Sonic? That person is definitely dressed as Sonic. I haven't earned any titles yet, right? Nope, no titles yet. Sad day. How do I... Alright, whatever. If he messages me, I'll reply. to change to Thaumaturge. Oh, 
Oh boy, a fate. Fungus. Evil fungus. Okay, but where are they? Ah, oh, there. My brother agrees on every count. He oh. thinks that there's a typo and that they meant to say they wanted to bias the first law toward an action. Ah, got it. Not away. So I, I, I just told him the thing about the uh, <laughs> Spooner will be thrilled. Yes, I forgot the detective's name, but he got really into the iRobot movie for a time. And at one point, like, by all indications, it seemed like the the movie's soul merged with that of the DVD player, so that every time you turned on the DVD player, it would show the main menu of iRobot. You've told me of this. Whether the iRobot disc was in or near the DVD player. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't know if like it was just always there because like a five disc changer, so like maybe it was just always hiding in the back somewhere, but or not. Maybe it was a software bug. Hard to say. It's very, str very strange. It seemed like it was haunted by iRobot. If either of us still has that disc. Have you come to train? Hmm? Right. Not a new recruit. Oh, then what? Joe. Ah, the Yarzenshell they orders Morelli into requisition. I see he's learned to delegate authority, if nothing else. Now that I have these carapaces, I can set my recruits some specialized drills. They're already adept at hitting a target, of course, but they need practical knowledge of exactly where a monster like the Yarzon is most vulnerable. Thanks to your efforts, I've no doubt they will fa fare rather better against the creatures when called upon. You should be proud of yourself. Both they and the Bannock are safer for your help. I will take more food. No, I will take money. Okay. This I should definitely look up if you don't know the answer. But, like, when it's cold out and they say drip your faucets to keep them from freezing, does that apply to the hot water? Because I'm thinking definitely the cold water should be dripping, because that, that water's coming directly from the city's water supply. But the hot water is coming out of the hot water tank, which I don't see why the pipe in between the hot water tank and the sink would be freezing if it's entirely within my apartment. Every time I've turned it on today, it's, it's it's been a little sus. Very descriptive. Like make this hissing, spurting sound for a fraction of a second before it flows completely. And I'm like, it's almost as if it's partially frozen. But like, why would the hot water be freezing? Or it just has a lot of air in it. I was like, why is there so much air in the pipe? Now, it has been very cold when I first turned on the sink, so I think, like, maybe the hot water contracted from the cold. 
but if it's close to freezing, water starts getting bigger again. It's at its coldest, like a few degrees above freezing. Or it's at its, it's, at its densest. It's at its cold. It's at its densest when it's a little bit above freezing, but as it gets close to freezing, it starts expanding. So one would expect it to come out, like, very abruptly, not sputter. Uh, let's see, that is level 14. Nope. My jobs are not all level 14 yet. Getting closer, though. I'm also just uh, really hoping that the water heater has some sort of pressure release on its intake valve, because, um... Yeah. And the washing machine, too. But I know that one doesn't. I'm just hoping it survives. Because the fridge didn't. And that's why on Sunday, uh, the water inlet pipe for the ice maker in the fridge cracked and sprayed water all over my apartment. I don't know if I told you, like, I had even more flooding. Yeah. Yeah, it was two two rounds, right? The big first one and then... Yeah, that was just a little baby. A one. second surprise happened. Much easier to deal with. Okay, where am I going? Uh, it's just right out here, right? Yeah, because I just need maple set. Yeah. Easy peasy. I need how much? Wait. Maple sap? Maple sap is not obtained from maple trees? I guess not. It, it's a fantasy world. Maple sap probably comes from, like, bears or something. It's just farther in here, I guess. I did chop one of everything from this, right? Gotta get all my little check marks, because they all give extra XP. Mm, no, I haven't... Is this not where I went for the first quest? Okay, that's all okay. Weird. Well, in any case... Double checking that my washing machine actually has detergent in it. Even though I clearly remember putting it in. But what if I put it in? And then it like it all drained out the back before I turned it on. Because I don't I thought... know how this thing works. Alright, whatever. You remember when the washing machine uh leaked, right? Uh I was living with you and <laughs> at, at both places? Uh no, just at one. The um the intake valve for the washing machine cracked and filled it, it the machine filled itself with water. Maybe, maybe the uh, second time I'm thinking of, because you're thinking the of the crossroads, place, right? It was the spigot that would have gone to a washing machine, but there was no washing machine. Oh. Uh, did not completely seal itself shut when it was shut, so it was very slowly dripping, and nobody noticed for weeks until it started coming up through the floor. I just leveled up two more times. Oh yeah. This place doesn't do that because with the plastic floor, like when water comes down. You can tell immediately. It makes a big puddle. I actually had a little bit of that a few months ago. My, uh, I put a rug under my washing machine so that it would uh, it'd be less noisy with all the shaking when it's in the spin cycle. Yeah. And, and I figure with less vibration, it'll probably stress the machine less, too. I mean, you so, gotta balance it, but if failing that, yeah. Yeah, I put a, I put a, a rug under it, and the rug was wet. I think because like, I don't know. I, 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 either, either I just washed it or like I got water on it for whatever dumb reason. It got, it, it was all wet. But I figured it was sitting, it, while it was sitting there, it would dry eventually. And for three days, it didn't dry. It just remained wet, until I found that I had the hose screwed into the back of the washing machine quite tightly, but not quite tightly enough. Oh, wow. So a very, very small amount of moisture was seeping out and gradually percolating to the bottom and being absorbed in the rug, keeping it wet. That's pretty obnoxious. So, I, yeah, I, I got my pliers and I screwed it down really, really tightly, and then I dried it off and I waited and confirmed it was dry, and then a couple days later the rug was dry. 
Yeah, it's uh, surprising how tightly I have to screw in all that stuff to keep it from leaking. The shower, too, but it's less of a problem in the shower, because uh, the shower, it's going to be wet anyway. I guess if I were designing a washing machine, I'd have all of the hoses and stuff for the... I, I'd have all the, the joints for the hoses. Whoa. I'd have all the joints for the hoses and stuff, um, you know, in, in some region of the machine where any water that's coming down ends up drained. Dialogue. On a quest for maple sap, then your best bet is to search in the vicinity of tree speak. Uh, blah... Ah, the maple sap I requested. Then you must be the new botanist Fufuja has been fussing over. Oh, but where are my manners? Thank you. Hmm? Why do I need so much of this stuff? Well, allow me to explain. It's the very least I can do after all you've done. Boiling maple sap causes it to thicken into a sweet syrup called... Ah, you guessed it. Maple syrup. Yeah, I, I did this with the Wait, you did this culinarian guild, but okay. I didn't do it with the botanist. For maple syrup, we can make maple sugar, an ingredient used in various recipes, particularly confectionery, from cakes and tarts to toffees and chocolates. In short, all the things children love. Unless you remember that part, in which case it was the other, it was her past life. You've probably guessed it by now, but the maple sap you harvested will be used to make sweets for the children, those poor souls who were orphaned by the calamity. They may put on a brave face, but their eyes reveal the depths of their sorrow. There's precious little joy left in their lives. But Gridania hasn't, won't, abandoned them. No matter your walk of life, there is always something you can do to help. Though it may only last a fleeting moment, a single smile of theirs is worth all the effort. Uh, my apologies. I got carried away. Now, where was I? Ah, yes. In addition to maple sap, we botanists gather various other kinds of foodstuffs. As such, we work quite closely with culinarians, those disciplines of the hand who excel at cooking. We're also in good terms with woodworkers and weavers, as both are reliant upon us to supply the lumber and fiber they need for their respective crafts. As botanists... Is the greatest gift of all. A child's laughter. <laughs> As botanists, it behooves us to learn what manner of materials are used in crafting, and there's no better way to do so than firsthand. If you have an interest, you might consider dabbling in one of the disciplines out there. I also urge you to make a habit of reviewing the gathering log. As your knowledge of botany grows, more of its contents will become comprehensible to you. Otherwise, it's all just gibberish. <laughs> well, I best see to the maple sap. It was lovely talking to you. Uh, yep, gonna make my own stuff. I guess what else got wet? What? My stash of ramen noodles. Fortunately, the noodles didn't get wet because of all that plastic packaging, but the, the box is all floppy now. <laughs> it's froze. At some point, I'm gonna have to go and unbox everything. Do I have sneak two yet? A free master two yet? Yes. Okay. So I can get rid of that one. Do I have three yet? Level ten. Yes. So I can get rid of that one now. Good. Do I have auto sneak yet? Ah. Auto sneak is level twenty-seven. I do not have that yet. All right. To Thanalin for the mining guild. Oh, this is just great UI design. What's because that? I'm streaming, uh, just, well, actually, I'm, because I have stream capture software running, I'm not actually streaming, but because the software is open, Discord has detected it and turned on streamer mode. Yeah. Which means puts a little yellow outline around the window. But it can't make the out the it, it doesn't make the window get two pixels bigger to show the outline. It shows the outline on the inside of the edge of the window, and it's misaligned. So it's actually a, a slightly spaced inward from the right edge of the window, going right through the X button. But also, the outline is the same size as the unread um, message indicator on servers. 
and covers it up. So now I can't see which servers have unread messages because of the line in the way. Let me look at that. I don't know it's not what. So much frustrating. It's just a fail. It's just I don't know what yellow line you're it, talking it about. So I'm enough to look. Zoom, like, if your Discord's on default Zoom, maybe the unread message indicator is bigger and it shows up anyway. No, I mean I don't know what yellow line you're talking about. Line is also bigger. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. All right. I was trying to say something. Um. Uh. Yeah. I I'm looking at it right now. I have no idea what yellow line you're talking about. I do not get that. Oh, it's because I have. I had. Oh, that's weird. Do you have streamer mode disabled? Nope. Oh, yeah, mine draws a yellow light around the window. Are you using some kind of Discord overlay? No. Just the regular Discord client. Well, I'd look into that. I do have my Zoom set at really, really small because apparently I'm operating on a low DPI screen without knowing it. I doubt that has and to do with it. Zoom, everything's giant. I doubt that has an effect, but maybe. Yeah. To the Sorry, Miners Guild! Talking over you. To the Husting Strip, yes. Wait, no. No, if I remember correctly, it's actually faster to go. I want to get to the... Miners Guild. Uh, no, this might actually be faster. Because I can go down right here. Gotta be keeping an eye out for side quests. I don't think I've passed any, but gotta make sure. Oh uh, yeah, Adalberta. Hello there, mana. It's good to see you again. Judging by the blisters on your hands, it's plain you've been hard at it with your pickaxe. Good. You're ready for the next stage of your training. Now, Orzi is a vast realm filled with diverse environments, and the mineral wealth varies from region to region. Even within Thandalin, there's a marked difference between east and west. If you want to be a successful miner, it's essential that you know where to look for what. And for that, you have to become intimate with Eorzea. How else can you expect her to reveal her innermost secrets to you? Getting to know her every square mom is no, under is no small undertaking, of course, but the yalms soon add up, as I'm sure you'll find with my next task. I'd like you to seek out ten bone ships for me. Just so you don't go about it completely blind, here's a hint. You'll find these just beyond the gate of Nald. Off you go, then. Happy digging. Gate of Nald. Gate of Nald. I want to go out to... Out to... There? There? Or... Or... There? There? Yeah, honestly, that seems faster. Yeah, honestly, that seems faster. Still going all the way over Still there. Still going all the way over there. Yeah. Oops. Oops. Nope. Nope. And then, not the first one to the left. Not the this first one, one to the yeah. left, but this one. Yeah. Cutting through the quicksand. Cutting through the quicksand. Level zero is 14. Yeah. Level zero is 14. Yeah. There's a lot of level 14 There's quests. There's a lot of level 14 quests. I'm not exactly sure why. Not exactly sure why. Oh, 
Bone chip. Bone chip. I think this might also not. I think be this, this might also not be at this one because I think. Where I, got the muddy water. I think this is where I got the muddy water. That's the equivalent of the maple trees. That's the equivalent of the maple nope. trees. Not attack nope. the giant turtle. It's not attack the giant turtle. Pickaxe especially. With my pickaxe especially. Excuse you. Excuse you. Thank you. Uh, this is, however, uh, this I is, however, I, didn't, I never gathered a wind shark. So, oops. Sure. Let's just gather. Sure. All let's just gather all of them. Level eight. Uh, level eight. Can't get rid of this one yet, but I can get rid of this one. On, so you also turn on sneak. This is this is highest level. Highest Let's level. Move yeah. Let's move that there and turn sneak up here. And, and I'm not gonna bother. I'm not gonna bother. Oh, I just don't need prospect. Oh, I just don't need prospect. That's it. Mistaken, All right, so if I'm not mistaken, I need to go over oh. this way. Oh, time to help this person again. Time to help this person again. Gladiator thirteen. Rogue Gladiator thirteen. Rogue twelve. Thaumaturge twelve. Yeah. Thaumaturge twelve. Yeah. Okay. Rogue should help with this. Rogue should help with this. Kicking her butt. As she hits half health. As she hits half or health lower. Ah, or lower. This is living. Ah, this is living. Uh, like, uh, not for much longer, maybe. Not for much longer, maybe. Ah, there we go. Ah, there we go. She yielded. She yielded. a line in the land of the lot where Will Ferrell's character says you travel sideways in time I also do not remember that I, I need to remember this remember next that. time I'm trying to make references now I'm on a space nerd discord yeah. server where somebody's talking about uh, trying to go faster than light speed and so I chime in I'm like well hang on you can't just they're like if you're moving at 1.1c in space then you'll be moving at negative 0.1c in time because it always adds up to one. I'm like, well, hang on, hang on. The actual equation has a square root in it. You actually, you, it's, it's like it's some kind of hypotenuse thing where like you add the square of your space speed and your time speed, and and this the square root of that is always one. And so, if you try to solve the equation with your space speed being more than one, your time speed is imaginary. Got it. And so then I, then Got I post it. the Futurama line of a, I can see sideways in time! Yes. Yes. But apparently, apparently Land of the Lost had an even more relevant quote, you travel sideways in time. Quarrying! Quarrying! Can't do it yet, but... But yeah, long story short, that's, uh, that's why you can't go faster than light. Because you go sideways in time. Because it doesn't... It, 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 the, the logic all breaks down there. You can't go faster than light You can't go faster than light speed. You have to go around. You have to go around light speed. Yeah, you, you gotta cheat somehow. Like, move space the way an Okubiere drive works. You're like, oh, no, no. I'm not moving through space at light speed. Exactly. I'm just exactly. distorting space so that I'm somewhere else. Space is moving around Space is moving around me faster than light speed. <laughs> even, that yeah, doesn't really, even that doesn't really work. Unfortunately, special relativity says nothing about nothing. It says nothing can go faster than light, so, you know, naturally, nothing can go faster than light. Right, yes, exactly. Right, yes, exactly. But, of course, we already know that's wrong. Like, 
We just don't know where exactly. That's the unknown part. After I finish this, it will After be, time, I to this, it will be time to mine for fish. We keep discovering more and more quantum phenomena that all of the laws of quantum mechanics seem to indicate mean that quantum mechanics is non-local. So when you do something funky, it affects the entire universe all at once. Which Interesting. Interesting. is a very blatant contradiction of relativity. Yeah, my opinion is that part's wrong. I mean, well I mean I mean I, I well, have no, I mean, like argument for this. It's just my gut tells me quantum mechanics is local. Isn't it's just bizarre isn't, and confusing to us. Isn't Quantum stuff Isn't quantum by stuff not by definition relative? not relative? Uh, yeah, the quantum mechanical or at least not laws relative, or at least not relative the same um, way. Yeah, so all the equations governing quantum behavior, as I understand, say absolutely nothing about distance or time. So a quantum mechanical universe could exist in which things can travel at unlimited speed. Although, the deeper implication is actually that speed doesn't exist in a purely quantum mechanical universe. Yeah, because that, that within quantum yeah, mechanics, that, that within traveling, quantum mechanics isn't really traveling isn't really a thing either. Yeah. It's so just, it's just, it's just, it's just existing gravity. at different places. Yeah, in a universe that doesn't have gravity, it, it basically, you end, or relativity, you basically end up with a universe that doesn't have time, where everything that happens in the universe happens all at once. All right, uh, all right, uh... Dialogue time. Um, sorry. dialogue time. Sorry. Stumbling over my own words. Stumbling over my own words. Ah yes. Precisely ah ten yes. Bone Precisely ten bone chips. chips. You've done no well, man. No doubt you had trouble tracking these no down, down, first, tracking these down at first, but each chip you found added to your understanding. I can tell that you didn't just. I can tell that you didn't just get one bone chip and then break it into ten chips. For your efforts, you've come to know. For your efforts, you've come to know where best to search for bone chips, and so it goes for everything else we need. Now, in addition to learning where to find materials, you should also make a point of knowing who needs them. For instance, armors and blacksmiths are our best customers when it comes to best customers when it comes to ores. Well, goldsmiths would struggle to apply their trade if we didn't supply them with gold and gemstones. Oh, and I mustn't forget the alchemists. Those fellows can never have too much rock salt and cinnabar, and we often rub shoulders with them. In short, know whence it comes and whither it goes. To be sure, you still have much more to learn. There's no substitute for hard work. Oh, don't look so glum. Just be thankful you don't have to be you don't have to bleeding memorize all that information. You have a gathering log for such stuff. Make good use of it, and you can't go wrong. That's all for now. Keep up your That's all for now. Keep up your efforts and visit me again when you've spent more time in the wilds with pickaxe in hand. I'll have another task for you when you've perfected your swing. When you perfect your swang. When you perfect your swang. What just oh. What just oh. Oh Level eleven. Level eleven. What's Stone Whisperer? Oh. Irrelevant. Irrelevant. All right. All right. To Limsa Limsa. Limsa Limsa. Time to go mine for fish. Time to go mine for fish. We are gonna go. Wearing my cool outfit. Wearing my cool outfit. It's this one right here, right? It's this one right here. Cause that right? one leads up to the Yeah, because that one leads up to the alpha skill, which I am not going to right now. To the airship landing. To the airship landing. Mm, 
Limsa Limsa. I can make it through all the crafting jobs as well. All the jobs as well. Uh, all the crafting uh, job well. quests today as well. I think. I think. So I'd heard of this before, but I hadn't looked it up until yesterday when I learned about the Kasaba Howitzer. Have you ever heard of this? I don't think so. I don't think so. So, I think I've told you before, you, you must have heard about the Orion Nuclear Pulse Drive, where you build a humongous spaceship and you put a giant reinforced plate on the bottom of it on huge hydraulic pistons, or maybe pneumatic, but like huge shock absorbing pistons. And you put the spaceship, the rest of the spaceship, way up on top. And you have a cannon that fires an atomic bomb down through a tiny hole at the bottom of the plate. And then under the plate, it detonates. And the force of the blast pushes the plate up really hard. The shock is absorbed and your ship moves upward. Sure. Sure. So, naturally, you make a machine gun with hundreds or thousands of atomic bombs and you can get this thing into orbit and all the way across the solar system in like a month. Right. Right. Well, an atomic bomb's blast is spherical by default. So, you're, unless, so if you try to detonate it really close to the plate to capture a lot of its energy, you're gonna vaporize the plate or put a lot of mechanical stress on it. And if you put it further away, most of the energy of the bomb is going to miss the ship. All right, one sec. All right, one sec. Dialogue time. Hmm. I smell that you haven't. Been hmm. I smell that you haven't been neglecting your duties. Whoops, that's not the right voice. I smell that you haven't been. I smell that you haven't been neglecting your duties. A commendable attitude. No one's ever gotten worse at anything by practicing. No one I know. Then again, you can't expect the same, again, can't expect the same old tricks to work with new fish. Big ones don't grow to be that way, chasing everything that wiggles on a hook. To catch the fish you want, you must first know what the fish wants. Only once the prize is at stake can you tantalize and tempt your prey to taste the forbidden tackle. Anchovies may be willing to settle for lugworms, but harbor herring have a discerning palate that prefers pill for it, but don't take my word for it. Go and see for yourself. Pick up some pill bugs from Sinahill over in West Hopper's Alley, then use them to catch three local harbor herring. Like anchovies, they can be caught right outside. In case you've a mind to return to your previous spot, you should know that fish aren't as foolish as most might think. Keep casting your line in the same waters, and you'll find that fewer folk will take the bait. Except only kind of. Well, a fish would be foolish if you just added an ool. Ha 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 is that enough? Uh, I need... Uh, I need... So, pill bugs, which I do not have Naturally, yeah, okay. research was done to go, okay, what if we can get more of the blast to go toward the ship and less of it to go away from the ship and off to the side? Which led to the creation of a sort of nuclear shape charge where they would armor most of the bomb except for a weak spot at the top and they would fill that with material that gets vaporized by the bomb and is thrust up toward the ship in a cone shape and strikes the pusher plate. Thus, and, and, and in theory, they could get this up to about 85% efficiency, where 85% of the energy released by the bomb smacked into the plate and propelled the ship, making it way more efficient. Until people got to thinking, what if we made the cone even narrower and this wasn't used as the rocket propulsion method at all, but used as a cannon. Okay. So the Kasaba okay. howitzer was born, which is a missile or a mine that you launch out of your ship. You don't want to run this thing in your ship because it'll blow you up. Because <clears throat> 15% of a nuclear blast is, is still going to blow up your ship. So you launch it out of your ship and aim it toward the enemy ship and it explodes and sends a jet of plasma toward the enemy ship in an expanding cone 
which can reach for several kilometers and still have the ability to vaporize several inches of armor. So it would be highly effective for missile defense and unless you have very good point defense on enemy capital ships, it'd be very good against capital ships too. In and, theory, these things could and, be pushed to have similar ranges to lasers, but uh, that's it's uncertain because people haven't really built and tested a lot of Kasaba howitzers. And this hadn't been thought of before. And this hadn't been thought of before. Oh no, this was thought of in like the fifties, but like only a madman would try to build this sort of thing on Earth. Okay. Okay. So I was level eight when so I, I was level eight when I started this. I Let's see how many levels I get before I finally get everything I'm looking for. That's one. That's one. But as soon as I heard about how awesome it was, you know, the other day, I was like, oh, I definitely got to put this in my game. So that's why I made the code. Oh, gotcha. Oh, gotcha. Yep. I'd wanted a cone before, but I, I've more or less given up on the cone. Because I didn't have any other devices that, like, I needed the game to have that needed the cone. I had an idea for a gag weapon that was, like, it was just a shoop to whoop. But that doesn't have to be a cone. I could have just made that a line. But, yeah. I don't want, I don't want the cassava howitzer to be a line. It would also be way overpowered if it was that narrow. That would, that would be in like the theoretical 10,000 kilometer range super Kasaba howitzer, which I really hope doesn't get built in the foreseeable future. That's, that seems like such a way to just cheese space warfare. Okay, if it's a way to cheese, like, okay, if it's a way to cheese warfare, you know it's going to get built. I have enough trouble accepting uh, the Ureb as, as a powerful weapon. I got the, the first. I got the first. Beam. I got the first. Good thing. I got comes, the first. Good, good thing comes. comes good bait. things come to those who bait. Achievement. <laughs> so, when you're shooting, when you're trying to hit enemies in space, you could use a laser, but lasers generally have a rather low efficiency, generating a huge amount of heat, and. Uh, relatively low small amount of light that actually hits the target and the further your target is away according to the laws of physics regarding lasers the bigger your focusing mirror has to be in order to reflect the laser precisely onto the target because with this level of precision a laser pointer design isn't going to work you're, you're going to need to shine it onto a big ass mirror and then carefully adjust the mirror to get it to sort of lens down into a point far away Okay. Uh, okay. Dialogue one sec. Uh, dialogue one sec. Here's your herring. Here's your herring. Uh, I'm already doing alliteration. Uh, I'm already doing alliteration. Like hey, there's them. nothing better than salted. Hey, there's nothing herring. better than Save salted harbor herring. herring. Save perhaps fried yeah, harbor herring. No, or grilled. Salted. No, definitely salted. Fried shrimp, barbecued shrimp. You know, in the yesteryears, you know, in the yesteryears of my youth, I used to, use, I used to use, use every fish I yanked out to yield a bigger one. A good gamble until the game got gargantuan. Until the game got I, guess gargantuan. I guess I got greedy. Where did you? What? Where well, did you? Sometimes. It's well, best sometimes it's best to throw back the big good ones. Gods, what's a guildmaster? Good gods, gods, what's a guildmaster got to do to garner a grain of gratitude? Acting respectable. Acting respectable. Respectable would be a start. Respectable. I sailed respectable. the seas and snared, everything, and snared them. everything that swam in them. And that would be an accomplishment. And that would be an accomplishment if by everything that swam in them you meant fish and not lady divers. All you ever brought back were stories about carousing with trollops. Ah. But chauvinism, uh, is, just but chauvinism is just a red herring. chauvinism is just a red herring. The harbor herring are what's the important. Namely, the lesson of thinking from the perspective of the fish when selecting bait. In that regard, I can say you truly, have, regard, the say you truly so have the mind of a fish. Treat. So, some here is a treat. Some of it might seem like gibberish, first, seem like gibberish at first, but as you make observations and jot down notes, eventually all of it will be gibberish. Well, take some time to study up. Well, take some time to study up, but be careful not to fry your fish brain. You'll need it for your next lesson. To catch a fish, you have to think like a fish. Put everything in your mouth. <laughs> I should probably take care. Of I this should quest. probably take care of this quest. Uh, it's 
Uh, no. it's ocean when fishing. Am when am I gonna do that? Uh, if your target uh, I'll wait is a level. thousand kilometers away, and you want to hit them oh with a goodness. laser and actually like do some damage, not just shine a bright light on them, uh, you're going to need a mirror, a mirror that's several meters across. One, just In one second. Words, a bit one, more just one second. A bit more dialogue. Well, if it ain't matter. Well, if it ain't matter. You may have just taken up your rod, but anyone can see you got the keen eye of a fisherman, and I reckon you're looking to make that eye keener still. Bigger fish, more exotic locales. Ah, that's what we all see, can it? And it just so happens, I can tell you how to find it. You see, the fisherman's guild has just finished constructing a vast boat equipped for voyages on the high seas. As far as I know, Captain Forzagel is still looking for a band of fishermen adventurous enough to brave the deepest fishing hole in the mall. You think you got the stones for it? I'm sure he'd be glad to take you on. Go ahead. You're cutting out. Cutting out like in general. Cutting out like in general. Intermittently. Have you checked the stream to see if I'm? Have you checked the stream too? to see if I'm cutting out there too? Uh, no, I'm on the other end of the apartment. Well, if you would. Be well, so kind. if you would be so kind. If it's just to you, it might be. If your it's just headphones. to you, it might be your wireless headphones. Because when you're on the when you're on the when you're on the when you're on the edge of their distance, they out. tend to cut in and out. Wow, I can't check because you're not seeing anything. <laughs> testing. <laughs> testing one two. I guess I will keep talking. Uh, I guess I will keep talking for a little bit since you said it was intermittent. Uh, I'll be reading another bit. Of uh, I'll be reading another bit of dialogue here in a second. You haven't been cutting out now, but I'm at the screen. Okay, cool. Right after this bit okay, of dialogue. Okay, cool. Right after this bit of dialogue, I am going to be going to the next person. So going to the next person. So you you can continue in just continue in just a second. Dramatic camera. Dramatic camera. Another daring soul, come another to daring crew, soul, eh? come to join our crew, eh? Let me be the first to welcome you to the endeavor. Punch my own hands. Punch my own hands. Your now this ain't your regular fishing boat. We sail it where we please, holding only the course the wind uh, provides to us. Ah, uh, that's the only way we can see the unseen. Know the unknown. Captain Forzagel, if, Captain I, may, Forzagel, if I may, the Endeavor is the Guild's only, the ship, of this the guild's only ship of this magnitude, uh, and if we, as you say, uh, sail, as you only say sail only where the wind pleases to take us, to we port. may not ever return the to this port. The Guild may not look favorably on such liberal use of its property. Uh, my apologies for for, uh, my apologies for, for, for going an introduction. I'm Dris Drisk Fada, sent from the Fisherman's Guild to oversee this venture. Why am I here when the ship already has a captain, you ask? Well, as you may already know, members of our trade, Master Wallago and Captain Forzagel included, seem to have difficulties managing time. I suppose the concept becomes something of an afterthought when one becomes so focused on water's surface. Regardless, I'm here to ensure the ship adheres to its schedule, both by managing its finances and ensuring new crew members board smoothly. The endeavor shall embark upon the any endeavor number, shall embark upon any number of predetermined routes, each of which, have, of which have this port as their final Rest destination. Assured Rest assured, if you fail to join one voyage, the ship shall return before long. The route we travel will be determined by our departure time, and you may speak with me if you wish to know the route before boarding. Pray bear in mind that we must, keep, bear in mind that we must keep a strict schedule. We can't take on more crew members after we've begun boarding, and there are no exceptions to this rule, even for captains. Aye, aye, I hear you. Aye, aye, I hear you. When we board the ship is when we get to the exciting part. Fishing! Here, take these lures. They're certain to attract something worth displaying on your wall, or at the very least worth eating. Except that second part is really not true at all, but okay. I'm not sure there are any ocean fishing fish that you use for culinarian, but... Should be enough to last for one voyage. Should be enough to last for one voyage at least. If you're looking for other kinds of bait, you can buy it here on the docks or on the ship. Try to switch it up now and then. Because if you only use the same bait, you're only going to catch, keep catching the same fish. And that ain't why we do this, is it? I mean, sometimes, but I mean, sometimes, but sure. One last thing. And one last thing. While just thought of here, maybe in charge of the particulars on land. Once we're on the ship, it's my word you'll hear. So when I say we're fishing here or we're sailing there, I won't hear no objections. As long as we're clear on that, I believe we'll be bounteous fish for all. And with that, the endeavors is, your with that, the endeavors the endeavor is, your is yours to board. The endeavor is yours to board. If you wish to enter the ship, or if you would like a more detailed explanation of what it is we do, you only need to ask. All right, go ahead. All right, go ahead. You were talking about the bomb. You were talking about the bomb cone. Oh, sorry. Uh, so somebody sent me a video saying, uh, titled, How a Bird Works. 
<laughs> it, it's it's crap. It's 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 an animation based on the popular um, meme of birds are government surveillance drones. Excellent. Which I find Excellent. really lame because it's the the alternative is cooler. That birds were created by dinosaurs. It's not about it being cool. It's not about it being oh, cool. You know, unless there are dinosaurs in the government, maybe. Well, yes. That's well, also yes. That's also a theory. There's a lot of pretty old people, but not not that old that I know. No, it's the lizard people. No, it's the lizard people. I've heard about government lizard men, but I always thought those were supposed to be aliens. Like, no, I, I didn't know there was any relation no. to dinosaurs in there. No, there's the aliens, and then no, there's, there's the, the aliens, and then there's the lizard people who, uh, people um, who, uh, um are the other evolutionary are the train other evolutionary on the train on that, the planet uh, ended that up uh, ended up point. going underground at some point and uh -huh. according and to doctor who they were according to doctor who they were hibernating but that's not the only theory uh, <laughs> yeah yeah they oh, ended really? yeah yeah, yeah they ended yeah yeah oh, absolutely no absolutely why i don't know the theories well enough i don't know the theories well enough for that Where's my... There it is. There it is. You should look it up. You should look it up. I don't want to. Yeah, you're busy doing stuff anyway. Yeah, you're busy doing stuff anyway. And do, I have other more and do things to look up. smithing and armor first. Smithing and armor first. This this way. This way. Naldeacon Vimelis. Naldeacon Vimelis. That's the name. Smithing here. Uh, smithing here, right? Nope. This is armor. Nope. This is armor. Nope. nope. Oh. Oh. They are not quite. They are not level. quite high enough Dang. level. Dang. Okay. How do I want to solve? Okay. That? How do I want to solve? I mean, that? I probably only. Need I mean, I probably only need to do like one craft for each of them. So let's do that. I'm just going to so go out. Just going to go, gonna go out in the limit. A thousand kilometers away with a laser. You're gonna need a giant mirror to do it, which means you're gonna have a giant reflective target. So your your enemy could focus a laser on you, or launch a missile at you, or do any number of things. It would also be really heavy and fragile and inconvenient. And and it and it gets worse with distance. You know, if you're trying to hit someone a hundred thousand kilometers away, like you know. If you're on Earth trying to shoot, if you're in Earth orbit trying to shoot something orbiting the moon, you're going to need this gigantic Death Star monstrosity to do it. That's very expensive and impractical. So, instead, why not use something less prone to diffraction like a particle beam? For that, you would need a particle that you have some way of accelerating uh, to a very high speed so that it doesn't, like, take forever to get there and, and to put the target dodging out of the way. So, particle accelerators usually depend on electromagnetic charge because it's, it's a... it's a straightforward, well-understood, and effective way to accelerate particles. And one particle that has a very strong electromagnetic charge and not a lot of inertia is the electron. So you basically build a cathode ray tube like you would use in an old TV. Now the problem with that is you shoot the electrons out and they all repel each other because they're the same charge and so they spread out and become useless. So for some time it was thought an electron beam would, would only be a short range uh, uh, instrument. But special relativity saves the day in that 
the faster you move the electrons, the more time dilation is applied to them. So they'll accelerate away from each other at the same rate in their subjective time, but they may have crossed an enormous distance in space while, before, that, before they get very far apart. And as you get them close to the speed of light, your upper limit on these things is like multiple AU before the beam loses cohesion and is useless. So you could hit people across the inner solar system. And at that point, there hasn't really been a weapon proposed that can compete with that. Because you can't see it until it's right on top of you. Right. And we have no right. material that can survive that many electrons of that much energy all smacking into it. Like, it's, it's a disintegration ray when it hits anything. Yeah. Yeah. You can't even, like, use a magnetic field because the electrons are under so much time dilation, they'll punch through the field before they notice it. The, the chief competitor in the, in the hard sci-fi space uh, basically boils down to missiles. Like, if you can get a missile able to cross the solar system without being spotted and shot down, maybe that will help. Dialogue time. Dialogue time. Raise the builder. I was Raise the builder. I was afraid you might have joined up with another crew. So thought of it paying me so much. I was down at the wench till the morning bells I was. He probably saw me uh, talking with the armor. Here you are, still broom with potential. With some extra meat on your smitten arm, if my eyes don't deceive me. So we're... Something new. Something new. Oh, of course. How could I forget? Oh, of course. How could I forget? Man of none. I bid you craft three bronze crossbeam hammers. Just like the ones all our apprentice smitties use. For this, you'll need bronze, maple lumber, and hemp and cloth. Now I know. Now I know making the bronze won't pose, you, pose you no trouble, but allow me to offer you just a bit of advice regarding the materials. I am going to skip how every single person on this level of job quest is going to talk about how I could gather my own materials. So uh, you could mine your own copper and tin, and you might whack a goblin until you get the ore. At the end of the day, though, how about you go get into bits and pieces? Don't matter to me. I just want to see if you can make a decent hammer. Do what needs doing and come back when it's done. Probably have everything I, I need probably have ready. everything I need already. Bronze, okay. I think, bronze, I think the reason I'm hearing you cut out is not because of the wireless headphones. I think it's because of my phone. Oh? I'm temporarily oh? using my phone it, 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 using the USB tethering feature to connect to the 5G network through my phone which is slow and intermittent. So when it streams, it buffers the stream and thus will play all the audio, even if it's not playing it in real time. But with the call, if there's problems with the network, it just cuts you off. I think, I think that's what's going on. Why? Well, how is my gear condition? Oh, it's not horrible yet. Oh, it's not horrible yet. Okay. Now was that okay. enough? Now was that enough? Because I think that was only that was two. One. That was only I one. One for each of them. I need one for each of them, don't I? Yep. Yeah, okay. So I need. Yep. Yeah, okay. So I need two more hemp and cloth. Two more hemp and cloth, which, I need, which means I need three more hemp. And three yarn. more hemp and yarn. See, I just gotta do two more. See, I just gotta do two more crafts. Okay. I did already make a. Uh, I do already plan to have the Ureb as a weapon in the, the spaceship game. The what? The what? 
the the ultra relativistic electron field. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Or okay. Yeah. Gotcha. I've heard it as UREB before too, but whatever. I mean, that does sound better. I mean, than that does sound better than herb. Herb. I put the herb in the game. Isn't that the thing that gets tipsy when you're in the club? No, I, I, I will Herb buddy, got it. Place. Herb buddy, got it. Yeah. Got it. Uh, I need, uh, I need one, more maple lumber. one more maple lumber. But, you know, in the interest of game balance, I made it a capital size weapon. It would, it doesn't need the giant mirror, but it would need a kind of a log barrel and a lot of power generation equipment to actually run the thing. Because it's, it's basically like a weaponized particle accelerator. And as I'm sure you well know, particle accelerators can get really, really big. I mean, they usually stay I mean, the same size. I mean, they usually stay the same size. Well, yeah, but, you know, we keep building bigger ones. Yeah, I'm just being... Yeah, I'm just being... The biggest one we have is, like, 30 kilometers across, which I probably would not expect to see in the near future as a space weapon. That's too heavy. But you've got plenty of space. But you've got plenty of space in space. Yeah, but, like, that's, imagine trying to drive that thing. Eventually, maybe, you know, people are going to be building Death Stars and stuff, but not, uh... Oops. 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 Not in the near Oops. future. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, I messed this up. Oh, I messed this up. Ah. Uh, ah. Uh, I am a fool. I am a fool. Let me guess. Hey, I have to make more. Let me guess. Edge. I have to make more now. My stuff didn't break. My oh, stuff didn't break. Oh, thank I goodness. I don't have to bother making more. Okay. So. Okay. With so. Nine with per nine progress. per progress. I literally have to put it all. Into I literally have to put it all into. No, no, I don't. Okay. No, no, I don't. Two into quality. I can put two into quality. That you do. That you do. Hey, now I have Master's Hey, now I have Master's Mint. Now I can do more. Now I can do more. So that'll get me 30. So that'll get me 30. Costs oh, wait, 88. Costs 88. So I can do that twice. I, I, uh, yeah, I'm good. I made a cone, which means my game can have a cassava howitzer in it. Oh, no, so you know what? I need oh, no, to make a blender costs, now. So. I need to make a model for the cassava howitzer. interest of game balance, I'm probably going to also make this a large weapon. go. Don't need to use the giant missile launcher. I think I'll design it to fit the large missile launcher. Large. Large. Yeah, I have three different sizes of missile launcher. I have uh, one for things like photon torpedoes that are about first in size. Mm -hmm. I have another one that shoots 10 meter long missiles that are sort of based on the Minuteman, like that you find in a nuclear sub. And then I have the extra large one that shoots 20 meter long missiles because it's the space age and of course we're gonna make giant missiles oh wait no four sizes I've, I've also got a little tiny one for like little point defense rockets and stuff dialogue dialogue now layman might look at this now nah, layman might look at this and think you just stuck a piece of bronze on a maple stick but you've done a damn sight more than that whether you know it or not after all hammer's tool after all and the head's got to grip the shaft for tens of thousands of strikes 
What's more, when a smitty, when what's more, when a smitty, when a smitty's pounding a red hot piece of metal, her hammer takes up some of the heat and swells a touch, which ain't a problem unless it's a poorly made piece of shite. Take it from me, last. There's few things more embarrassing than flinging a glowing hammerhead over your shoulder straight in the eye of your newest apprentice. Even if he did eventually get a sight, but I reckon your hammers won't lead. But I reckon your hammers won't lead to any incidents like that. In short, I'm happy with what you've done. Now, I'll spare us both that don't rest on your laurel speech if it's all the same to you. Stating the bleeding obvious is best done with a drink in your hand, I find. But well done, any road. Here, you'll be needing this. Here, you'll be needing this. A hammer will suffice for simple smithing. Complex, complex jobs call for a more delicate touch, which is what, which is what, gives you. Which is what a file gives you. Using one alongside your hammer will make your life a good deal easier, whatever you're crafting. Try some smithing something simple. I guarantee you'll see the difference. When you've done that, do it again. I want you to practice so you can wield that file as well as your hammer. Once you got the hang of it, come back here for another task. I'm going to do one more bit of dialogue first. Yeah, the, uh, the small torpedo is based on the ones from the Expanse, so it's about two meters long. Ah, oh, mana. I've taken your oh, mana. I've taken your intimate with every aspect, of the, with every aspect of the bronze ingot's production. Good. Then you can assist us, Good. In, pressing can assist us in a pressing matter. It seems that one of our younger, of our younger members, Swithin, accepted an, accepted an, an order which he would struggle to fill in thrice the time he promised. While I'm tempted to let him squeal under the weight of his own ambition, the guild is not in the habit of delivering late. Several veteran armorers have volunteered their services, but I would also like you to assist in this matter. On the one hand, you'll be helping to spare the guild unnecessary embarrassment, and on the other, you'll be deepening your understanding of the craft. The builder could not have planned it better. For your part in this endeavor, you are to craft three bronze hot pots. You'll need bronze plate and maple lumber to make, lumber to make the shields. Subject, While we're on the subject, materials, blah, blah, materials, blah, blah, copper, for the time, being, copper. However, for the time being, however, I want you to concentrate on honing your skills as an armor. With the fundamentals under your belt, hot plants shouldn't prove too challenging, but we do not fall into the trap of complacency. A poorly wrought shield is worse than no shield at all. Each, pe each piece you craft, however simple, must reflect the utmost attention to detail. Make the guild proud, Nana. Heck yeah. Heck yeah. Dialogue done for now. Dialogue done for now. Three bronze hoplons, yes. So I need six so I need six plates and three maple or lumber. For six bronze plates, I need twelve bronze ingots total. I need eleven more bronze ingots. Which means I need Which means I need eleven tin ore. Eleven tin ore. Alright, let's oh wait. Alright, let's oh wait no. I am buying my own tin ore. I am buying my own tin ore. Is yes. going and killing a thousand is going and killing a thousand cobblins is not terribly smart. Terribly I smart. I might do that when I'm doing the rest of the crafts, but Cause unfortunately, I cannot. Cause unfortunately, I cannot currently mine tin ore for myself. Well, at least not up to level five, yeah, and I don't want to ahead of myself. be jumping ahead of myself. So. Ah, crafting. Ah, crafting. Kind of deal. It's very chill. It's very chill. I, 
I, uh, I duplicated my torpedo model and then just messed with it a little so it looks different. It's got a nice blunt nose. Gives the impression something's gonna come out. Nice. Nice. Although... think of it. Maybe I should base it on the extra large torpedo mod, uh, model because then then it'll have that little quad engine thing I have going on. Dang. Wait, can I wear them? I should Wait, can I wear them? I should be able to wear the new thing. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Cool. I should take care of it. I should take care of it. Um. Um. Okay. Uh, okay. I needed. Six. Bronze face total. total. Yes. Cool. There we go. There we Riddle of Steel. The Riddle of Steel. Three maple lumber.
in general stuff with your uh, in general stuff with your uh, game has been going well. Yeah. Good. Good. All right. All right. I wish they would have slightly different. I wish they would have slightly different, different comments quality. based on whether I made it high quality or not. Impressive. You've managed Impressive. To You've managed to balance the conflicting requirements of sturdiness and portability, and portability much as you balanced hardness and malleability in your first test. The bronze plate is securely fitted and should weather the most vicious blows without, without becoming dislodged. And importantly, your work, and was, importantly, swift and your work was swift and sure. Many an armor has lost a sale due to late delivery, and rightly so. A customer's need for armor is invariably pressing, and its absence likely to be sorely felt. Given the stakes, a reputation for reliability can mean handsome profits, especially at a time when the maelstrom is seeking armorers to outfit its ever-expanding ranks. It is all we can do to keep pace with the Grand Company's orders for equipment, and that is why every member of our guild must support the next, much as the warriors of Eld supported their fellows in the phalanx, with shields. Hi. Hi. So you have, Hi. But recently, so you have, training, but recently begun your training. A woman of your natural line. talents belongs on the front line. I think the time has come for you to learn the use of another weapon in the armorer's arsenal. Specifically, pliers. Specifically, pliers. Specifically, pliers. Take, this Take this pair and try using them in combination with your hammer. First, it will feel strange at first, but persist and you will find that your work proceeds a damn sight more smoothly. When you think you've mastered the pliers, when you think you've mastered the pliers, I want to see the results of your dedication. Until then, Mana. Probably. No. No. Not this time. Nope, not this time. Oh, never mind, there it is. Oh, never mind, there it is. I don't know why I thought it would be happening then. I don't know why I thought it would be happening then. Welcome, welcome. Welcome, welcome. The Culinarian's Guild. The Culinarian's Guild. You think I should make this thing have a turret? Because I'm thinking, like, when it fires, it's going to need to aim the business end at the target. And if I put it on a missile, that means the missile will have to orient itself to aim at the target. And? Right? And? I don't currently have a system in the game for getting things to automatically aim at targets. This would be the only thing that uses it. I have a way to get turrets to aim at targets, because that's, you know, it's very sensible. You're going to need that for missiles eventually. You're going to need that for missiles eventually, aren't you? No. Missiles don't aim at targets. Missiles aim at the direction they need to thrust in order to ensure that their relative velocity to the target is toward the target. But that is quite often parallel to the target. Dialogue, one sec. Dialogue, one sec. You've come at a good time, mana. You've come at a good time, mana. Just so happens I need your help with something. One of our chefs buggered up an order a bit ago, and he's been down in the dumps ever since. Ingham, his name is. Joined the guild a few moons before you did. Determined lad, but don't take failure too well. Any road, we can't have him crying into soup. Plays havoc with the seasoning, see? So I want you to try and cheer him up. It's not like a good meal to take a man's mind off his many failings. This is like one of the last things I did before mana reincarnated. A nice bit of grilled trout should be the trick. It's one of his favorites. Aye, if he was to cook them up a plate of that, I reckon you find the experience highly motivating. The main ingredient, princess trout, can be had at the high line. As for Ingham, you'll find him working in the kitchens. Prepare the dish and take it to him. Happy grilling. Time to go catch me some trout. Time to go catch me some trout. What else do I need? What else do I need? Table salt. Cool. Table salt. Cool. Ah. Ah. Wrist kind of trying to come up with my wrist, which is exactly the opposite of what I needed to do. You know what? I'll do both. I'll make the turret and then I'll, uh... yeah. The turret shouldn't be hard anyway. I think I'm just gonna. I'm making the missiles all very low poly because on screen they're gonna be quite small. 
so I don't want to waste a bunch of polygons on tiny things that'll be one pixel maybe. So like the there, there's there's little sideways firing RCS rockets on all the missiles, but the they're so low poly that the rocket nozzle is a square pyramid rather than a cone. But it has smooth shading, so it kind of looks like a cone if it's really small on the screen. I wanted to catch fish, but not this guy. Max, I got a crit. Max, I got a crit. Another crit. Another crit. How's it? And Rogue is 13. And Rogue is 13. Yeah. Yay. Come on. I'm Come clearly on. Not in I'm clearly not in combat anymore. Dumb. Dumb. All right. I want. All right. Crayfish I want balls. crayfish balls. Crayfish balls. Crayfish balls. sitting. I need to get rid of that. I need to get rid of that. Um. Um. Yeah, I don't really. Yeah, I don't really. I won't bother getting rid of I won't bother getting rid of the macros. Macros. I'm just going to fix it to the actual things. Is that everything? I think that's everything. Yay! Yay! Level Make 12. Sure now lever tw level 12. Lever 12. Lever 12. What? What? My cat suddenly looked at me like... My cat suddenly looked at me like... Hey. Hey. Oh, and now she's meowing at me... Oh, and now she's meowing at me because she thought me saying hey was hey, get off my desk. Which it is. Should not be on my desk. You should not be on my desk. Stop looking away. Stop looking away. Off. Off. Shoo. Shoo. There you go. There you go. Uh, uh, no, no, it is this way. No, no, it is this way. I've got everything I need now, right? I've got everything I need now, right? Yeah.
Oh, oh. Cook it. I gotta actually cook it real quick. Yeah, I'm not gonna make this. High yeah, quality. I'm not gonna make this high quality. Actually, actually. Yeah, I can do two quality. Yeah, actions. I can do two quality actions. That's fine. Oh well. Come on. Come on. No. Not high quality. No. Oh, well. Not high quality. Oh well. Hey. Hey. Cheer up, I got you good food. Cheer up, I got you good food. What is it? A grilled trout? What is it? A grilled trout for yes, me? Yes, I am quite fond well, of the yes, dish. Yes, I am quite fond of the dish, but it. what have I done to deserve it? The guild master thought it would cheer me up. The guild master thought it would cheer me up, you say. Well meaning huh. though he may be, food, well, is, meaning not he may be, food is not the solution but to come, every blow. But come, let us see your hand. It's, it's, it's my duty as your senior to give you counsel after all. Surely not. You made this. Surely not. You made this? Truly? The aroma. It's delightful. It's delightful. And the skin, ever so, slightly, skin, charred, ever so slightly charred, just as it should be. Oh, save me. The thought of sinking, oh, my, teeth sinking my teeth into that crispy layer beneath. and tasting the tender oh. flesh beneath. Oh. Big pardons. As I was saying, this is quite as I was saying, impressive. This is quite in fact, impressive. I doubt even the guildmaster would be able to, guild would be able to, be able to fault it. Know. Trust me. I know. I don't understand it. You've been here I don't understand it. You've been here scarcely long enough to learn syrup making, yet you're already capable of this. Do you know how, much, how long it took, you know me, to long it took me to Six achieve the same? Moons. Six bleeding moons. God, am I so utterly devoid of talent? No, I will not be outdone. No, I will not be outdone by a mere novice. I refuse to be outdone. My apologies. My apologies. I thank you for the trout, and would have you accept this knife from me. Use it in conjunction with your skill, and your cooking experience will be much enhanced. Do not mistake it for a gift. It is payment for the trout. Besides, Nothing more. No Besides, it would give me no pleasure to get the better of a woman who wasn't properly now, leave equipped. Now, leave me be. I have stock to take. Excellent. Excellent. Into the armory chest. You Into go. the armory chest you go. Catfish does. Catfish not does get really. not get used for anything. Onto the floor you go. That's for, uh, for that. Uh, that, uh, is that. that is that. And, and shall I go to Gridania? Shall I go to Gridania or Ulda? Yeah. Uh, I say Ulda. And then will I be doing? And then will I be doing goldsmith alchemy, or... goldsmith, or? Those are the only two there. Those are the only two there. Uh, weaving. Yeah, alchemy, goldsmith, yeah. or weaver. Yeah, alchemy, goldsmith, or weaver first. How's your day been? How's your day been? Uh, yeah, long. Is it basically over at this point? Is it basically over at this point? Yep. That's good. That's good. Here we are. I made the missile so it'll look good enough without the turret, but then I also put a turret on it.
Oh, good point. Oh, good point. <laughs> I know you meant I So I'm, uh, Tim, you missed this part, but I I'm sure you saw my Discord post yesterday. Uh, yeah. Yesterday, I I'd heard this term before, but I hadn't, like, read about it, find out what it was, what the deal was. You ever heard of a Kasaba howitzer? Um, not by that specific name. It's roughly a nuclear shape charge. So the short version, I'll try and I'll try and not torture Alex by telling the whole story again. When they made the Orion nuclear pulse rocket, well, when they when they came up with the design, they never built it. <laughs> when, they, when they made the design for it, uh, they found that when ejecting the bombs behind the rocket, their energy would disperse in a sphere. So most of it would not go toward the rocket. One sec for and dialogue. You catch more One sec for dialogue. Closer, but then you'd blow yourself up. So. They created a shape charge, and a design for a shape charge version that would direct as much of its energy as possible toward the rocket, so that it would thrust the rocket. Until it dawned on someone that if we have a way to focus the energy from a nuclear blast, why not use that as a weapon? Give me one sec. And thus, give me one sec for dialogue. For dialogue. What? What is it now? What? Guild what is it poor, now? Another Guild for the poor. Filter. Another cursed love ah, filter. Ah, you're that wretch that insists, ah, on, that wretch that insists bench, on dusting my bench, no? aren't you? No? Uh, then who? My new assistant. Oh, no, my new no, assistant. No, no, no. Do not bother me with more no, names. No, no, my, my mind shall not be cluttered with trivial details, details unrelated to the chemical processes. Address you busy yourself with the master of your discipline. I have scant moments to spare on lessons, but I suppose I must invest a modicum of time in your training if you are to be of any use to me. Let us move on to the second fundamental principle of alchemy. Your understanding of this principle will be best facilitated by creating three bottles of antidote. For this task, we must need to acquire the stipulated number of grass vipers, as well as a chunk of rock salt. I believe the guild often has the poisonous snakes in stock, so you need only purchase them for from that uh, supplier. Ah, yes, uh, yes, as, as, rock salt, I as for the rock salt, I believe she can supply that too, and for a reasonable price. I suggest seeing her for all your simple ingredients needs, unless you fancy the idea of scrabbling in the sand to find them yourself. In any case, I'm not terribly concerned with how you procure the materials. What's most important is that you experience this fundamental principle firsthand as you concoct three bottles of antidote. Turn to me with the bliss of new knowledge stamped upon your features. Alright, dialogue done. Dialogue's done for now. Dialogue's done for now. Oh. Yeah, you cut off, so I didn't hear you. Um, where was it? They, uh... They came up with an idea that amounted to a nuclear shape charge. Uh... And, and, and that, yeah, the, the cassava howitzer was, um... When it explodes, the, the bomb is armored on all sides except for a weak spot at the front and the the metal in the weak spot gets vaporized by the explosion and propelled out and in theory this could be focused into a quite narrow cone and the ejecta would be coming at hundreds of kilometers per second and smack into the target as a cloud of plasma which could reach like several kilometers at least if not hundreds so when I heard about that, I was like, oh, well, definitely got to add this to my game, which is why I spent all that time making sure that I could get a uh, cone-shaped collision volume to work. And uh, now that that's there, I'm making a 3D model of the, uh, of the thing. Have you completed the three bottles of Have you completed the three bottles of antidote as I asked? asked? God's help you if you've interrupted me for anything less. There you go, I already had five. There you go, I already had five, but I made three more for you. Aha! An excellent result. Aha! An excellent result, my precarious protege. I see you. Yeah, precarious. That's weird. As you have attained the optimum viscosity without clouding the crimson hue. It would be most interesting to see how well these mixtures perform on live test subjects. Well, of course they'll be poisoned. How else would I gauge the efficacy of your work? 
But never mind that. But never mind that. What have you learned of the second alchemical principle? Compound, you produced like a helpful compound by combining otherwise mundane or lethally harmful substances. Has this not expanded your awareness of what is attainable with this profession? Just as it is possible for a medicine to act as a poison in sufficient amounts, so it is possible for a poison to be utilized as a cure. Your successful creation of these antidotes is evidence of this very fact. Those without a knowledge of alchemy would spare not a second glance for the venomous grass viper. Mix its venom with the appropriate amount of rock salt, and people will flock to your door to purchase your miraculous remedy. Experiment Study, experiment, and reveal worth in the most unexpected of places. The desire for sustenance and rest may become as minor, minor annoyances once you have learned the joy of such discoveries. It is time you added this amateur's mortar to your repertoire of alchemical devices. The mortar is oft referred to as a secondary tool, but used in conjunction with a primary tool such as the Alembic, you will soon come to appreciate its value in your work. I perceive much practical use for your growing skills, my eager apprentice. Now, run along and find a use for your new toy. I have further research to conduct. Dialogue done. Dialogue done. What's new with you, Tim? Uh, not a whole lot. Do you have any ideas for uh, more cool sci-fi gadgets to add? Um, that fit on a spaceship, presumably? Yeah. I made sure you were fed before I, I made sure you were fed before I started streaming. Uh, maybe, but ask me about it later. Okay. Not you, Ray. Not you, Ray. Alright, dialogue time. Alright, dialogue time. Oh, Mana! I'm honestly, oh, a, bit Mana. I'm honestly a bit surprised to see you. Most newcomers find Gigi's evaluation so harsh that we never hear so from them again. Him I'm so glad you didn't take him seriously when he said your copper pot. wasn't fit for a chamber pot. I mean, really, it doesn't even make sense. Really, make sense. You could make a chamber pot out of anything. Anyway, I hope you've been working hard, anyway, because, been working hard because your next task won't be nearly as easy as the last. Listen well, Mana. I want you to make me three copper gorgets. For this, you'll need copper ingots, which you very conveniently learned to make last time. Now I directed you to purchase ore from blah, 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 dig it yourself. However you choose to obtain your materials, I'm sure you'll put them to good use. Dialogue done. Dialogue done. I need six ingots, six and ingots, three and three leather. That's all six that I need, right? No. Two more. So my earrings is down to So my earrings is down to ten percent condition. And I'm like, alright, come on. And I'm like, alright, come on. I can, I can get point that I've I can make it to the point that I've made happens, new earrings right? before that happens, right? Grade one dark matter costs what? Forty gold? Or forty gil? Yeah, but Yeah, but why repair my stuff when Why I'm repair making my stuff, stuff when anyway? I'm making myself new stuff anyway? It doesn't give me XP. It doesn't give me XP.
have master's mint. Okay. I do have master's mint. Okay, cool. Uh, I'll need four. Uh, four for that. Don't even have to use master's ah, Don't even have to use master's men now. Excellent. Dialogue. Dialogue. Are the gorgets ready yet, mana? Are the gorgets ready yet, mana? Don't keep me waiting too long. Three high qual gorgets. Three high qual gorgets for you. Hmm. Well, in my hmm. opinion. Well, in my opinion. Mm, gorgeous. Your gorgets are gorgeous, Greenhorn. Oh, wait. I meant grotesque. Ungodly. An affront to the gods shame. themselves. For shame. Beg your pardon, mana. Beg your pardon, mana. I'm afraid that constructive, that constructive criticism isn't one of Yuji's strong points. Where was I? Ah, yes. But where was I? Your ah, yes. Well -made. Your gorgeous are well made, strong, strong and functional. And that's the least, least they should be. And that's the least they should be, as they're meant to protect when one's throat. When it comes to basic pieces like, these, these, we basic pieces like these, we don't have much Still, creative freedom. We should, Still, we this doesn't mean we should we should put in less effort, especially since the 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 techniques, the, used, to craft the techniques used to craft simple accessories are the same ones used to craft elaborate now ones. Then, you've to now then, you've learned how to there's handle your hammer, but there's another tool I'd like you to get acquainted with. My. Yes. With yes. This grinding wheel, you'll find with this grinding wheel, you'll find it easier to add the finishing touches, touches when you craft. You I mean. Try using it, and you'll see what I mean. Keep your nose to that grinding wheel, and you'll be ready for your next challenge in no time at all. Chest, gear. recommend gear, off and to, off to Weaver. Weaver. I was weird why the sound, was cut, off. Why the sound cut off. Indeed, indeed. Back so soon. Very Back well. so let's soon. Very well. Let's resume your training. Since last we spoke, you will doubtless, have spent, you will doubtless have spent your time making the basic products of our trade, namely yarn and cloth. Now we would have you take such basic products and craft whole garments three from them. Make three pairs of hempen breeches and present them for my you'll inspection. You'll be working with hempen cloth and yarn this time, as well as a little bit of leather. Look at the things. Moko grass. Gather it yourself. Botany. Having said all that, I will not, said accept, all that, I will not accept a new newfound, newfound passion for botany and its practitioners as an excuse for the late delivery of your breeches. So don't keep me waiting. Deliver your breeches. Deliver your breeches. I don't want to face the wall. I don't want to face the wall. Three pairs of hempen breeches. Three pairs of hempen breeches. There they are. There they are. So I need... So I need six undyed hempen six cloth, undyed hempen cloth plus an additional three hempen yarn. And three leather. 
and three leather. And for six undyed hemp and, for six cloth, undyed hemp and cloth, I need, I need 12, hemp and yarn. 12 hemp and yarn. So to then have an additional, so three, hemp an additional three hemp and yarn, I need 15 hemp and, and yarn total. So I already have one, so I need to do seven, seven of these. Still not quite good enough. Still not quite good enough to do this in three buttons. There should be three buttons though. Yeah. Make sure I don't have anything else for, sure that. Anything else for that. No. Whoops. Pardon. Pardon. All right. All right. Uh, wait. Uh, wait. I needed something else. Right. I needed something else. Right. Three leather. And three leather. something interesting at Publix this week. Was that? Was that? Strawberry, cucumber, mint, white tea. That sounds gross. That actually. sounds gross, actually. Like honestly, good. like I feel like honestly, I feel like none of those three things, like go, those together three well. things go together very well. I'm but glad it tastes good. I'm glad it tastes good. Cucumber and mint go together very well. Yeah. 
Yeah. Or cucumber water and mint go together very well. Begs differ. Yeah. Physical Begs cucumber differ, and but... physical mint, not so much. I'm literally just about to make new stuff. Uh, uh. Fine, I'll do it in a minute. Fine, I'll do it in a minute. Where do I, uh... Where do I, uh... Get dark matter in Uldah? Get dark matter in Uldah. Uh, should be on the shopping list somewhere. Should be on the shopping list somewhere. It's not like these are giving me bonuses anyway. It's not like anyway. these are giving me bonuses anyway. You're, lo you're looking for a, a vendor just labeled Merchant and Mender. They sell Dark Matter. In Ulda? In Ulda? Yeah. Hmm. Not bad, Mana. Not, Not bad, bad Mana. Not bad at all. This style of legwear has never been particularly fashionable, nor has its design changed significantly, design changed significantly, over, significantly over the years, aside. fluctuating lengths aside. aside. But I digress. I wondered if you might try for a variation, on the, conventional on, the conventional conventional on the conventional design, but I see you opted for orthodoxy. A wise decision in this case. Have been clothing as inexpensive and durable, making, making it popular amongst farmers, miners, and others who work the land. Such customers value comfort and mobility over all else. They may, they, may, they may appreciate more elegant forms, but they will not sacrifice function for them. Each garment has a purpose, mana, a purpose that you should always bear in mind. A scalloped hem is about as useful to a miner as nipples on a gladiator's breastplate. Now then, having completed your latest task, I believe you've earned this spinning wheel using in combination with your needle, combination with your needle and your work will saying benefit that, from it, it. Will, of course, saying that it will of course take you a little while to become to accustomed to using the tools need together you need not worry though i fully intend to give you ample opportunity to acquire the neck in fact i won't be teaching you anything else until you have by the time that spinning wheel feels like it belongs in your hand i dare say i'll have thought of a new task for you until then my girl Hey, no level up with dark matter. That's who it is. That's who it is. Yes, thank you. I'm actually just gonna go ahead and head to I'm actually just gonna go ahead and head to Gridania for now. Uh that. Uh that. Yes. Yes. Straight forward. And do I have to go around? Do I have to go around? No, right up here. Excellent. No, right up here. Excellent. I mean, in all honesty, I think. I mean, in all honesty, I think it's a little funny how uh, much it's. Bugging much it's bugging you to see my quality, to see my my gear quality or my gear low quality i will not comment <laughs> like, like, let, me, let, me like, like, let me let me check i think i think i won't actually be i won't new actually rings. be making so that, new rings so that or earrings so four earrings yeah. so i will have to repair yeah. some stuff i will have to repair some stuff
Am I the only one who hates doing hunts in Azus Law? I mean, it's not the worst I mean, location. It's not the worst location it's but bad, yeah. It is pretty bad, yeah. Pretty sure the worst is still Kurthus. Pretty sure the worst is still Kurthus. Western. Western. Hey, Beaton. Hey, Beaton. Do you remember what number we were at? Do you remember what number we were at? Was it three or four? Number four. Uh, innuendos. Uh, innuendos. I gotta keep a better track of this. I think it was three, not counting Beaton Your Wood. No, that one would, I definitely No, would that one would, I definitely would have counted, in case, but... In any case, this plane from your bearing... This plane from your bearing... It's fairly obvious. Yeah, no, I definitely counted his name. Yeah, no, I definitely counted his name as the first one. It is plain from your bearing. It is plain from your bearing that you and your saw have begun to move as one, as Good. true partners. Ready for the Good. Test. You are ready for the you second test. You, the you must be the wood. Before you brought me maple Before lumber, brought to, demonstrate me maple lumber to demonstrate your knowledge of wood, this time you will demonstrate, you will demonstrate your ability to create with it. I bid you craft me three maple shields. For this, you will acquire maple lumber and bronze rivets. As you would expect, our guild supplier Ferial has no blah 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 I think I said before you. Got I think I said here, before you got here. I'm not bothering to uh, read all the way through. Every read all the way through one every one single one of them being like, you could try go get it for yourself or talk to the botanists or every single one of them. Okay, square maple shields. Okay, yes. square maple shields. Yes, yes. Okay, I know uh, I have one. Okay, I know I have one, but that one's for me, so I will be making three more. Thank you very much. So I need. So three I need lumber. three maple lumber. Easy enough. Uh, whatever. Oh, I was gonna fix. The, oh, I was gonna fix the yes. Favorites. My favorites. But that's already been done. But that's already been done. Smithing or armor smithing craft, or armor which craft and lower which is level. lower level? Definitely smithing. Definitely smithing. Okay. Need six of them, right? Need six of them, right? Yep. yep. For six, I need six bronze ingots. For six, ingots. I need six bronze ingots. For that, I need six tin ore. For that, I need six Great. tin ore. Great. Uh, uh. Okay. Or Hoyad. Or Hoyad. Or Hoyad. Or Hoyad. It's actually O Royard, I think. Royard. Royard.
Yeah, I already checked. Okay. I think I'm gonna run the stream late. Tonight. I think I'm gonna run the stream late tonight to get all the um, crafting and redoing done. Crafting and redoing done. Fair enough. Quite enough. Not quite enough. Knock on wood one. Knock on wood one. I've gotten so many, gotten so many achievements today.
I'll count that one. Uh, I'll count that one. What's this? Have you already? What's bent this? The wood Have to you already will? bent the wood to your will? <laughs> You are no workaday you carpenter. You are no workaday carpenter. That well, done, explain. well done, child. Well done, child. Your shields are most satisfactory. The pattern in the green, the, the, pattern pattern in the, green, the lingering scent of maple. Your choice of materials is excellent. The construction above criticism. Few skill. carpenters can claim such skill. Yellow is in one's favorite shields of wood. Did you know this? Today it is not so. They, like your adventurer brethren, are wont to choose the surety of armorer's metal. But a shield of wood provides ample protection for a lower price. It is readily made and readily replaced if broken. And while not quite so sturdy, and while not quite so sturdy, it may, it may yet serve to spare a man his doom just as readily as a shield of metal. To imbue shield and spear, to with, your shield and spear your with your strength, to pour your life into the wood that others might persevere, that others might preserve, might preserve their own. This is what it means, this this is what it means to be Such the wood. Such responsibility is not to be taken lightly, child. You have passed the second test, and in so doing, have earned this amateur's claw hammer. Though a saw will suffice for many tasks, a carpenter who wields blade and hammer can both can perform his trade with greater ease. If you wish to improve as a carpenter, it is essential that you learn to use the two tools in combination. Continue to refine your skills, and return, refine your skills and return to me when you are ready to take the next step. All right, so we're at four. All right, so we're at four. They're not coming as quickly as I They're remember. not coming as quickly as I remember. One more. Getting used to that knife I gave you? Getting used to that Gods knife I gave you? Gods know it doesn't happen very often, 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 but you've chanced to find me unoccupied. Me How about you show me Let's what you've learned? Let's see you make three leather After chokers. All, there's more After all, there's more to our craft than, than simply tanning hides, and chokers are just, chokers are just about the simplest things one can make. You'll need circles of leather and animal sinew to accomplish this task. Leather, technique, leather, technique. Oh, okay, that actually was. I hope your technique has improved. I hope your technique has improved since last time. Other means of procuring your own materials, hunt for your own. Pelts. When you finish your work, bring your, you chokers, your, work, bring your chokers here for inspection. I think I have everything I, I, think need. I, have everything I need. Three, Three leather chokers. Leather chokers. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. The easiest, actually. The easiest, actually. Nope, not yet. Be enough for a level? Will this be enough for a level? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, that was enough for an entire yeah, level. That was enough for an entire level.
Level 10. Level 10. Tougher than leather. Tougher than leather. I suppose there's no denying. That I suppose there's no denying chokers. that these are leather chokers. Truth told, no if truth be told, no vocal could have achieved similar results given skin, skin, sinew, and time. Oh, but don't. I don't mean to make. Oh, light but don't. I don't mean to make light of, but don't, don't light 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 of your efforts. You fulfilled the order precisely well as requested. A job now, well done. Teach you something to now then, I will teach you something to supplement your learning. Physical training. The body. Through physical training, the body can be made strong and resistant to injury. Not so the throat, which ever remains a vulnerable point. Although a leather choker provides less protection than a metal gorget, its simple design makes it ideal for everyday applications. The simplicity also makes Makes it an ideal choice for beginners practicing and basic techniques assessing and for guild progress. masters assessing their progress. As you are, you would make a passable, you are, you would make a passable leather worker, one among the nameless multitudes who scrape a living out there. Whether you rise to become something more is contingent upon your efforts. Consider this an amateur's all. Consider this an amateur's all. A consider this amateur's all a reward for your efforts. You will find it an indispensable partner to the head knife as you continue now, your training. Now I must return to my work. Now, I must return to my work. If you chance to find me unoccupied again, mayhap I will teach you something else. Till then, keep your nose to the till then keep your nose to the grindstone. Oh wait, that's goldsmiths. Oh wait, that's goldsmiths. Keep your nose to the all. Keep your nose to the all. Well, I'm only a minute past. Well, I'm only a minute uh, past. Stream end. Uh, but I did stream end. But the, I did uh, manage to finish all the uh, uh, job uh, quests. Job quests. Nice. That is. That is. Conjurer. Uh, wait. Conjurer. Uh, wait. From the top. Yeah. There we go. Yeah, there Gladiator, we go. Pugilist, Gladiator, Marauder, Pugilist, Lancer, Marauder, Archer, Lancer, Rogue. Archer, Rogue. Conjurer, Thaumaturge, Conjurer, Arcanist. Thaumaturge, Arcanist. Carpenter, Blacksmith, Carpenter, Armor, Blacksmith, Goldsmith, Armor, Goldsmith, Goldsmith Weaver, Leatherworker, Alchemist, Weaver, Alchemist, Alchemist, Culinarian, Miner, Botanist, and Miner, Fisher. Botanist, and Fisher. Excellent. Excellent. Okay. Now okay. To now to make stuff. Unfortunately, which unfortunately, uh, I'm actually going uh, to put the stream on make break sure for a moment and make sure I've got out. that all figured out. And, uh, take a quick and, break. Uh, take a quick break. And we'll do the second half of the stream. Running around the, gathering and crafting. Running around which gathering and crafting things, which honestly should not actually take that long, but nevertheless, nevertheless. All right, be right back. All right, be right back with the second half.
All right. Welcome All right. To Welcome to Mantis Shrimps. Mantis fellow Shrimps. Fantasy stream fellow after Fantasy hours. Stream After Hours. Power through all the level power one through all the level one through five crafts. Yeah, I'm gonna be doing some gathering. Uh, I'm gonna be doing some gathering that is over five. level one through five. But uh, that is just because. That is just because. Um, because it'll continue to give me XP. Because it'll continue to give me XP. Because there's a lot of and things. Because there's a lot of things from the level one through five crafts that require like, uh, it. Moko like grass, uh, for example, Moko I grass, for example. I need 108 moco grass, grass, and it is a level 15 so gather. Instead so that, instead of going and buying all that, even though I can afford it, that's a lot of botanist XP that I would just be giving up. So, granted, I'm not level 15. Botanist granted, I'm not level 15 botanist yet, yet. So, there are some I might not. Be able there are some to. I might not be able to. We shall have to see. We shall have to see. Oh, and I've left a few things. Oh, and I've left a few things off things that require things that are much, that are much, higher, much, so much higher. So we will not be trying. To we will not be trying to make the rollenberry shaved ice, ice, and we will not be trying to make battered fish. Rollenberry shaved ice requires rollenberry shaved ice requires, rollenberry shaved ice requires which rollenberries, be, which can only be. I think they can be, be grown, but obviously, can be grown, but obviously I can't do that. And then they, they can only be harvested once you're like level forty something. Battered fish. And then the battered fish requires olive oil. Olive oil, which. Which was also tricky for some. Reason. Was also tricky for some reason. I think that was the issue. I think that was the issue. But anyway, those but those are anyway not those list. those are not in the list. And maybe I'll come back to do it later. It's whatever. Okay. Okay. So I had a whole so, route. I had a whole route, route planned out, but that was when I was planning on just buying a lot of it. Buying so buying a lot of it. So, so I am just going to follow a new route. Follow a new route. <clears throat> <clears throat> Oh, that's right. Oh, that's right. Problem with this new route. Problem with this new route is that it uh doesn't take doesn't take assumes I can teleport, which I cannot. But it is good at only. But it is good at only picking so things that are close. Okay. So whatever, I'll go with it anyway. We're not trying to be super efficient. We're not trying to be super efficient right now. Fishing out I'll be getting all first. my fishing out of the fishing way first, because all the fish I need are in one spot. I think the um the I think the I've um the issue I've been having with my eyes is my getting better meds and got my again. meds got and changed so again and um I think it is actually I think it is so. actually improving it so that is a great that relief. is a great relief That's good Is the is the Limsa airship Limsa deck Limsa airship deck up high? Up high? It's hard to tell because Limsa Limsa. It's hard to tell because Limsa Limsa is all kind of up high, but it's got to be right. I think so. It's like above the drowning. Wench. It's like above the drowning winch. I would assume so. It's probably not below the um... bulwark hall. Bulwark hall. Yeah. Yeah, I would have to be above. Yeah, them. I would have to be above them. Cause, cause, it doesn't. Yeah, it doesn't. Look it doesn't. Like yeah, it doesn't look like it's that low. That's just rock down there. That's just yeah, rock down right, there. You're right. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Rudani is the only one. That has Rudani it. is the only one that has it actually low. Am I gonna have to kill pugils again? Am I gonna have to kill pugils again? No, that's a different fate. No, that's a different fate. Well, if I walk within reach well, of it, if I walk within take... reach of it, I'll go take care of it. All right, what am I doing here? All right, what am I doing here? Getting... I am getting. Uh, I mean, I think I'm getting. Uh, I mean, I think I'm getting multiple of these. Whatever. I... Whatever. I... I mean, what does it want me to get? I mean, what does it want me to get here? 
Probably not going to do that. Probably not going to do that. It wants me to get the crayfish. Here. It wants me to get the crayfish here. I need three I need crayfish. three crayfish. I got a chub. I got a chub. How much of a chub? Not much. Not much. It's pretty small. It's pretty small. Hey, crayfish. Hey, crayfish. Too bad I can't. Uh, Too bad I can't. Identical, uh, cast, for identical cast for another. Level am I? 12? Level am I? 12? 60, 67 uh, 60, levels. 67 levels. <laughs> Like that 66. <sighs> the other issue with um the other issue with um collecting collecting in areas that are above, in areas that, are above that one through five is being around monsters that are too, high, around level, monsters that are think, too high level I but i think i think all of these jobs are staying, jobs are staying consistently my below my combat levels so concern. it's not that much of a concern oh and and gear oh and and gear if i don't have level 11 gear level 11 gear collecting, collecting level 11 stuff is harder but, harder, it, should but it should be fine like I said, more XP. Like I said, more XP. One more. One more. Oh, I forgot to. Ah, it's fine. I don't need to. Ah, it's fine. I don't need to. I got a chub again. I got a chub again. It must have gone away. It must have gone away. Incoming. Incoming. Lenosha night, night music. Do you actually, okay. do you actually want me to? I mean, if that's supposed to be the best. For I mean, if that's supposed sure. to be the best for it, sure. Why not? Why not? Why not? Oh. Um. Oh. Um. Ah, crap! I gotta go back into town for that. Why does that say? Zephyr Drift. Zephyr Drift. Which I haven't technically Which found yet. I haven't technically found yet. Fair enough. Fair enough.
Yay. It's one of three. Two or three. That's two or three. Ah, that's three. Ah, that's three or three. Oh, hey. What combat, job? what combat job am I looking at? Where's the answer? The answer is also 13. You should just. Ah. Ah. Well, okay. There's problem well, okay. number one. There's problem number one. Level 10. Level Gathering 10. Quest. Gathering Quest is where quest I get my offhand tools. I can't get the sunset wheat. I can't get the sunset wheat. I will have to buy that. I will have to buy that. Pugil's level up. Is that enough? Yeah, all right. Yeah, 
going? Is that good with you? Yeah, there we go. And I want to use... And I want to use... Crayfish balls, yeah. Crayfish balls, yeah. I would have had to make myself accept... I would have had to make myself accept... The quest gave me some. The quest gave me some. Yay. Well, instead of crayfish balls, you know, you could always use a... Uh, uh, Deremides nuts. <laughs> We have to go fight some Doremides first. Seven. I need seven princess trucks. We should make this a really we great make this time. make this a really to great time to have uh, uh, identical cast. Identical double cast. And double or triple oh, hook, but alas. Especially triple hook. Which I Especially triple hook, which I won't get for another... 76 levels. 76 levels. <laughs> Feel free to talk about whatever, guys. Feel free to talk about whatever, guys. This is a much more, much casual, more version of casual version of the stream. <clears throat> Hey Tim, I know you hey, haven't Tim. been fishing for as, long, you as, been me, fishing for as long as me, I but you've been I assume you've been making liberal cordials. use of high cordials. Of what? High cordials. High cordials. Yeah. 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 Remember, Remember doing fishing without them? Doing fishing without them? <laughs> yep. Oh no, I'm too low. Oh on no, GP to, I'm too low uh, on GP to. Oh. Well, guess well, I just am. Guess I just am. <laughs> No helping that. No helping that. Ah, gudgeon. Ah, gudgeon. Crap, I forgot to check. Crap, I forgot to um, check. Does, um... Who's that? Okay, okay, okay. Who's that? I think I brought this up before. Uh... In case not, I'm gonna link it. There's a sci-fi story called, uh, Three Worlds Collide. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. more popularly as The Baby Eaters. I... Oh, I... yeah, that one. Never oh, mind. yeah, that one. Never mind. I was thinking not what I was thinking problem. of. I was thinking of Three Body Problem. Yeah, that one's different. They're, they both get quite dark. Um, this is a short story. Uh, so, I think I've brought it up before, but as a refresher course. In chapter one, humans are exploring space when they discover an alien spaceship. Um, and this, um, this is ostensibly, is ostensibly a, uh, a uh, I don't know, it's something that, I don't know, maybe, it's something should that, that about, maybe should not be talked about on, on stream. At least not in any detail. At least not in any detail. So, I guess... I don't know. I don't know. Knowing what it is you're talking Knowing about... Knowing what it is you're talking about, probably best saved for not on stream. Well, then you're not going to find out why I was giggling. That's fine. That's fine. I can accept that. I can accept that. It has... I, I, I never read the comments before. I mean the whole point. I mean the whole point of the story is some very disturbing concepts, concepts, and the philosophy, and the around, those. philosophy around those. Very, uh, very uh, YouTube demonetizing YouTube demonetizing type, type stuff. Which, while I'm not exactly, which while you know, I'm not exactly, you know, being concerned about being, being concerned about YouTube being monetized by YouTube still, right now, it's still setting a bad precedent. Setting a bad precedent. Okay, I just got a bite. Okay, from, I just got a bite from 
I might have just gotten a bite from. I might have just oh, gotten a bite from. The, oh, I don't have enough okay. gathering for it. Yeah, I think okay. that was the big fish. For I think that was the big fish, fish for this hole. That's funny. Did I know you'd read that? Did I know you'd read that? Did I suggest that to you? Did I suggest that to you? I, I don't know. Did you ever read Crystal Society? Did you ever read Crystal Society? Uh, sounds familiar, but I don't think so. Where, uh, all the Where, characters uh, are... All the characters I, guess are uh, all the characters. I guess that's not true, all the characters. The main character and several of the, the main character and several of the side characters are all... No. No, it's uh, no, they're no, all, it's, uh, uh, they're all uh, consciousness constructs, consciousness within, constructs an within an AI. The uh, main character, the, uh, the story main character, starts, the story starts, starts with them coming and, online, uh, and they, um, are the, they are the learn how to relate to learn how to relate and, to humans and uh, uh, socialize well. Socialize part well, of, a part of the, part, uh, a part of the, the consciousness. The consciousness. Yeah, it's pretty interesting. Yeah, it's pretty um, interesting. I, um, I, it, it, if I remember correctly, if I remember correctly, it kind of drifted, it kind of drifted of off really of what I found really interesting about it as the plot uh, progressed. Plot progressed. And, so and so I never continued into, continued into the, into the um, sequel, but, uh, but, uh, but it was, it was very, but it was, it was very enjoyable to read the first time through. One of the elements of the one of the elements of the, of the like AI the framework for the AI um, is that um, there is a there is a like, one of those like consciousness cores consciousness or cores or whatever, or whatever um, actually does not have much actually does not have much own, intelligence of its own uh, at all and uh, is the and primary thing is the primary the thing controlling the body because there's like an actual you know android body for it and and. Oh wait, do I want to be upper decks? Because I want to go. No, yeah, I'm just go down No, yeah, I can just go down there. Um, um. And so the other. And so the other. Uh, entities uh, have to like. Entities have to like send commands to the body, and they have to like, to, like, to, like, share, have to, like share control over the body, over the body. and like, like the, that around. control gets like passed between around them. between them. And it's part of like. And it's part of like, uh, how they uh. How they work with each other. How they work with like, each other. Or like, or like push against each or like other. Like push against each other. Like there's always a bit of a power uh, struggle. Uh, as well. As well. Because the different... Because the different... The different... Uh, the different... Uh, what's, what's a good 
Uh, what's what's a good whatever word? course I'll just call whatever them. course I'll have just call different them that. opinions on have different opinions on what's good for them you know are. based on whatever they uh, are meant to do are meant to do. One of them is the we need, to protect, is the, ourselves, we at need to protect costs. ourselves at all costs. Fight or flight. Fight or flight. Naya, those were both. Um, Naya, those were both. Along um, with Harry, along with Potter, Harry Potter and the Message of Rationality. On a massive list. Of, on a massive list of. Mostly, mostly. Mostly, rat -fic mostly stuff, rat fic but, um, stuff, but um. Sometimes just other things. Sometimes just like other things that seemed like they would be popular with the same kind. Popular of with the same kind of reader. Okay. Garlic. Garlic. I'm going, I'm going to have to make some room. Well, actually, I'm going to go ahead and, well, go ahead and check. None of these get used. By None of these 10. get used by level ten. I'm just going to go ahead and solve them. If any of these don't get used, if any of these don't get used by level ten. You're safe. You're safe. You're safe. You're safe. Yep, nope. Yep. You're nope. out of here. You're out of here.
Alright, there we go. Alright, there we go. We have made room. What? What just happened? What just happened? Why? Why? Why did you do that? Why did you do that? That is obnoxious. That is obnoxious. Alright, I'll fix that in a minute. Alright, I'll fix that in a minute. Garlic and garlic. Garlic and garlic. Okay. Uh, Cinnabar. Okay. Cinnabar. I was going to buy that as well, right? Yeah, cool. Yeah, cool. Yeah, I'll just have to record that all in a minute. So I will, in fact, have to buy so all I the So I will, in fact, have to buy all the moco no. grass. No! Unfortunate. Unfortunate. Rye. And the rye. And the wild onion. And the wild onion. I got a response to the sideways in time comment. Oh. Oh. If I understand this correctly, if you use the that equation that I cited, and you plug in a negative number for your velocity in space, because you can go left or right, then your time term will be real, not imaginary, but it will be negative. And uh, if, if moving backwards and forwards in time were the same as moving backwards and forwards in space, then you'd, you'd end up with uh, retroactive causality, which could lead to a paradox. And since the universe doesn't appear to generate paradoxes, huh. a, a, an equation huh. that does is probably wrong. It's funny to think the, it's universe, funny doesn't to think the universe doesn't paradoxes. create paradoxes. Oh, it does some stuff that seems strange and strains common sense, but it never self-contradicts. The uh, logic always uh, it, like works out eventually. Why on earth do you? Think why on earth do you think that has to be true? Because I've never observed anything to the contrary, <laughs> firsthand or secondhand. Like, uh, so people find anecdotes. Uh, sometimes we, it seems like we, a paradox, and then they end up, they come up with a better model. We've been talking yeah, about. We've been talking about. Anecdote. We've been talking about quantum. We've been talking about quantum mechanics, quantum mechanics tonight. Turns out there are several, things, are several things within quantum mechanics that happen without observation or because, observation of, or because observation. of observation. Okay. Well, for one, I'm not trying to 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 coin a theory here. I'm just saying, it, it it appears to me that the universe does not generate paradoxes. Yeah, I no, have no knowledge of yeah, the universe no, that's, having generated yeah. a paradox. Having no knowledge of a paradox is fine, but the statement that the universe does not generate paradoxes seems more like a statement of faith than anything else. That's fair. Caught more fish than I needed to. Caught more fish than I needed to. So one of the things I was supposed to do, so one of the things I was supposed to do with that was fish oil. I guess it's, it's, it's just inference by extrapolation, you know? Every time I've heard about an apparent paradox, either there's been a solution, or it's been shown to be impossible. Yes, until proven otherwise. Yes, until proven otherwise, it, it's usually safe to assume. And I, I'm not aware of any paradox having been proved, so if the, if the rule has held my entire life, I feel safe extrapolating, it's likely it will continue to hold. You have also not died yet. Yeah, well... That will only happen once in your life, presumably. 
And you will, not, uh, then be able to and you will not then be able to I, prove I, that I it's going like to happen. The, well, the shorter the time scale over which I make a prediction, the, gr the lower the probability I feel confident saying that I will die. You know, a, a thousand years from now is very difficult for me to predict, but a thousand seconds from now, I have a great deal of confidence I will still exist. Also, I've observed evidence over my life that probability of death seems to increase over time. So, that, that could sway my conclusions. Well, actually, I guess it, it doesn't increase over time for most of people's lives, but like when they get past like 60, it starts going up really quickly. Okay. One more thing to buy. From one more Esmanet. thing to buy from Esmanet, but otherwise I am good to gather now. No more gathering in Lenosha. No more gathering in Lenosha, though. Tathanolin! Tathanolin! Actually, I'm going to go to North Shroud first. Because I feel like it. I've ended up rereading this whole story, and uh, I don't know how I didn't notice all the parallels to Warhammer 40k and how humans are portrayed. Oh, really? Oh, really? I, I, yeah. I definitely did not. I, I, that. I definitely did not notice that either. Like, there's a foreword at the beginning that's like, okay, let's just say genetic engineering didn't go very far. AI never worked out. You know, we did. We didn't really get post scarcity, but you know, we still kind of explored space and built spaceships and are pretty prosperous and and at peace and then went on with the story right but they've all got titles you know like the lord programmer and the lady sensory and the lord confessor i'm like yeah this this sounds a lot like warhammer and they've got this this whole hierarchy of like how how much you're respected and where when you're in what settings you're allowed to speak based on how experienced you are in your career so like if you if you studied the same topic for a hundred years, then you get called the Lord or Lady of that profession. Was it? Um, and if you was it? Then, um, you, know, you can't be at the conference table. Who wrote it? Who wrote it? I can't remember the guy's name. Yeah, it's Yudkowsky. Okay. Yeah, it's Yudkowsky. Um, okay. He um, he is he as far as I know, as far as I know a very big proponent of meritocracy. Yeah, meritocracy has its merits. Right. I would not hey. consider it an ideal system, though. No. Um, um, uh, have I ever talked to you? Uh, have I ever talked to you about? For a very silly uh, granted, it was for a very silly reason, reason that I was going over this, uh, but the idea of a, uh, the idea of a sapiocracy. Oh, um, I think if that's what I think it is, I think it's already got a name, but I forgot what it was. Is is it where being smarter gets you more power? Where, 
where the people who are the smarter, the people who are the smartest, based on however you determine that, are the most in control. Yes. Yeah. Um, I don't care what the other name for it. I don't care what the other name for it is. Don't care what the other name for it is. Sapiocracy is better. Well, my, yeah, it, it probably beats a, it probably beats a meritocracy in some respects. Oh, there's a there's a clear. Oh, there's a I, there's I a clear flaw. Guess at one instability there, the, the, which is the, 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 you're prone to psychopaths in positions of power. Oh no, that's not. That's oh no, that's not. Flaws. That's not what that I'm thinking. The flaw true, is that might be true, I but imagine there's, I imagine there's, there's a lot of people. I imagine there's a lot of people. Carries a risk. Uh, I imagine there's a lot of. People uh, I imagine there's a lot of people within that system that, that, would, be system kind of that would be kind of okay, okay like, with that yeah, because they'd be like, yeah, but the system. It's a flaw in capitalism as well. The problem. The is problem that, is that, as far as we have seen, as so far as we have seen so far, living beings living are inherently, are inherently uh, selfish, uh, to, a degree, selfish to, to a degree, you know, to some degree, you know, and, and, and therefore, people, therefore with power tend people with power tend to power. want to maintain their power. And if, and the if, way you if determine the way you determine who's in charge is by testing people's intelligence, testing people's intelligence the somehow, people in the people who are in charge are going to find a way to test it such that they, they or people they want the are deemed the smartest. <laughs> so your uh, oh, right, so yeah. your uh, yeah. what, in, your in, your in SAT your your SATs they would develop a really really good IQ test, but in practice. Yeah, there's a lot of risk they're going to develop a racist IQ test. Exactly. Or you'll, exactly. You'll get something, like you'll get something a lot more like our IQ test, where it tests for a certain kind of intelligence, certain kind you, know? Of intelligence you know? It's kind of sad, because, like, I scored really well, and I feel like I, I, I should be allowed to have a, a, a little modicum of pride that I did a good job on the thing. You know? I've, I've learned, you know, I've, I've learned not to say, and in fact, not to believe it actually makes me better than people, but like, it's a talent. No, there, there are, no, there, there are that things are notable about, that are notable about, uh, uh, getting a high, getting a high yeah. IQ um, score. And, and other things, the um, there's just other is, things that also need to be checked. If I'm not mistaken, like it's, it's known to be flawed, but it's also known to have utility because it is better than a coin flip. But like, it's not random. Yeah, it shows. It shows. Yeah, like, it shows. It shows like uh, I'd have to look it up again. Uh, I'd have to look it up like again. But it's, I want to say it's like spatial reasoning and, and uh, uh, yeah. especially ones used by pattern pattern psychologists, like they, pattern they, recognition. Yes. Pattern recognition. Yes. Yeah, hopefully, at least have the best of intentions to, in that they're trying to actually measure something universal in humans. But when the definition of intelligence itself is a little nebulous, that job is hard. Regarding the meritocracy, though, it's interesting. If he is a proponent of meritocracy, it does show a little. But even in chapter one, like, there's a whole paragraph where um, the lady psychologist has is studying all the alien transmissions, and thus, uh, de, de facto, that makes her the first xenopsychologist of humanity. But their meritocracy does not say that being the first or only makes you automatically a trustworthy authority in the field you're still a noob even even though there's nobody smarter than there's nobody better than you at that field and by that logic you know ordinarily she wouldn't be allowed at the conference table but the situation was strange if she's, if she's the if best she's, at, if, if she's, she's the best at if she's so done the most with it so far then she that has the she has the, the least, highest merit she's also the worst xeno psychologist in all of history yeah you know she yeah. hasn't done the least. The, she hasn't, hasn't done the least. Either. That's definitely not true. People who have done none. She's People who have done none. Xenopsychologist. So? I guess doing zero so? doesn't count. But, 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 but. She's done, she's done, like, doing it like, none. Doing it still none get, gets still you less merit get, gets you less some. merit than doing it some. I suppose. If you're the only you person know, who has If you're done, the only person who has done it. Psychologist over someone in a different field. Right. Until right. it is proven, until that, the is proven that the person who has the title of currently has sure the title of still letting her talk. Yeah, and somebody, and also somebody, yeah, and somebody, somebody, somebody else just has to prove that they're more correct than her. Yeah, and you know, in the first two chapters, they're all kind of sitting at the table, all pretty much equals, you know, just trying to debate stuff. I think the confessor is a self-insert.
Okay, speaking of whether okay, you've read things, of read you've read things or not, have you read Methods of Rationality? I read a little bit of it, but I think you would have had better luck catching me with that way earlier in my life. Oh. Oh. Fair enough. Yeah. Fair enough. Because when I was little and Harry Potter was new and shiny and everybody was into it, I was into it like everybody else. And around sometime in middle it was, it was either at the beginning of middle school or at the beginning of high school um, I was introduced to the Lord of the Rings and I took another look at Harry Potter and how repetitive some of the storylines were oh yeah and how oh yeah how much it was not as original as I had originally assumed you know not having read many things yeah yeah and you know in retrospect like Harry Potter is far from alone in taking high fantasy tropes out of the Lord of the Rings, because the Lord of the Rings was a watershed sem seminal work, you know, everybody copies it. But at the time, it looked really bad for Harry Potter. So I kind of like, I, 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 I just, I kicked it, I shunned it, removed it from my life. Had zero interest at all, was very bitter about Harry Potter at that point. And, uh, you know, as I got older and more information came to light about how I was right in ways I didn't know at the time about Harry Potter being uncreative and low quality and the author being a bad person, um, I, you know, I'm just kind of done. I have, like, no interest in Harry Potter. And thus, okay, the no problem, foundation okay, for interest the problem in is... Harry Potter derivative works. The problem is that the problem is that methods of ra methods of reasoning, of ra is, that with that reasoning is that methods of rationality kind of uh, uh, it makes it something makes that is no longer something that is no longer entertaining entertaining. Yeah, yeah, it's it's like it, it, and it like, fixes it. Like and like, ways. well, but so I'm there's well, so there's version of something that I don't want anymore. I might try it someday. I'm trying to. I'm trying to figure. I'm trying to. I'm trying to, right trying to figure out the right thing to say that explains the purpose. Explains the purpose that you can then make an informed decision about, about whether or not you will end um, up enjoying it. Um, I'm, not, I'm not swearing to never read it. My brother eventually got me to play the Outer Wilds, so who knows? The future's uncertain. Maybe I will read it someday. Not right now, though. Not in the mood. Reading something else. Do you ever, like, apply to a job and then start getting afraid to check your email because you don't want to see the rejection letter? Yeah, that's mm. thing. It's definitely a thing. It's definitely I've a never, thing. I've never been, yeah, super, been affected that super affected that way. I've had to check my email a couple times this week, and uh, I've been scared every time and then feeling relieved when I don't see any response to my interview. That's fair. But, that's fair. Like... The responsible adult thing to do should be to check it all the time, you know? Like, I should check it now, because I'm thinking about it. Yeah. And yeah, I haven't checked it today. Go ahead. I don't want to check my email now. You should check it at I'm least once a day. You should check it at least once a day. Unfortunately, we decided that you should go fuck yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, do be that way. Yeah, do be that way. I'll check it soon enough. What, once a day is what, once a day is particularly good because that way you can reply to it within you know 24 hours of them sending it. I was supposed to do it this morning because I was supposed to email my insurance company, but I ended up calling them instead because I was sleepy and not thinking straight. But yeah, I uh, I told them I needed a week to count up all of the damages and report them, but I was wrong. In theory, maybe it was possible for me to do it in a week, but that has not come to pass. And a big factor has been me trying, having to babysit the contractors. I, uh, Tim, I was telling Alex earlier, but uh, I've been having repair people and carpet people come into my apartment all week, and the carpet people seem desperate to not actually do their job. Like, multiple times they've come here and then, like, done very little or nothing and then been like, yeah, we'll come back tomorrow and then not come back tomorrow. And I've had to call the office 
the, the, the uh, landlord's office and ask what's going on and make them call the carpet people and send them over here again. Apparently they came today and I didn't even know because they knocked one time and then gave up and left. Within like within like 30, 30 seconds, seconds to a minute. 30 yeah. seconds to a minute, like yeah. No second knock, no call. And like my door wasn't even locked because I already had a different contractor over doing stuff. So d the guy could have just walked in. And then, but like apparently he fed the office an excuse that he couldn't get in because he didn't have a key because they didn't give him a key. I'm like what? Then what? Any person who actually had any pride in, the, in in their career would have done would be to contact the office and ask for a key. People Why looking for an excuse not to do work will for. find an excuse not to do work. Yeah, which would have made sense, except he drove all the way over here. Like, what's his plan to just drive to all of the different sites all day? Because I know he's got other jobs to do. You know, he, he, he probably did one in the morning, and then was going to come here, and then had another one to go do after. But, and, and did he just want to drive all day? I mean, that's, maybe. that's I mean, possible. that's, maybe he that's possible. Less than he hates working. I mean, okay. I mean, are okay. you aware of the fact? Are you aware of the fact? I say, are you aware of the fact? I say, are you aware of the fact that some people enjoy driving? Yeah. And also, if he was going to have to drive to all of those sites anyway, but then doesn't have to work on top of that, then that saves him most of a day. I suppose, but it's kind of irrational of him to think, oh, I couldn't get in today. Uh, so I, th I can uh, skip the job. Like, no, you're still going to have to come no. back here. Not doing it now means he's going to have to come here again. Yes, but. Yes, it wasn't but. Right it wasn't right then. That, absolutely, that yeah. absolutely is irrational, is irrational and, and is a thing people uh, do. I wouldn't be surprised if, uh, you, have done be surprised if you have done it before. Oh, yeah, I've definitely uh, done that before. Yeah. It's, it's yeah. The, it's, it's, the, it's, the, it's the. I know I'm going to have to do. I know I'm going to have to do this I later. Do but if I don't have to do it now. Yeah, I won't say it's rational. In most cases, I'll, I, I, I won't even say it's right of me to have, have done that. A more cynical interpretation right is if this guy was overbooked and his bosses knew he was overbooked, then he might be looking for an excuse to push some jobs back so he can get d done some other oh, ones no, that he actually fine. has a chance of completing. Ah, yeah. Uh, he was yeah. Almost uh, really yeah. yeah, if he was already running late. Yeah, if he was already running late for something else. That it took... I guess maybe it was a different team, but it, uh, it, it apparently was the same team because, you know, it was the same guy came to vacuum the uh, water out of the floor in my room five hours after I reported that I needed it done. Like, it, it was an evolving emergency situation right then, and it took five hours because apparently, like, they had a whole queue of houses that they had to visit and save and they did not have enough people to actually send a truck when it was needed. So I would recommend you get a shop vac from Home Depot. If you yep. catch them on sale, they're like 60 bucks for a decent one, and yep. just keep it in a closet or something. Yep. Yeah, I'm currently borrowing a friend because on Sunday, the intake valve for the ice machine in my refrigerator cracked and it started spraying water all over the floor and I had a flooding event going on all over again, <laughs> twice within a week. So, uh, yeah, the second time around, I knew better than to wait around, and I called my friend Will and had him come over here with a shop vac. Ironically, he arrived at the same time as the emergency on-call maintenance person, who also had a vacuum, but he, uh, he left the shop vac here in case this happens a third time in rapid succession. I saw a shop back a few months ago at Goodwill, and I almost bought it, but I was like, do I want to impulsively buy a thing that I haven't needed in recent memory? Especially when I know my dad has one. I don't know if that was a dumb decision or not, but I, at least I'm, if, if I had bought it then, I'd probably have it now. And if I had the wherewithal, 
it would have been possible for me to remember that I had it during the flooding, and I would have been able to save a lot more books. And artwork. Yeah, it turns out, I don't even know what to do about this. I, one of the boxes contains a, um, like a file organizer gadget thingy. Uh, it's like a, it's like a big pouch, but kind of a, also a box that's full of artwork that I made when I was little. And I haven't looked at it yet, but I'm betting if I open it up, I will find that it all got water damaged. And that stuff's literally priceless. I know you like to hold on to I know you like stuff. to hold on to a lot of stuff that I feel like I feel like there's no reason to hold on yeah. to. There's no reason that to hold one, on to. That one that is, one, rough. That one is very rough. Yeah. 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 Very rough. Yeah. Yeah. That one sucks. Also, the big art case um, where all of my artwork from college in my two college art courses I took, that one got water on it. That stuff's not quite as dear to me, but irritating. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wait. No. Yeah, the big case also had some, like, posters in it I made when I was little. Sadly, the one piece of, like, maybe not the only one, but, like, one piece of art of that nature but that I haven't been able to find in like 20 years and it's made me sad because I, I, I fear that it is lost is my winning science fair project from first grade when I made a whole poster about the life cycles of stars with nice. like and, and I like made nice. all the art I like colored it all made all cut out all the little stars and put them on the poster at different stages but, uh, I haven't seen it in a long time and I've repeatedly asked my parents for it and been told nobody knows where it is there's there's other similar projects that are in the art pouch like my fifth grade presentation about hatchet fish That one had already kind of disintegrated, but dealt water damage bad. When it comes to preservation, when it comes to preservation you techniques, techniques you should take into consideration could these tomorrow. could be destroyed by water tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. I should, uh, I've been taught a harsh lesson about keeping water sensitive things in permeable containers on the floor. Because cardboard, it wasn't so bad at deflecting water raining down from above. The books in the top containers were all fine. Like, even a couple books that were exposed on the top were fine. But, yeah, when, when the water got over an inch deep, it flowed into all the boxes and soaked everything in them, and some of the books are still wet. I've had them out sitting everywhere, drying, and a couple are still moist. You. You. So, uh, I don't want to enable subpar storage techniques, but an easy way to protect stuff until you can get something better would be to just take everything out of the existing cardboard boxes and then open a contractor grade plastic uh contractor grade pla uh, trash bag like the kind they haul ah. away bricks and drywall in and stuff yeah you know what's funny and is stick I that had, inside i had some something similar to those and i i i went to the box and i pulled one out and it was all wet because the box had been rained on and so it was all full of gross water on the inside and i was not going to put everything in wet contractor bags <laughs> That is fair. But also, I'm very hesitant to use black trash bags or similar for anything other than definitely actually trash. Because I've had way too many experiences in my life where something that could possibly be mistaken for trash has been mistaken for trash and thrown out. So if I like need to put a bunch of clothes in it, or if it's recycling, like, no. I, I, I actually prefer the clear bags, but they're for some reason more expensive than black bags. 
so I've, I've compromised and started using the black ones for recycling too, but like, no, I'm not putting any not disposable refuse. Especially when there's a bunch of people coming over constantly. But, but thanks for the suggestion. I think I actually have enough bookshelves with filing cabinets. I just wasn't using them because they're very difficult to move around when they're actually full of books. They're really heavy. Like, I have this big wooden chest my dad gave me, which I just found out today is a 100-year-old heirloom from my family, like, three and four generations back. Like, I knew it was kind of old, but I had no idea it was that old and, and like, very expensive, too. He gave me an estimated price, and I suspect it's actually worth even more. Because I checked, like, it's got, like, a certificate of authenticity on the inside of the lid. But that was empty, because when it's empty, I can carry it. Now that it's full of books, I cannot move it. Is it something like a steamer trunk? Maybe it's a big dark brown chest. It's got little legs so that the bottom isn't right on the floor. And it's got like, it's all carved around the edges and on the front. The sticker says this is a genuine cedar Roos chest. I presume Roos is the brand name. Uh, spelling? R-O-O-S. Yeah, it's, it's one of the Literally hundreds of things that I have to look up to get their value so I can report it. That's why I called the insurance company, is because uh, I have not succeeded in doing that all in a week, and I told them I needed extra time. They said I have a total of 30 days, which I think I can achieve. So it is a cedar chest, and broadly speaking, cedar chests are meant to store clothes in. Oh, no, seriously, it says all over the lid. It's like, you can store linens and cotton. I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah, well, the reason is that right cedar now, is, um, it's not antimicrobial, but it does a good job of driving away stuff that generally wants to eat your clothes. Probably good for books too, then. Yep. And books, or clo clothes do better in plastic tubs than books do. Because the plastic tubs, they're never quite square. They're all, they've all got like the curves and the angled sides. And clothes are squishy, you can stuff them in anything, any, any shape. Whereas the books, they don't like that and there'll be a lot of dead space and mashed corners. Yeah, plastic tubs have to have those chamfers so they can be um, injection yeah, molded. Yeah, there's a reason they make them that way. Oh, and also the plastic tub would get incredibly heavy if I filled it with books. And uh, I would not be able to stack them because if I tried to put an incredibly heavy plastic tub on top of the lid of another one, it would crush right through it. And I know that one from experience. <laughs> oh, and you can get very sturdy plastic tubs, but even then you can't stack them more than three or four high. Yeah, I was at Walmart recently and uh, I found some, like the technology has advanced. <laughs> They've got some in there that had lids that seemed invincible. And you know, had I known what was going to happen, I would have bought a couple. Yeah, a couple of the tubs that I have now, like the, they can only go at the top of the stack because the lid has been cracked by years of abuse. Some of them are missing the lid, and I don't know if it was lost or destroyed. It's a, a well-worn uh, saying for a reason. An ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. Yep. Yep. But uh, unfortunately, we can't prepare for literally everything, because we don't all have our own bespoke yeah. apocalypse well, bunkers. I'm actually glad. I, I did make very good decisions with some things. Um, so, all my electronics happened to be in my bedroom, which was the one room where the ceiling wasn't raining. So, all the electronics got spared, and that was very fortunate. But the smart thing I did was, 
I didn't have any of my electronics in permeable containers. They were all either in plastic containers or they were up on the desk in use. And that means that when the floor got all soaked with water, none of it got into the containers and none of it reached the electronics on the desk. Yeah, that's good. And I knew that from all the R slash hardware gore stories where people put their PCs on the floor and then they pulled them up a year later and found them full of dusted cat hair. Or worse. And I don't have a cat, but like, probably would have been like cockroaches or something. But when it's up on the desk, it's a lot safer from floor lint and little scuttling creatures. And I can see it, so like, if any, if any pests try any shenanigans, I catch them immediately. Luckily, my $2,000 computer is A-OK. -okay. No damage. And my jello was up on top of something, so that didn't get hit either. Your jello? Your jello? Not my jello. No, my musical instrument. Which I never use, and it's probably... Is jello a musical, jello a musical instrument? Play. It definitely needs all new strings and bow hair. I actually just found my clarinet last week. That's probably a little more water tolerant than my cello is. Like not a hundred percent, but I'm 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 betting in a contest your clarinet would win. I don't know about that. Corks and pads are probably not much more water tolerant than strings are. Maybe. Oh no, I'm thinking of wood things made of very permeable wood whereas your clarinet's all painted and stained inside and out right got like yeah. coatings well stained yes coating no oh okay the, 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 the grain of the wood is very too, exposed like, water is just gonna like the whole inside of the cello is just raw wood it will get destroyed i think this clarinet is pr probably 80 years old at this point okay well certainly more expensive than my cello because i don't think my cello is that old I think it's, I think it's just a low-end crappy cello. Doesn't sound that good. And my TV is okay, because my TV was up on a desk. That's good. Although that desk did get rained on, because, uh, I guess not literally all of my electronics were in my room. There was not room for the TV in my room, so it's out in the living room. I didn't see any water accumulating on or around the TV, so I think it's okay, but I haven't checked yet. The desktop I haven't got gotten... damage, though. It apparently reacted very badly to water dripping on it. I haven't gotten my clarinet appraised as such, but from some Googling on it, I think it might be a part of World War II history. Ooh. Yeah, I can't so... say the same for mine. I forget off the top of my head exactly which manufacturer it's from. It's from some French manufacturer. And, cool. you know, going back, you know, a hundred plus years, the way they identify these things is when the clarinet is manufactured, they stamp a, um, a serial number of a, you know, certain yeah. pattern on the, the clarinet. And uh, my clarinet did not match that pattern when it really should have. So at first, I was thinking, you know, maybe it's some sort of knockoff, although it's a very elaborate knockoff, if so. But uh, there was a caveat, you know, down at the um, the bottom of the page for how to identify your instrument. And apparently, the very last batch of clarinets that was shipped out of France right before the Germans invaded, uh, they were in a rush to get them out the door, and they screwed up the patterning on the serial numbers. <laughs> So your clarinet's a war refugee. Yeah, basically. Wow. Yeah, I don't have anything like that. Yeah, we're, uh... That side of my family is descended from Jews who left Europe to come to America decades before the Holocaust. <laughs> and not just before it, as is a much more common story. Because 
Yeah, apparently, apparently they came sometime around the 1920s. So, yeah. I think my dad's side of the family goes back to the 18, late 1800s, somewhere in there. Ooh. But, you know, hey. same deal. Hey. Jewish came to America. I love it when I'm about to get. I love it when I'm about to get exactly the right amount of, of material, so I'm not having, so I'm not having you know excess inventory, excess spots, inventory taken spots taken up once I do the crafting, and then I get the one percent chance. chance. I get the one percent chance. I get the one percent chance to get an extra one. Oh. <laughs> it's like oh, I mean. It's like nice, oh, I mean that's nice, and I get a lot of bonus XP, like, XP for that. But thanks. Thanks. Now get an extra one. Yep. Yeah, it's like in Minecraft, you know, when, when you get, you shave the sheep, and you get a multiple of three wool, but then, like, one extra. So you just got one block of wool in your inventory, and, and you already made all the beds. It's less concerning. It's like, less concerning you when you can, like, you know, put stuff in chests and whatever. I don't know. I don't know. I have no use for wool other than making beds. My, uh... My uh, my game here is, my use, game it here is use it or toss it away. So. It's true. I could. I mean, it doesn't have it. to be. You've just chosen to play it the most annoying way possible. I just look. I just <laughs> look. You can't keep saying. You can't keep saying that. My bionicles got rained on, but they're all plastic in a plastic box, so nothing happened. Also in the laundry room, I made sure not to put any cardboard in the laundry room, which was good because uh, the laundry room has now had a flood in it twice. Actually, no, three times. It's it's had a flood coming from the ceiling twice, and then another one that was me because the washing machine was leaking. I knew from the very beginning, like, I expected the washing machine to give me crap, so I made sure to only put things in the laundry room that were water tolerant. Yeah, checks out. Yep. So you know the, um, the law of, uh, heredity, or I, I don't know what it's actually called, um, in... In Jewish law, and in order to be considered Jewish, your mom has to be Jewish. Oh yeah, the um, yeah, the matriarchal lineage thing. Yeah. So my dad's mom is a Jew, and that makes him Jewish. But my mo my mom isn't a Jew, so I'm only Jewish-ish. Yeah, that that my family too. My whole dad's side of the family, like apparently, are Jews going way back, hundreds and hundreds of years. Um, but not my mom. Therefore, by that rule, I don't count. But I'm not very attached to it anyway. And it's not the sort of thing I feel like advertising in today's world where there's a, um, there's a rise in American anti-Semitism because of what's going on in Israel. Yep. Which is yep. displeasing. And this is just one more, um wedge subject it's it's the latest in, uh, excuse and you know people take any excuse to hate on the Jews it's been like that for 5,000 years it's just just cause I'm used to it doesn't mean I have to be okay with it yeah good news is I know one place in the world you can go where you are guaranteed to be accepted uh, once you're Jewish. Uh, where's that? Israel. Yeah, I, you know, I, I, I don't know about I, guaranteed. I don't know about, about guaranteed like, to be accepted. I said Israel's a bit accepted of a mess looks right now. you're Jewish. Yeah, like, yeah, um, Israel does have a rule that, like, all Jewish people, like, get get an automatic citizenship or some such. I'm just but saying, like, there are many I'm just reasons, saying, there are many reasons right for people to not accept war. people. Israel was a mess before it was a war. Like, you know, I respect the Iron Dome for the achievement it is, 
but I don't feel like I would actually feel safe under it. People are putting a lot of effort into blowing stuff up in Israel right now. There's also the whole civil rights thing going on over there and trying to abolish the Supreme Court. Oh yeah, that too. I hear the politics are clusterfuck. It's hard yeah. to pay attention to that when the politics here are clusterfuck. Yeah. Like I'm, I've already... <laughs> there's already enough political tor turmoil for me to keep straight right now. Like I'd, uh. It's just a bad decade for politics. It's a, it's a bad geologic epic for politics. It's a bad yeah. bet. It's a bad bet. A bad beat. A bad beat. It's a bad beat. I gotta bookmark that like that clip. I feel like I need to. I always need to reference it, and I never have it on me. Well, I think of it. Well, I think of it more significantly often, more often it. thanks to you saying it all the time. Yeah. I can see sideways in time. Yeah. There's no excuse for being anti-Semitic. It is entirely possible to think that the nation of Israel is being a collective asshat without being anti-Semitic, yep. unless you yeah. talk to an Israeli yep. politician, in which case the two are exactly the same. Yep. Oh, it's so annoying. Yep. Like, I... I it, it, it's strange to me that more people don't seem to feel this way, but, like... I live under a government that constantly does things that that I don't support, that, that are not how I would want things to be done, you know, that, that go against my principles. So when I see other, when I hear about other countries' governments acting up, I, I, I consider it's entirely plausible and in fact likely that they're also acting up in opposition to the principles of at least some of the people who live there. So like. I don't, like, why, why do people end up biased against the Russians or the Chinese when it's like, they don't necessarily agree with what their government is doing. I would generally assume that they don't agree with what their government is doing. The problem is, it's usually not individual people you're dealing with. It's either government agents or companies who are highly incentivized to go along with whatever the line so of the I mean, day like is from the government around, going around in my life talking to people right yeah like when i had classmates in grad school i, I had a russian classmate in grad school and i, was, I reached out to her because i'm like hey you know how are things going it's like do you, have, do you have family in russia are you worried it's like with all the stuff with the ukraine war that, that couldn't have been fun Had I been in grad school right when the plague happened, I probably would have been asking the same question about all the Chinese students. Uh, I entirely get um, where that's coming from. The it, Two of the biggest names on my grad school dissertation are a Belarusian and a self-described Persian who absolutely refuses the title Iranian. I do find it a mystery sometimes why countries insist on having a name different from the historical name for that part of the world. Like, I'm sure they have a reason. I just don't know what it is. Well, yeah, why Why is Iran called Iran and not Persia? Because it's, it's Persia. That, that's where Persia was. Egypt is still called Egypt. R Russia is still called Russia. Like, you... If, I, if my history is right, it's been called Russia for like a thousand years. Yeah, but then on the flip side of that, France isn't called Gaul. Oh, why not call France Gaul? I mean, I guess there was a time when Russia was calling itself the USSR, but they went back to Russia. And that's very understandable. Why that's, is it Istanbul, that's that's is it Istanbul and not Constantinople? <laughs> you know, yes. My best guess is that they didn't want... It, it's either Istanbul is Constantinople, just pronounced a little mushy, or um, that 
Constantinople was representative of foreign oppression would be my best guess for changing it. Let's just places change Let's their just names. Places change their names. For whatever yeah. reason. For whatever reason. If my history is right though, it was called Constantinople in honor of Emperor Constantine of Rome. And like that Tur Turkey is not part of the Roman Empire anymore. But I, I'm just guessing. Because that, that's, as I understand, that's mostly what happened with Stalingrad. It's like nobody calls it Stalingrad anymore because Stalin is not remembered favorably. I forgot what city used to be called Stalingrad. I know it's called something else now. Is it St. Petersburg? I don't remember. Olgograd. What? Olgograd. Bogograd? Really? Yeah, that used to be Stalingrad. I could have sworn it was something else. But am I thinking of Leningrad? Is Leningrad still called Leningrad? I don't know. I'm not a history buff. Yeah, St. Petersburg used to be Leningrad. Ah, yeah, I think I had it confused. But hey, now, now I know it's both. Before it was okay it's called st petersburg now because before it was um leningrad it was petrograd so st petersburg yeah, so I guess, is I guess basically the old name for it grad is something like bird yeah or, or ton i did i didn't have this silly idea as a teen where i was like all those all those Central, South Asian, and the Middle Eastern countries should just merge together into the grand unified nation of Stan. But, uh... Uh, so they kind of did, under the USSR. True, but that wasn't called Stan, it was called the USSR. Also, it would be really stupid, because if I recall correctly, Dan just means land, so they would have just called it land, which is a really dumb name for a country. Great name for a planet, apparently, but nobody on the planet wants to name their country that. The heck was that? The heck was that? Audio got cut off. The audio got cut off. Hey! Hey, with, uh, I have to deal with the uh, material Yay. conditions now. Yay. Okay. To armor. Interesting. I, 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 uh, Interesting. I've forgotten how much I, how much the super happy aliens amused me at first. Tim. Tim. Yep. Every, every, uh, uh, crafting job. Crafting has job to has to deal material with condition? material condition. Like good, excellent, whatever. Like good, excellent, Once whatever. One of them does. Once, Once one, one of them 13. does. Once one of them hits thirteen. Ah. I was not expecting that. I was not expecting that the super happy show up and they send a transmission to the humans and it says hooray we are so glad to meet you this is the ship play games for lots of fun operated by charge particle financial firms we love you and we want you to be super happy would you like to have sex yep yep it's like yes <laughs> 100 no notes best first contact message <laughs> like Name drop your corporate sponsor and proposition them for sex. Perfect. But this, 
That's like, that's like if we'd been like, this is the ship shippy make ship face. I mean, I mean, the main ship of, uh, the main ship of, uh, Star Trek, Star Trek for several, for ship, several, several sh uh, for several, arcs, uh, anyway. arcs anyway, is, uh, is, uh called, you called, know, you know, getting things done, getting things done, going and doing things, going and doing things, experiment, which it's a great name for a science vessel. Wait, what do you mean? Wait, what do you mean? And, and you know, if we're talking about synonyms for enterprise, it's like, yeah, Adventure, endeavor, experiment. They're, they're, they all kind of mean the same stuff. Experiment is usually meant a little more scientifically, whereas yeah. enterprise yeah. is meant more like adventure. But like, the, the intersection of the meanings of experiment and adventure is the perfect name for a ship that has that job description. Now, why they keep naming military ships enterprise, I don't know. For Star Trek, it actually works perfectly. Uh, the short version is there was a, um, I believe, a British ship we captured during the Revolutionary War that had the name, and it's just, Jeez. it's it was been a historic. The whole time. Um, I think yes, actually, but that's a different story. Anyway, ships named Enterprise have just been consistently distinguishing themselves positively from the rest of the fleet. For the oh, entire funny. history of the U.S. Navy. Basically, yeah. I've heard plenty of stories about military people being superstitious. So, like, yeah, that tracks. I ended up on a, a very small um, naval history YouTube video kick because I was trying to... I was trying to get inspiration for stuff for my spaceship game. And also, like, I used to have a couple of ship model kits when I was a lot younger. In retrospect, I was a little too young for those because I didn't quite have the patience to and, and work ethic to, like, put them all together properly and paint them all nice. I was a little impatient and whimsical. So I, I recall the USS Missouri model I had I thought it would be fun to paint a camo pattern on the turrets, so I did, which was really stupid. But now I want ship models again, and I don't have those anymore. And honestly, I probably wouldn't paint them at all this time, but like, I'd like to have a tangible 3D reference so that as I, uh, what did I just get? Booby traps everywhere. I want to have a tangible 3D reference when I'm modeling stuff and animating stuff. Although, a lot of them have double and triple barreled gun turrets, and for practicality's sake, I've decided that my game will not have those. So, they're going to be a bit of a deviation anyway. I think it helps with gameplay too because uh, a single barrel can be aligned exactly toward a target, whereas multiple barrels in parallel cannot all hit the same location at once. And independently targetable barrels will only be able to independently rotate on one axis, which means in, in general only one of them will actually be able to hit a target at once. Because the others will, like, they'll be in the right plane, but they won't be at the right angle to hit it on the, on the yaw axis. So, for gameplay convenience, only one gun turret per turret. Only one turret per turret.
Okay, so you were wondering why Iran isn't called Persia. It used to be, but in the 1930s, they requested the international community to start calling them formally Iranian, although that ended up confusing for everyone, so they ended up mostly interchangeable. But the reason was um, mostly an internal political one, because there was a sort of an ethnic group of people who identified as Persians, but it wasn't the entire uh, country. So all Persians were Iranians, but not all Iranians were Persians. You know what? I'm just, I'm, I'm just going to butt out, and I'm going to leave this to the politicians and, and all this to sort out. But apparently I, both I Persia no and Iran, both Muslim of those Muslim. words are about 2,000 years old, plus or minus a century or two. Neat. One from the Persian Empire, obviously, and the other from the Sassanid Empire. Never even heard of it. And then oh, for the Stans, the, the seven Stans are there because Stan is a Persian word meaning land of. Yeah, I knew it. Yeah. So, the land of the Kazakhs, the land of the Afghans, and so on and so forth. So, what's the Persian word for free? Uh, no idea. I need, I need to know what to call this place. free Stan. Probably not that. Probably not that. It has been a while since I did this fight. Barbariccia, also known as Final Fantasy XIV's Bayonetta. Yeah. Yeah. I'd forgotten that the, uh, the first thing the super happy aliens do after the greeting message is send the humans porn. Computer generated porn too, so like like the equivalent of all that Overwatch stuff. Our apologies, said the perfect figure on screen. You may call me Big Fucking Edward.
Yeah, I've certainly changed as a person because uh, I'm. Uh, I feel like I'm siding with the super happies a lot earlier than I did last time. <laughs> When the when the super happies are too um, fi find their jobs have become too unpleasant, then they stop and they go to the rec center to chill, and somebody else steps in. I would still prefer to not talk. I would still prefer to not talk about the story. Designated substitutes for when people don't want to do their job anymore. I would still prefer to not talk. I would still prefer to not talk about this story. I thought you just meant specifics. It strays towards those specifics. It strays towards those specifics very easily. This one's gonna take this one's gonna while. take a while. So, so, in a theoretical, in a theoretical, uh, uh, sword on, sword art sword online, on, style, sword art online MMO style MMO in that the players, provide, the all players the roles, provide all the roles, right? There are no NPCs. There are no NPCs. Yep. Um, um, how do you handle, how do you handle, uh, scarcity, uh, or scarcity or a lack thereof? A lack thereof? does it is that it does have some NPC um, production it's, it's, it's abstracted away but uh, some resources are insured against becoming too scarce because stations will automatically generate sell orders with them at a default price But that, that, that's a complicated problem, and it, it involves whether where you want things in the world to be zero-sum games and, and versus non-zero-sum games. Do monsters respawn? Do monsters respawn? That's a good question. I mean, that, there was, this will all come down to the specific design of the world. 
Yeah, maybe that's it. Maybe. Yeah, maybe that's it. Maybe. To be scarce, you should make a mechanic that generates an infinite amount of it. Right. So that that's what. Right. So well, that that's what. Well, effectively, effectively, trees, for example. Trees, for example. You do not have to have, do new, have, to have new trees grow. Instead, they, Instead respawn. they respawn. Yeah. So, someone whose goal it is is to own an infinite amount of wood would cut down every tree as soon as it respawns and wait for it to respawn again. Thus, over infinite time, that person would accumulate infinite wood. Right. Right. So, it does generate infinite trees, just at a fixed rate. You would need to... You would need a to... Lot MMOs, a lot of MMOs allow everybody to be, good, everybody at to be good at everything. Yeah. Um... You would, um, need that not you would need to make that not a thing. At least not easily. Yeah, At least funny, not easily. Just think about Eve again. That's currently the state of Eve, and I think it's a lot a big contributor to why I haven't been playing it as much. Because they turned skill points into a currency. Interesting. It used to be Interesting. That, yeah, skill points could only be generated through time investment. As long as your account was active and you had skills in your queue to be trained, your character would generate skill points at a fixed real-time rate. So older characters who had played longer would have more total skill points. So as a rule, old characters were very powerful, but not necessarily to any particular skill, because leveling up a skill becomes exponentially harder. So an old character might have devoted years of skill point training, but not necessarily to a given line of skill progression. So a newer character could put in only a few months of training and become maxed out in a specific subject. So for example, it was very common for players to have a main character who uh, would, would be a generalist, and then when they owned a Titan, the largest ship class, they would not have the main character drive the titan, they would instead have got a second character that was only training skills necessary for driving that, that titan for a few months. And there are side benefits, like if that character gets killed, you still have your other character and so on. Right. And it also means a new right. player can easily catch up to a level of competency to, to compete with older players in specific fields. Um, so that, I guess that's one solution. I mean, it does benefit newer players. I mean, players. it does benefit newer players. Yeah. I really, I'm, I'm not entirely sure what driven the decision to, um, they, they totally nerfed that because they added systems where you can spend their premium currency to remove skill points from characters, put them in an item, and then use that item to put skill points in other characters. And because you can also buy that item from the premium currency shop, it means skill points are now generated infinitely. Like, at maybe there's a cap on how many skill points are sold, but not to my knowledge. Yeah, that's pretty Which bad. basically means yeah, a whale can show up, sign up for the game, inject millions of skill points into a character and immediately have a character equivalent to a five-year-old veteran character. Right. Which is pretty lame. Right. Which is pretty lame. Yeah. If it was a totally single player game? If it was a totally single player game, I don't care. First, but It might have been the case at first that the skill point injector item could only be created by skill point extraction. But I know that's not the case now because skill points are available as a login reward. And when you buy certain premium packs like it'll also give you just a pile of skill points and i i don't know whether it's the case that you can buy skill point injectors on the market in excess of what's being produced in the game or not but the, the login reward and premium mechanic have really messed up the skill point system I don't know, maybe they calculated that leads to more profit, but kind of messed up the game for some players. Yeah. Yeah. But I guess maybe that's what they want, you know? Maybe they don't want time investment, they want financial investment. 
you can also combat scarcity by structuring the game in a way that players are somehow rewarded for ensuring a resource is available to other players. Interesting. Interesting. Thereby creating a collectivist society. There's a lot of experiments by Minecraft server admins to try and run Minecraft under different social rules. Neat. Neat. They'll, they'll have like mods for you know the in-game economy. And I haven't really watched any because it doesn't. It doesn't seem interesting to me, but. Like, I, I've seen them in, suggested a lot as, like, I made a anarcho-capitalist Minecraft server, and then I made a communist Minecraft server, and here's what happened after a hundred days. I don't know how rigorous their experiments were, but I guess that's yeah. some data. Yeah. I guess the other thing is, um... It'd be very difficult to launch an MMO with only players at first. You'd be highly Interesting. incentivized to Interesting. fill the world with NPCs until enough people are playing that you can start rolling out the NPCs. I actually disagree. I actually disagree. I think, I think, advertising the game advertising the game as, as empty being empty completely empty would be would be very interesting. Very to interesting people. to a lot of people. You know what? Yeah, particularly depending on the setting. When um, when I got really into Space Engine, I had this vision for it as an MMO, where every it would be an RTS MMO sort of, where you don't play as a single avatar, so much as each player controls a civilization that has many worlds and many ships. Right. Right. And at the end, I guess when you launch, when you first launch the game there's going to be a scramble for territory near Earth. But because the game world is so large, it could continue to grow for many years of people gathering territory further and further away. I think something similar happened on the 2B2T Minecraft Anarchy server, where the area around the spawn point has it's been affected by players actions to the point where it's entirely uninhabitable for a new player the only sensible thing to do when first joining is pick a direction and go in it until you can find some vaguely more natural land right and right you have to walk many kilometers to find it so if space but that would obviously be. Like but that would obviously be. Like that, it would probably have a similar problem where you may have to spawn players by new players at the edges of civilization. Uh, creating uh, some kind of random. Creating some kind of random system spawn system definitely, definitely would, would affect that to some extent. Affect that to some extent. But, um, Can I guess doing but, that um, would mean that controlled territory would show up as radial wedges? You know. Because players wouldn't would have great difficulty taking over territory further in, as uh, it'd be occupied. They'd have to go to war. But it would be easy to claim territory further out. So most people's territory would would just like be almost a line spreading outward from the origin. Why are you saying? Why are you saying in or out, if, out if it's randomized? Uh, well, I guess it depends on how your spawning algorithm works. If your rule is you start by spawning everybody near Earth, and when there's too many people near Earth, you start no, 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 them no. a little let's, further. No, 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 no. Let's, let's, let's keep the MMO. Let's keep the MMO. The fantasy MMO. MMO. The, the fantasy MMO. MMO. The, the fantasy MMO. Whatever. It's, it's the same mechanic. The nope, same but, mathematics. No, nope, if you spawn that, people near the spawn if you spawn point, people yeah, near the spawn like, point, yeah, you spawn like at the world origin, right? When there's only ten people in the world, if you want them to interact at all, they're all going to have to be pretty close to the world origin. When your server player base grows to a thousand, you're going to need a larger area okay, so, in which to have okay, people so, start. Okay, so so here's my thought. So here's my thought. You make yeah. a minimum. You make a distance minimum distance that a person spawning that a person the spawning the into the world for the first time is allowed to is be allowed to, to be to uh, uh, other players. Other so players. Like, so like you minimum you. 
you have uh, to be at you least, have to be at ten, least units ten away, units from away the other from the closest other player. If there's a if there's a big collection of player controlled territory, starting at the world origin and going out say a kilometer, then a new player would spawn one point one kilometers out. Run that by me again. Run that by me again. What, what, what's your proposal? Run that by me. So, so, sure. The, the, sure. The, because the, of how the, games because work, of how games work, there has to be, a, work, there has to be right. a, a, an origin, right? Because of how game design works, because of how game design be works, there has to be an origin. Yeah. Okay. Well, so okay. There, so how like reality works? Like wherever you start the game. That's the origin. You know, coordinates don't matter, but like wherever it is you put the first player matters. Uh, okay. You know uh, what? You make a okay. Point. You know what? This, you make a good is point. This is this going is this generated? going to be randomly generated. generated? I don't think it can be randomly maybe. generated, but maybe. I don't know. Could you, it, could you make? I don't a, know. Could you, could you, could you, could you, could you, could you make a? Could you make an SAO style world, style world that's randomly generated? Yeah. Also, you can hire people to generate more land. Right, but if it's randomly generated, right, but if it's randomly generated, then you very, much, then you do very much do not have solid. a solid. I mean, okay, yes, but I mean, okay, yes, but generates more land. Whether the system's powered by human brains or not is immaterial. Also, because also like, because again, this like, is not necessarily again, what this I is not necessarily make, what I would want to make. But if we go with the SAO concept of levels, tiered levels, you want a cap on how big, you want a cap on how big any given level is because that's going to help incentivize people to push to the next level. Um. So yeah. So okay. so you have you okay. Have so you have version. you have a limited you have a limited size. You have a sure. limited size. Sure. Um, um, the first person doesn't necessarily have the first to person doesn't necessarily have center, to spawn in the direct but, center. But, but yeah, in fact, you want let's just say yeah. In fact, you want let's just the say they don't. The first person spawns in a randomly selected location in the spot where the first person spawns the center. No, because we're going to say you have the no, whole thing because we're going to say you have the whole thing mapped out to begin with. Okay, fine. You put the first person so, in the center of your so, predefined world. Yes. Now yes. pick a random now, spot. Now pick a random spot within that within map. That map. Yep. And the first person spawns there. And the first person spawns there. Next person is joining. Pick Next person is joining. Pick a random spot on the map. And if it is within. Yes. Yes. And if it is within. And if it is within a certain distance. We'll just go ahead and say one unit. Any other from player or any other player, player or joined. the first player who joined. We're cutting out so much. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to switch to my phone. I'm back. Welcome back. Welcome back. Okay. So you were, you said spawn the first person at a random location on level one. Right. Where did the right. second person start? Level one, but level one, uh, but uh, also a random location. Also a random no location, than, but no we'll closer one, than we'll say one unit. Two, okay. So there is a minimum two. spacing. There is a what? There is a what? Uh, yes. It sounds like it's yes. on disc uh, sampling, where you choose a random location, but you discard random locations that are too close to an occupied one. Right. Right. Um, and that would be um, the way to do it. Because and that would be the way to do it because eventually you're going to run out of spaces to spawn people. spaces to spawn people. Um, yeah. Um, we'll be full. Now people are going to congregate. Now so people are going to congregate, so you're going to have a while. You're going to continue to have. You're going to continue to have areas. less guess, populated like, areas. Assume that. If we can control territory, or or, or are, is, is controlled territory going to be a thing? Uh, uh, how, controlled how? how? Controlled how? By players. I mean, like you I alone, mean, or you and your guild, like you build your guild base, and it takes up space in the world. Yeah, you can build bases. Yeah, you can build bases. You can build cities. You can build towns. Yeah. Okay. The territory will be controlled. The territory will be controlled as much as the players, as as the players decide to control it. Okay. So eventually, all of level one will be owned by one person or another. 
Like well, any, any given spot well, in let's, level one will be within somebody's borders. Let's not worry about that part. Let's not worry about that part yet. Point where, okay. We're still at the point where, 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 level, where, one where full, level one yet. is not full yet. Okay, um, not full. Nobody's um, made it to level two yet. Nobody's made it to level two yet. Yeah. Uh... uh and let's let's say and let's let's say getting to level two, is, to designed level two is designed way, in such a that way there is, that there is ah uh, man how am I, uh, man how am I, actually, I don't know if that even really actually, I don't know if that even really matters the other the other thing to take into the other account the other thing to take respawning. into account is what about respawning hmm. Hmm. hello yeah I'm here. Yeah, I'm here. Okay, I, I didn't hear anything after the other thing you have to take into. Consideration is what about Consideration respawning. is what about respawning. Yeah, I, I guess, like, do you respawn at your house or in your, at your original spawn location? Or is there, like, a, like a church where people get resurrected? The, the... Issue with that is what about issue with that is what about made? before the church is made? <laughs> well, I guess when you launch the game, you'll have the resurrection shrine right there, like that. That'll already be there. Then how will it not be a meta? Then how will to, it not be a meta to like spawn like in spawn the in the game for the first time, and, the the first first time and then immediately get yourself <laughs> killed? So you go to the resurrection pl platform. The goal is for players to the goal is for players to make the goal is for players to make cities whenever they wherever they want. Okay, so I guess. You would let people build their own shrine. Okay. Okay. So okay. Like, so Minecraft okay. Mine Minecraft spawn mechanics. The Minecraft spawn mechanics. The very first place you spawn is, respawn yeah. point is your respawn point. Or the closest. Yep. Safe, or the closest like, safe generation like area generation nearby. area nearby. Um, until, mm -hmm. um, if and when until if and when you do a certain in-game thing to indicate yeah, you want it to be fair. somewhere else. Yeah, that's fair. don't understand why like every time you talk for more than two seconds you get cut off are you sure your are you sure wireless your headphones are wireless headphones connected are to your phone connected to your phone now uh i turned them off i'm i'm just talking to the phone directly i don't know then i don't know then tim you still here tim you still here I think my best guess is it's just the 5G network is being crappy. I sure hope the carpet people come soon, and then I can put my desk back together and put the the set the Wi-Fi up again. That'll be nice. Finally done. Finally with done with Weaver. I had a distilled water. I had a distilled water. What happened? That's lame. Whatever. That's lame. It's fine though. It's fine though.
you would have to set away. You would have to set away players that can make sure new players, players can make sure new players dropping in don't spawn house. in their house. Yeah, yeah. If you're trying to avoid spawning people on top of each other or in one another's uh, property, then you're going to have to. Eventually, you're going to have a problem where you're you're finding fewer and fewer valid spawn areas. Yeah, I'm not sure how to handle that. Yeah, I'm not sure how to handle that. I have decided it's beer time. Beer time sounds like a fun time. Beer time sounds like a fun time. This is a blood orange Berliner Weisse. Berliner what? Berliner what? Berliner Weisse. I have no idea what I that is. I have no idea what that is. No idea if it sounds good or not. Blood orange wheat ale. Wheat ale sounds. Wheat ale sounds not the best. To my taste buds. To my taste buds. I don't, I don't judge other. People. I don't. I don't judge other people. But not for that anyway. Not for that anyway. I find that when I reach for a beer that I think from experience tastes good, more often than not, I end up reaching for a wheat ale. I like dark stouts. I like dark stouts. Milk stouts. Milk stouts. I like those too, but they tend to be more ex the good ones tend to be more expensive. Things like Guinness. I enjoy oh. drinking a loaf of bread oh. as much as the next man, but this is easier to keep in the fridge. Mmm, bread. What was that achievement? All in good taste. All in good taste. Ah, just culinary in level ah, 10. Ah, just culinary in level 10. Nice. Oh no, I shouldn't have done this oh, yet. No, done this oh, yet. No, oh no, I'm good. Yeah, note to posterity, it's much easier to take off your shoes and then your pants. <laughs> Depends on what pants you're wearing. Yeah, they, they, they were sweatpants, so they've got a little ankle cuff that made it hard. If you were wearing a skirt, this wouldn't be a problem. It could be a problem, depending on the shoes. Also, okay, no, yes. I'm not yep. going to wear a skirt with my apartment in its current condition. Unless you're wearing clown shoes with a pencil skirt, I cannot imagine a skirt that would have problems getting shoes off. I know from experience. <laughs> They'll snag and the, the heel will snag. Not fun. Yeah. But, like, yeah, with my apartment having, like, debris from the ceiling and residue from slime on the floor everywhere, like, no, no, no. I'm. I'm not exposing my skin. No skirt. Like, no no nice things. I've, I've just been wearing the crappy sweatpants and old jeans.
Yep, beer was a good choice. Labyrinth of the Ancients. <laughs> You know what? You make a good point. You know what? You make a good point. It might be a tad late for it this. It might be a tad late for this. But I don't have anything to do tomorrow. But I don't have anything to do tomorrow. I don't usually, uh... I don't usually, uh... Have a gummy while I... Have a gummy while I am... Doing my normal stream? Doing my normal stream? stream. But I'm just chilling out, and I'm almost But I'm just chilling out, and I'm almost done with all this anyway, so... Demonized. No, not at all. No, not at all. I mean, maybe. I don't know. I mean, maybe. I don't know. I'll have to look into that at some point. I'll have to look into that at some point. It would be better if the internet were considered to be under maritime law. As, as like, inter international territory. Instead of how it is now, where, like... Every everyone operating on on the internet is under the jurisdiction of their local government. And then then like some types of topics and information sharing would be legal, and others others wouldn't. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Man, man. ARR crafting is so ARR weird, crafting is so weird at especially levels. at the lower levels. So with Carpenter. So with Carpenter. So bizarre. So bizarre. With Carpenter. You with Carpenter, you can do a level one craft that makes you a set of clogs that give you seven that control. That give you seven control. With Carpenter at level four, with Carpenter at level four, you can make a set. Of, can make a set of, of it's another pair of shoes nine control. that give you nine control. <laughs> I, w I, w whatever. It's fine. whatever. It's fine. What's going on? You're used to push to talk. With Carpenter, you can make with two Carpenter, you can make two different sets of shoes at level one and at level four that both give you different amounts of control. You so cut like, out again. So, like, so it, 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 is it me? So it, it, it is it me cutting out? Yeah. I think it's I think it's both. I think my network's dropping some of your packets. And also, you're push to talk. Like I'm not on push to talk. I'm not on push to talk. Enough, or you may be letting go, or the key might be dropping your signal. I'm not on push to talk. I'm not on push to talk. Testing. Oh, one. I don't know what it is. Testing one. Do you have an automatic noise gate? Yeah. I mean, it's. it's yeah. I mean, it's it's forever. what I've been using with Discord forever. I, ha I haven't touched it. I, or ha I haven't touched it or changed it. If it was an automatic noise gate, it would be coming and going more frequently with this it's dropping out consistently for a few seconds at a time that's so we're weird. not losing that's parts so of sentences weird. we're losing whole sentences that's so weird that's so weird Sorry, like every, every time i've gone to the stream to test it everything's been fine could not recreate could issue. not recreate issue yeah. Issue resolved. Issue resolved. Well, am I coming through well, okay? Well, am I coming through okay for the moment? Yeah. All right. All right. Wait, wait, wait. Wait. Okay, I think I might have not for okay, a second. I think I might have not anyway. for a second there, but anyway. Of course, when I start trying to say. Of course, when I start trying to say this again, it'll cut out so again. Tim, but um, so Tim, with um, Carpenter, with Carpenter, you can make an item at, you level, make an one item at level one you that gives you two different, you make sets, of shoes two different sets of shoes at level one, at level one and at level four control. that both give you control. Which is just weirdly close which is just together, weirdly close to together to be doing the exact thing, same thing especially when, especially when you can't make anything you can't else, make anything any else that gives you any other crafting stats, stats. like i don't know like, I'll, I'll look at the other i don't know ones, I'll, I'll look at the other ones but it's not like you can make two it's not like you can make two saws period. within that time period uh it looks like you can uh, it looks like you can make two different sets of Sets of. So it's just two different sets of. Clothes. So it's just two different sets of clothes. Know, really I don't know. That's still really especially weird, especially within the first five, within the first five levels, since those come and go so quickly. Is one of those level one? 
the 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 control the control the, the shoes yeah the, yeah. the level shoes one and level four. yeah level one and level four i would not count the existence of level one gear just because you have to have stuff at level one period yeah so why can you crash yeah it? so why can you crash <laughs> i don't i don't whatever it's whatever fine. it's fine Oh, whoops. I forgot to start by doing that. Attention to this. Done, 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 done. Hatchet. Hatchet. And just made the bastard sword. File. File. Weird squelchy yeah, sounds. Some weird squelchy over. sounds coming from over there. Over where? Ray. Ray. Oh, um, no, I, I'm, I'm, it's water dripping. I'm in the shower. I mean, there's straight up. I mean, there's noises. straight up squelch noises. I, it's, uh, it's, 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 it's just the way that I, I'm, I'm not. I'm just standing here. I was, I was in the middle of reading something. No, trust me, I'm not doing anything gross. No, I, that's not. Right. No, I, that's like not. That's like fine. A, it sounded like it was like, like declogging something, declogging or, something or whatever. So my my uh, my tub has a plastic coating that's kind of cracked and falling apart, and bits of plastic get into the drain, and then the water starts accumulating on the bottom. It's it's been going on for a while, but mostly just. Just gotta pick the plastic bits out every couple days. I didn't think that was coming through because uh, last time I got in the shower, like all the noise got canceled out. Got, you know, the whatever AI they're using got better and cut all the noise. Not anymore, I guess. My food ran out at some point, and I don't know how long ago that was. Fifteen blacksmith. Level fifteen blacksmith. Who was that trait? Who was that trait? Practice makes perfect. Practice makes oh, perfect. Trial synthesis. Oh, okay. trial synthesis. Okay. So I hit fifteen on. So I hit fifteen on. Weaver. Yeah. Weaver? Yeah, I'll Weaver.
right. Did oh, I? No, I'm just switching oh, no, I'm just switching to armor now. Got it. All right, blacksmith done. All right, blacksmith done. Uh, no, I'll run back through. Uh, no, I'll run back through. Double check that everyone's good afterwards. Kill it! Kill it! And hop on. And hop on. That's armor done. And that's armor done. Oh, I bet I do get rings. Oh, I bet I do get rings. They're just leather. I was looking at goldsmithing. I was looking at goldsmithing, but I bet, uh... That leather worker makes rings. That leather worker makes rings. Alright, and that is All it right. for goldsmith. And that is it for goldsmith. And now for... Really and now absolutely for... Really ridiculous absolutely number ridiculous number works. of things that leather worker makes. Sure. I'll turn, sure. I'll turn it off. I'll turn it back off afterwards, but it's nice seeing the progression. It's nice seeing the progression.
Leatherworker 15. Leatherworker 15. That's it for leather worker. Still not quite enough. Still not quite enough. Oh, those are okay. Oh, those are okay. The gender locked gear the items. The gender locked gear items. Ah, sure. I'll just warm up that afterwards. It's fine. Did that? Did I know if I did that? Did not. Alright, there we go. Right, that's better. Oh, yeah, I guess it is. Oh, yeah, guess it is. Unfortunate. Unfortunate.
does both. That's oh, this right. does both. That's right. Yeah. Those weird yeah. lower level items. Those weird lower level do, items that do uh, uh, gathering, uh, and crafting gathering and crafting stuff. is so over leveled. Alchemist, your turn. Alright, Alchemist, your turn. That's it for Alchemist. Uh, that's it for Alchemist. <laughs> finally, and finally. Let's just drop you over there, even though I'm definitely not keeping that one as well. Culinarian. Culinarian. Uh, yeah, whatever, I'll just leave this over here. It's fine. 
all on you now, Culinarian. It's all on you now, Culinarian. This can't be high quality anyway. Oh, this can't be high quality anyway. Whoops. Finally. We're done. We're done. Oh, excellent. Ah, oh, excellent. Still all this stuff, left, all over. This stuff left over. few more of the uh, culinarian items. I've done it. But I've done it. I've crafted. I have crafted. Aside two exceptions. Aside for those two exceptions. Everything from, everything from level one through five. I'm gonna figure out which of the stuff I'm, I'm, gonna figure out which of the stuff I'm selling and which I'm not. Selling you. That's selling sure. you, that's for sure. Um, yeah, um, putting yeah, putting selling stuff over there. I have foods there, there yeah, at the moment. It. Yeah, we'll keep it in. All kinds of meals to eat. Yeah, fish yep. meal is used in gardening. Fish meal is used in gardening, and I don't have a garden, it's so sold. it's going to be sold. Uh, uh, not using you in anything else. Not using you in anything else, right? Not crafting, no, not crafting method. I mean, there is stuff next level. I mean, there is stuff next level, but I'll, I just I'll just make more of it at that point. That's no problem.
I should go ahead and call I should go ahead and call the stream here. You can be assured I will you can be assured I will be calling it on night on night and Nana will be crashing Nana will be crashing in bed very soon. All right. All right. Bonus after stream. Bonus is after stream is over. Over. We'll take care and see you next time. We'll take care and see you next time.